Well, there are matters I must attend to. Uh, Shadowhan, Essek, I assign you to be their steward for the time being. Help them find a place to stay, perhaps um, show them to the firmaments of the city, maybe to find their next fortune, to learn and keep handy. Professor Walker is still seeking skilled hands for her projects. Perhaps there is good to be done there. What was that name again? Professor Walker? Walker. Walker. Walker? W-A-C-C-O-H. Are we going to the, um, to the prison now? I think if you do not mind, take them to the Dungeon of Penance through the Shadow Shire and see them to the prisoner. <clears throat> Thank you. Caleb, should we, um, should we have that? <clears throat> uh, as, as we start to turn, uh, can I call out to Lythir? Yes. No hard feelings, all right? None taken. Do you guys leave? I guess so. I'm good. All right. Shadowhand, uh, Essek, who you've heard referred to, uh, steps to the front of your troop, not even making eye contact, just kind of shifts. You watch the cloak. It's You don't even really see the feet touch the ground, though you hear the footfalls uh, with the cloak just gently pulling back about an inch past where it touches the floor. Uh, the wide and kind of almost hooked edges of the mantle kind of framing the back of the head, the very, very short white hair that's almost comes to this this beautiful kind of half-curved quaff to one side, walking ahead and leading you towards the doors where you originally entered. Stopping partway, looking over your shoulder and going, are you following? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Leads you on into the antechamber. The door is closed behind. <laughs> Do you require a moment to speak amongst yourselves, or? Yep. <laughs> and then same, same antechamber with the fountain and the three cups yep. and the. If if you wouldn't mind, <clears throat> would appreciate it. Had to, just to check our pants and make sure nobody needs a change. <clears throat> a common reaction. I'll be on the other side. Knock when you're ready. Hey, is there like listening devices in here? Are you guys monitoring us? Not that that here. matters. <laughs> Why, is there anything to mistrust? Nope, open book. Every page being written as we speak. We'll be out shortly. <clears throat> Just curious! <laughs> he turns and exits out the other doors. They <laughs> come to a close, and you have, for an undisclosed period of time, it seems, privacy here within the antechamber. We're ready to go. It's like a proposal video. We're going to be filming it. Test yourself. Reaction. Oh, oh it's happening. We're doing We're this. We're going. All right. What should you do it when we get closer? Because I don't know. For what now? Let's ask Mr. Essek. What's the door is open, and uh, the shadow hand is standing there. Are you ready? Man, that was so dramatic. Uh, I believe we are. How far away is the um, is dungeon? I'd say about. Um, by foot, an hour's travel at most. Okay, so maybe wait just a minute. I will. Okay. Very well, follow me. And he turns Can around. Can do like an inside check on him and make sure that this guy's not gonna turn on us and just throw us in jail and be like, fuck you guys. <laughs> sure, make an inside check. Good thing I can guess like descending on. Okay, I gotta remember my stats again. Uh, 23. Hmm. Oh no. He's guy. definitely planning something. Guys, Dean DeBeyond will be in Denver. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. Not that was a mistake. They they are everywhere though. Everywhere that you have your your tablet device and uh, and a login. Among other places. Yeah, you can get D and D Beyond in any nation of the world as long as you have access to internet and uh, 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 an excitement for the joys of of D and D. There we go. All right. Very well. Follow me. He turns around and continues to walk. Now. Fuck, it seems legit. <laughs> <laughs> Leading you through the long hallway of which you enter, but passing onto the opposite end, walking for hundreds of feet on this, this massive, just awe-inspiring, cathedral-like interior. The doors open and lead you immediately outside. 
the scent of embers and crisp night air hit your nose as you see the dark of night above you, though the timing of the day should be daytime. You know this very specifically. But you look up to a dark sky, stars visible. It's curious, but comfortable, stars not too chill. Stars visible? Yeah. Why is it so dark outside? Oh, that's right, you're not from around here. Um, for most of us, uh, sunlight can be a bit of a bother. And uh, while we do have periods of worship in which we give ourselves to the sunlight as part of our means of showing our faith, it does impede our day-to-day -day business. So as part of our craft, we found a way to uh, keep it at bay for as long as we'd like. How high does this darkness rise? About a mile. That is fascinating. Oh, there's so much more. Are Come. The correct stars in the sky? It's where they would be. All right. It's as if there was no sun at all above you. It's not a different sky. It's, the, it's, it's this sky. It's, it's this sky. sky. Just right. through a lens of dunamantic Whoa. magic. Uh, what do we call you? Uh, just Shadowhan, or is there another name you prefer? <laughs> Shadowhan Essek Thalys. Essek Thalys. Of Den Thalys? Sure, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, well. yeah. Den Thalys is like the most popular one. That's one of the top three, is that right? It is indeed. Yeah. <laughs> is it uh, impolite, forgive me if it is, to ask how many years you have been through the bacon? Uh, interestingly enough, I, um, while I am consecuted, I have not gone beyond the first life yet. Ah. I am what you would refer to as a prodigy of Dunamancy, and uh, the den was very kind to accept me uh, for one comparably young as myself. I've only in part way into my second century, so. You'd be a great honor. This is. Anyway, come. We have a prison to show you to. Um, as he turns, you can now see before you, uh, throughout the vicinity, this beautiful courtyard of subtle gray and green bushes and trees, and a, 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 you see that you're on a hill. The, the, the center of the city seems to be on some sort of a hilltop, and looking down, you could see the perimeter wall itself made of like a, a, a dull gray with almost a purplish tint type stone, and across the crest of it, you see these green lanterns that just alight with this soft green glow. And beyond that, beyond the barricades, your vision stretches out to see the entirety, it seems, of Rosanna. This incredible, vast metropolis, uh, lit with thousands of the same little green lantern glows. You see uh, stone and metal and dark clay making up all the structures in various sizes and shapes, some of which have been repurposed ruins of old that have been built upon and refurbished. Some of which, at least closer to the center, appear to be extensions of uh, an elvish domicile design that is familiar yet unfamiliar. Um, in some ways slender and jagged, but beautiful and sleek. And then beyond that, you can see extending wards of the city that tend to be a little more patchwork and scattered. You can see distant bonfires that are lit in some of the streets, giving distinct orange glows that break up the rest of the, the green, sparkling lights that make up the entirety of your vision. It's beautiful. In the district beyond you, you can see these broken spires of curved metal that seem to have some sort of a more of industrious feel to it. You can see well, you're guessing that's probably the firmaments, the way that it's guiding you towards it. Uh, suddenly, you hear the screech kind of go through the sky above, and you glance up and instinctually duck. And in the dark night sky, you can see what looks to be a pack of ash gray griffins passing overhead. Wow. Elements of Kryn armor affixed to their bodies atop where you can see riders scanning the skies, about 12 of them just kind of keeping watch over the vicinity. That's one each if we, you know, decided to. <laughs> Essek leads you beyond the outer perimeter of this region and into this next area, which he 
does it. Welcome to the firmaments. This is the place of higher learning. This is where, um, well, based on what you have been talking about and your curiosity, perhaps you'll be returning to, maybe when this ordeal is done. Especially if you're looking for the professor. She is within the, um, the Marble Tomes Conservatory and uh, should be a unique meeting of minds I would like to be present for. <laughs> but this way glides along and leads you to what looks to be a large curving stairway between two intricate pillars that digs beneath the ground, the path leading below. As you follow suit, you can feel kind of the cold temperature begin to get colder as you descend, the sound, just the echoing of the clacking of your feet on the stone steps, each footfall getting seemingly louder as the quiet that approaches gets more and more deafening. Then the echoes begin to fade, about five minutes of travel down through this very wide, curving spiral until you open up into a grandiose subterranean cavern. You can see what, uh, it's about a quarter mile across in every direction, and it appears it's some sort of a pillar that you've been spiraling down towards, and when you step out and walk along the side, there are three visible pillars that seem to rise up into the ceiling, which might be other ways of traversing down into what you can only assume is the Shadow Shire. Now, the rough-hewn ceilings above, a couple hundred feet above you, uh, glow with a blue moss that fills in the nooks and crannies between what looks to be protruding bits of rough rock and crystals and uh, other bits of, of strange exposed ore that kind of glimmers in the way that the soft glow hits it at certain angles as you walk by. The base of the cavern around you is a surprisingly bustling new neighborhood of stone and glass lit with the same green lantern light. The streets are filled with drow, and it seems primarily drow down here. Um, Essek leads you onward towards an iron structure. You can see the faces of people nearby kind of watching as you pass, some of them with a look of discomfort and surprise, others just genuine curiosity, but they seem to not pay mind with Essek leading the pack, especially since he's leading you towards what looks to be an iron structure designed for a more daunting task with its spiked metallic railing and burning braziers flanking the large front doors. You imagine this is probably some sort of entrance towards the prison he's leading to you. And that that pathway you're taking seems to set most of the nearby denizens at ease. Now Essek wordlessly approaches the guard before they open the doors before you the heavy metal <laughs> grinding open as you step inside. Immediately the smell of very kind of acrid iron type scent hits your nose, like oxidizing metal meets rotting citrus. It's, it's not a pleasant smell. And as you enter, you're whisked along. It's, it's strange. You, you follow Essek, and as you do, you feel like your pace is quickened. You, people pass by other guards, but they kind of blur past, like you're unable to necessarily focus. Something is uh, subtly influencing you to make it difficult to really trace the path you take to where you're going. Ooh, cool. Got it. Got it. You're quickly whisked down another hallway to another set of stairs and the smell of iron now mixes with the smell of sweat and rot and dung. You try and focus on the door you're being led through and then you're ushered through it almost. You're moving under your own power, but almost not. It's, it's, it's a strange experience. It's like it feels really weird down here. As it should. You have not been here before. You're not going to, like, leave us down here or something, are you? Was that part of the deal? No. <laughs> he keeps walking. Mm. Do you not feel the same uh, effects? <laughs> no. Time is one of my specialities. Um, as you head down into the subterranean series of tunnels, you pass by cells, iron bars, and grates. You can see off to the edges what little bits of light there are from these uh, small burning flames, magically lit and perpetually crackling up in their small iron cages. Uh, in the shadows there, look to be 
multiple figures, some human, some ogreish, with more uh, reinforced bars, uh, drow, emaciated, beaten, who knows? Not looking happy and healthy, but then again, what good dungeon of penance would? Yeah. You go past another whirl of metal gates, and you suddenly stop before a cell. Essek nods to a jailer across the way that you didn't notice was there, and suddenly is standing on the opposite end, and he pulls out a ring of keys and pulls the gate open and steps away. Essek turns. Well then, the prisoner is all yours. Oh. Are we all in the room? You all are standing outside of the yeah, cell. Yeah, the door yeah, is yeah. open. Uh, how long do we have? As much as you need. Thank you. Uh, and how do we, so will you stay or do we call? Oh, I'll be right here. Excellent. Is it, do, do we get to take him? Do we leave with him then? Depends. Oh. Do we have to kill you to get him out of here? <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Uh, no, I get to decide. Oh. Are there specific criteria? Maybe. That seems very fair. Our intentions are very simple. Um, I, think, I really think that you're very handsome and that um, you seem like a really cool guy and I hope we can be friends and stuff. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You know I'm really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you could tell us all about that later over dinner or something. Okay. After we leave, we'll get you fed. As Essek kind of steps into the bars and goes, or we can discuss it now as the means of your release. Oh. Sure. What do we need to cover here, sir? The shadow hand looks towards Mrs. This Derugna, what did they hire you for? What did you do? And what do you know of what you've created? Uh, I mean, I, I don't have like a special talent or anything. Uh, she hired me, she bought this, this strange box thing and uh, she began to, to, to do Experiments. She brought some some people in to do different types of magic, arcane, divine. I don't know the variations there, but but they would be able to pull this like weird ethereal film out of it, this kind of like gray mist. And then it was my job to try and find a compound that it would adhere to, so it could be uh, brought into an actual uh, usable physical form. And uh, you know, they paid well. They said it was for the good of the empire, and empire's always been kind to us. <laughs> and I. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> in its, in its I'm just gonna. <laughs> very limited way, just just like making sure one, the roads were okay. Just one second. <laughs> yeah, contact. Well, I'll step anyway, outside of the cell. For months, <laughs> for months, she worked in the basement. Uh, she, you know, it, I, I came working on trying and it, to get this to work, and it was just was really frustrating. And they were frustrated with me, and they were threatening to cancel the contract. Um, but then I, I, I found it. I, I found a compound. That that would actually bond this material to it and, and distill it, and we we made one one successful vial of it. Uh, it was it was it was a breakthrough. I was proud. She's usually very intense, but she was very she was very nice that day. She was very positive, um, and so she, she said this was good work. She very, she appreciated it. Uh, she, she said that um, you know the, they, that they would hold off in the experiments for a while. She took the box back with her saying that uh, they were going to hire me to make a lot more of these soon, uh, and they were going to ramp up production. Uh, they would hopefully be able to provide enough gold where we could buy a new home for like me and Luke. And now, now, now you. <laughs> um, uh, we're thinking maybe like Tia Stock or Trostin Walt or something, but uh, not but two days later, the house was attacked and kind of looks up at Essex. Uh, thankfully, uh, Luke was uh, off at Edith's house, and they, they destroyed everything. They asked me questions, but uh, Lady Andragna said not to tell anybody anything, that if anybody anybody was told about what we were doing, that she would take Luke away. And 
I, I, I can't let that happen. Um, so she, she, she can't know about this. She looks over towards uh, the shadow hand. She, she cannot know about this, please. He dragged me through all these terrible places, chained to like a giant nightmare, this worm thing. And they brought me here and they just watched me from the shadows, asking me questions about ex experiments and starving me, but I didn't, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything because I knew you were coming and, and I, 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 I didn't want anything to happen to Luke and I didn't tell them anything. That's it. The shadow hand just stands there smiling and goes, Very well. It seems that not all forms of interrogation are effective, but ultimate means can be. The prisoner is free to go. He is your charge now. Really? Of course. We have what we need. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Are we free to go? Do I believe him? Make an insight check. I mean, have I seen any at this um, point? Natural twenty. Yeah. <laughs> what was your question? I was uh, wondering if I saw any indication of what forms of interrogation they were using. Um, walking through. Starvation. With your passive perception, it and and your lack of dark vision, you haven't seen really much anything. You've seen the outside of the cells and occasional shapes moving forward. But a little light makes it through, but you haven't. Gained any information in a passing stance to ascertain what that is. Not for you. It's a, it's a natural twenty, but what's your total? Uh, uh, insight is negative two, so eighteen. Eighteen. <laughs> Guys, D and D Beyond. D and D. Beyond. That was so my shark act. No. Thank you. Oh, I worked really so hard cool. on it. You that was a little yes, way over uh, <laughs> You had managed to drive the shark out of our minds. Why would you recall? He looks back to the jailer. Close up the cell. We no longer have reason to use it. Come, I will bring you back to the surface. And you come along as well, my friend. He looks down and smiles. Uh, yes, I yes, can. Okay. Essek turns and begins to walk. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'll take yeah. Yeza by the hand. Okay. He takes her and kind of squeezes it. His grip isn't very strong. He's still pretty weak. Mm -hmm. um, Never was. <laughs> like Ford. <laughs> <laughs> it's like five noodles at the end of a stick. <laughs> Long, long hop from Grog. Um, <laughs> guided back through the process, the same weird sensation overwhelms you, and it, it feels like you're, it almost feels like a, like a form of intoxication where you feel sluggish, but everything around you is moving very quickly. And it's just a blur of lights and faces and guards and people and stairs and doorways, and suddenly shh, you're outside of the iron barracks amongst That's the. That's why I don't drink. The Shadow Shire. Well, if you're looking for a place to stay, I have a recommendation. I can go ahead and lead you to the Galamafri, which is the <coughs> the more rowdy district. Seems to be a little more your style. Uh, there is the Dim's Inn. We'll get you a room there. Dim's Inn? The Dim's Inn. The Galamari or the Agalamari? Uh, Galamafri. 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 Galamafri is. We also, uh, the place or the district? That's the district. district. The district. Might, uh, might be looking for a blacksmith at some point, too, if you have a recommendation for someone who's uh, uh, extremely skilled, someone who you would be impressed by. Don't deal much in blacksmithy. Not my speciality. It means his hand kind of rises out of the, the curtains that is his cloak, and his hand passes. You watch as these kind of trails of somewhat translucent gray energy kind of drifts off his fingertips for a second and kind of float there before dissipating. <clears throat> Seemed a man of taste, I just thought I'd ask. Were there like six kobolds inside of his fucking robes? 
<laughs> Make a perception check. <laughs> Natural one! <laughs> like 17 kobolds. <laughs> it's following you, Ford. <laughs> we'll see what we can do, but for now, let's well, go get you. Disturbed there at the inn for being outsiders or anything? Not those medallions. I recommend not losing them. I won't. Good. Come. I like this guy. I don't know about this guy. I think he's pretty cool. I kind of like As him. you follow him through the Shadow Shire back to the stairs ascending. Small thing. As, yes. as everyone's walking, Caleb sidles up next to Nott, places a hand on her shoulder and gives it a, a, a squeeze, and then walks off and falls in by Beauregard and keeps walking. Okay. Ascending the wide spiral stairs back to the surface of Rosanna Gordronis. As you enter, he's in the process of reading through and like double checking two of his ledgers and going through it. Um, and sees the shadow hand and goes, Oh, well, this is a surprise. Um, what, uh, what draws the shadow hands to our um, very humble uh, place of business? And uh, the shadow hand goes, uh, yes, we have uh, friends of the Bright Queen who are staying in. You guys show off your emblems. Mm -hmm. um, they are to stay uh, for the time being at the Dynasty's time. Oh, shit. Is news experience? For the time being. Until they decide what their um, intent is based on the Queen's last request. Um, so, take care of them, and should you need anything, oh, we'll know. And he turns and leaves. He's leaving? He turns to leave, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Stops. Essek, um, I know that um, I, we trust that you won't, that we're not being watched at all times, but is an eye being kept out for our general Movements or or actions? Are do we? What do you think? Hmm. A little bit. Maybe. Okay. Great. Just wanted to know. Of course. Uh, could I ask? Is there any way we are not allowed to go? I would recommend not going into the ghost lands. That would end poorly. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, right there. Right there. So Normally, I on, have an aversion right? to something named like that, but good point. Yes, that's mm -hmm. uh, beyond the walls of the Corona District. It's the outside of the city. Is that the dark stuff? Yeah, there's no light uh, there initially. That's where um, so many of the scars of the Calamity still remain. Oh. Whoa! Oh. The city um, expands best as we can, or at least as best as they can. I have no interest in the expansion, but as more people come to our city, there needs to be room, and there's not nowhere else to go but out, so. Um, brave, brave folks looking for homes who fight against the darkness to find their homesteads. And, uh, Such is, will is commendable. Excuse me, what is the best way to reach you if uh, we, we feel we need to? Well, you've been uh, Speaking with your friend with certain means, I think perhaps you have such ways of talking to me, should you require my aid? I can send you a message any time you want. Good. I look forward to it. Rest well? And he just kind of turns and exits. Floats away. You can make a certain check. Yeah. Cloak. 14 feet. Seven cobalt. <laughs> He's got a hoverboard. 10. He just leans. 14. 14? Yep. 14. Uh, yeah, he's not hiding it. You can see his footfalls. He's not floating through the city, but he walks. He walks with such like a, a grace mm -hmm. and a, and a very uh, direct gait yeah. that there is no bobbing. He just that seems to. Too the unknown out. soldier glide, man. They just yeah, straight up. Bossy. <laughs> What's it called? Uh, it's a, it's a, what's it called? Oh, he's on a Segway. He's on a Segway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he keeps the cloak yeah, around it. It's just right. <laughs> Well, I'll leave you now. No. <laughs> <laughs> Enchantments get weird when money's involved. <laughs> as you guys, uh, as you guys meet up inside and kind of gather and, and discuss what, what happened, uh, a voice from the the head of the inn goes, 
Well, word seems to uh, be seen that you've done very well lately. You turn and look, and there you see uh, Shadowhand, Essek, mm. Thalys, oh. is there in the doorway, goes, well done. You have done uh, quite a, quite a nice thing. Well, I uh, apologize for the intrusion. Do you have a moment of your time, please? Of course, Lomo. What was on your mind? <laughs> this is, well, um, let's just say that we've been very happy with uh, what you guys have done for both the Bright Queen and uh, the good professor. I hear that it fared well. Um, because of these deeds, under the light of the Luxon, uh, and don't think that Den Thales has not noticed this. Um, and we would not dare have you stay as friends of the Bright Queen in such a, kind of leans in away from earshot of uh, Gavin, such a lowly establishment. So while you were gone, we have secur secured for you an abode within the firmaments. <gasps> it's already furnished and ready. There's even a pen for your beasts. Really? That is very generous. Is it like a Airbnb or something? Like, do we have to pay for it? No, no, it is being provided. That is my. You guys are giving us a, a huh? house? Well, you've given us hope and uh, helped lessen the terrible impact of what the Empire has wrought on us, so it's the very least we could do. That is most welcome <laughs> and very generous. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to see it? Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay, then let's just go upstairs and we just gather our things. Yeah, we'll just okay. grab our stuff real, real quick. Okay, our bill. I'll wait for you outside. <laughs> okay. He kind of drifts out of the inn. How does he do that? <laughs> Maybe he's wearing wheels. He's <laughs> got <laughs> wheelies. He's got a segue. Can I run up the stairs to the room real fast? Yeah, totally. And as soon as I get in there, can I try and summon the sword? <laughs> it appears to be right. Oh! Uh, can I make it go away? <laughs> yep. Oh! Uh, oh, he's fucking with you. He's fucking with you. Yeah. Oh no. You know he can fuck with you. Ready to go. <clears throat> yes, it's like, you, you, we have a house here now? I mean. We're not going to stay for very long, but for, for right now, I don't know how to get us away from here. I, no, I know, I understand. It's just, uh, wow, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, Crazy things happen with these guys. Apparently. All the time. You've made some, uh, you've made some unique friends. I sure have. I like them. Yeah? Who's your favorite? Oh, I don't know. They're all pretty nice. Uh, They're really not. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the, the tall guy. He points over towards Caduceus. He's mysterious. Yeah, and uh, wise. His energy's more um, palatable. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Less. Less. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> He'd fit in right in Felder when he would. <laughs> Except for the tall thing. Well, you know, it's fine. Anyway, let's go check it out and, and, you know, a safe place to just sort of wait. Also, maybe tonight before bed, we can ask Jester to check in on, on the boy. I would love that. Yes. Can we do that? Okay. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, God, but I don't have anything. What am I saying? <laughs> I'm good to go. Um, the rest of you guys gather your things. Um, I give Bow her new clothes. Ooh, yeah. yeah. It's one of Avanta's coats. Got fur lined. <laughs> <laughs> Does it look good? Does it look like look like a killed pretty, a pirate? It looks pretty much the same yeah. as her coat before, but now, but now it's warm. warm. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's very dashing. Thank you. Look. Thank you. Still smells like her a little bit. Uh. Ah, weird. <laughs> uh, it's nice. <laughs> So as you guys are, are exiting the inn, uh, Gavin in the back goes, so uh, you're leaving us, if that am I to hear correctly. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been fun. Yes, it's been great. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you uh, for uh, being so gracious with our animals. And I place five gold on the counter. Well, I appreciate your patronage. 
and paying me <laughs> for once. <clears throat> oh, are we behind? I'm sorry. No, the oh, no, it, it was being no, be honest. It was being paid for by the uh, the den cream. So uh, it's oh. fine. Right. It was a favor. Um, let's make it ten. I won't argue. you. Appreciate it. Thank he you. Scoops the ten gold. <laughs> Puts it away. Humans. Um, would you um, would you like a tattoo as payment for <laughs> my room? No, I'm, I'm fine, thank you. I'm sure the Bright Queen would appreciate it if you would take my favor. Oh, I God. would think not, but I appreciate your being so um, generous. All right, I'll let her know you denied it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys exit out, and uh, you retrieve your more bounders, and waiting for you, standing there, Wide shoulder mantle, cloak kind of swaying. Uh, the rain seems to like fall, but you never see it scatter across the shadow hand. It seems to kind of drift around. He stays dry amongst the storm. That's so goth. I put that. Like the water that's <laughs> moving around, around, like <laughs> moving slowly, or is it just kind of moving? Around? No, it's just kind of like just that's drifting so cool. off. I put the collar that I bought around a yarn ball. I had. Um, the dressmaker make a, a collar that matches my cloak. <laughs> there you go. So oh, also, uh, bring the staff forward. Oh, yes, yes, Introduce items, us. items. And as we walk and hand it to him. What about the sword thing? We have that oh, in the back. You want to hold thing. it up to the sword? Well, let's get to let's our get new digs, oh, yeah. and I that's my thing. slide the ring we on. Got some, we got some stuff, and among among the stuff, was there a sword, a sword thing? God, ring, I hope that staff is good. That ring is pretty. Are you taking the ring? 1d6 halved. Taking the ring. Certainly. I'm taking what about the ring? 1d6 halved. As far as the. Recharge rigging. Yeah. <laughs> She's in the front of battle all the time. She also has a much lower AC than you. But you know what? Yes, she That's does. Incorrect. Caleb is That's very, incorrect. very, oh, very, very incorrect. incorrect. You are misinformed. <laughs> I can mount my crystal. What's your AC, Ash? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 14. 11. Yeah, but oh, you have, oh, 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 you have she shield. needs it! He I, needs it! Don't don't you take it away from my cannon! Well, it's not the bar! She has raging I and will, has all damage. Yeah. Leave me alone. It's I'm fine. a wee bab. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I have your flashlight thing? You have the goggles. Not with the flashlight thing. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the goggles. No, fuck you. Well, fuck you. <laughs> Let's go find our new fucking house. Yes. Lean on. This way. And glides off to lead I'm like you. Looking at low, like trying to get the. Uh, Make a perception check. Oh, Is it like God. a centipede? Oh, like there's a hundred little legs? Certainly. Perception, perception, perception. 18. 18. Following below, it's hard to see because the cloak almost meets the ground, mm. but looking below, his feet aren't touching the ground. Holy shit! Just kind of By the light. That guy. For <laughs> love. By the light! By, By the, the light. light. Oh my god. Wow. So, leading you through the Galmafri back to the firmaments. Uh, across the way from where the Marble Tomes Conservatory is, and hidden amongst the various other temples and large structures of worship that reside around the core vicinity of the city, eventually you are brought to the exterior of a two-story mansion that is paneled in vermiloc wood, painted a dark maroon color with a lighter stone foundation. The roofing is dark, near-black clay tiling with a single balcony on the second floor. It appears to have a short tower built into the back right corner of the home that raises to a third story. Two stained glass windows installed towards the front are similar to what you've seen in the Lucid Bastion. As you kind of approach and take a moment to look over at it, it goes, for as long as you'd have need, this home is yours under the direction of Den Thales. Make of it as you will, and enjoy, friends of the Bright Queen. There will be more to be done soon enough. And he hands the keys over. 
Uh, can I ask a, a question? Uh, we ran into someone who mentioned that they have gatherings uh, over in these areas of worship and the firmament. Uh, regular displays of letting the, the sun in a bit. Right, that is correct. Uh, is, is such a display scheduled to happen anytime soon? That is not up to me. I am not one of the priests of the Luxon, but uh, usually when the weather is right and it's been time and when they decide, then uh, yes. Do they uh, send out like a, a communique or a call or a horn or? It, you'll know. Right. Because the sun, comes sun will come out, which sure. is uh, rare in this town. It's kind of, now I'm saying it out loud, I feel kind of stupid. <clears throat> it's all right. Anyway, enjoy your abode. Thank you. If you need anything else. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> power move. It's a power move. Yeah. Make a persuasion wow. check. <laughs> Such a power move. Wow. Drink that arc. Oh, yes. oh. 24. <laughs> he goes like. Mm. And like ever so slowly, my wife, just bitch. drips. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, give him like real good, and I hold it for an awkward amount of time. <laughs> give him the Molly Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway. I'll take my leave. <laughs> uh, as you approach the exterior of the house, you see a familiar mantled figure, kind of uh, arms emerging the front of the cloak. The mantle is, is is looking up at the tree and the lights that are currently being strung across the canopy by both Caduceus and uh, Jester in a very precarious and dangerous way, as it is a very tall tree. <laughs> you don't really have a lot. <laughs> this is, uh, you've certainly made it comfortable quickly. Yeah. We are making ourselves at home. I can see that. <laughs> I've made a, uh, made a splash. Do you want to stay for dinner? Caduceus is probably whipping up something delicious and vegan. No, I'm quite all right. I have some research to do, but I appreciate the offer. You want a rain check? Boy, your face just does not look as inviting as you think it does. <laughs> oh, sorry, see, so no. I haven't, yeah, sorry. Just get a little pinch on the What is the nature of up. your uh, research? <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> do you want to come in for dinner? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's um my specialities. Well, would you like to <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> would you like to take a break from your research and maybe just get a drink? Ooh, ooh. Start taking notes. It's like a Batman villain. <laughs> I'm all right with that. All right. <laughs> but interesting. Definitely the first. Do you know anything about our uh, neighbors to the left, the the family of Lord Bylan? Ah, oh, stuffy sort. Yeah, not very talkative or mm. friendly. Well, let's be real, you. Yeah, the, the tree. Um, by the way, I, I tried to ask, just in case he was also a member of uh, Den Thalen, Thalus? He didn't uh, volunteer what then he was a part of. Is that a faux pas? Touchy subject. Not particularly, no. But he is from Den Bylan. Den Bylan. Oh, uh, well. The surnames oh, are adopted shit. from the dens. But there's yeah. four dens, right? There's only four dens? Got his own cell, cell service. There's, okay. There's three there's primary dens. Three primary dens, and, and then there there's are many others. There's many dens. Yeah. Uh, a dozen dens. Dozens of dens. Yeah, Bylan's not so one of the dens. main three, though. <laughs> den dens, no. man. Den dens. Do you know who lives? Thales is one. Do you know who lives, uh, who our other neighbors are? Or? Um, it seems empty to us, but perhaps you know. I'm not too familiar with this neighborhood. Drop a little. Make an insight check. 
<laughs> he knows that there's a team of mercenaries in there! Eleven. Eleven. He seems like he's looking around, not too familiar. He goes, I, I don't know. I don't live in this area, so. Where do you live? Why do you have? I was just, I want to know uh, more about you. And get to know the, the, the place that we are living in at the moment. What neighborhood? Uh, I'm being very forward, I'm sorry. You don't have to tell me. Never mind. What's your home address? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> tell me your address and phone number. <laughs> if you don't mind, just throw it out there. You don't have to, but if you want to write it down. Um, most of my den live within the uh, Lucid Bastion, but I spend a lot of my time either researching uh, dynamic pursuits within the Bastion or within the Conservatory. Are those the main avenues for learning such? They are the only avenues. Why do you ask? Well, I am a big learner. I'm curious. Um, I know that we are new here, but I am very interested in tutelage in this field, and you have been privy to uh, our conversations with your queen, and... Show me. Show me something impressive. Show me something at the height of your power. Do you, you are do an arcanist, yes? Do you want to? Yeah. Do you want to go inside for this, like, or at least in the threshold of the I walls think and not be are, in the street? I think if you are trained enough to be pursuing such things, that you would know the limits and the safety of your capabilities. So, um, <laughs> show me. A uh, translucent cat floats just in front of Essex's face, and a gigantic claw flexes in front of Essex between uh, me and him, and is interposing between me and him. I immediately look around to see if anyone's been watching. A lot of people are watching. Yeah. A whole bunch. I mean, this is the third weirdest thing that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you guys have become the weird neighbors real fast. The cat, the cat claw does one of these. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. And if I might ask, um, what is it that you're seeking? What is your ultimate goal? Anyone who pursues such magics to an extent has something that they wish to do. I am of a middling experience in the traditional sense. Uh, what I'm very curious about is uh, the arcane here in your country. Yes, you and many. Many, many. Yes, but as you people. know, my people are perverting your magic. And we wish to work with you to prevent that, as we have exhibited. And I wish to understand better so that I can better help. Make one more persuasion check. Ooh, come, come on, on Kay. Good. Come on, KK. Just the 12. Oh. Just the 12? No, uh, yeah. Inspiring. Okay. He looks over and goes. Okay. Are you busy right now? <gasps> and I invited you twice, but yeah, yeah. Go ahead, enter. Yeah. Yes, it would be lovely it to have be, you inside I our will, home. I mean, I yes. wasn't asking you. The cat's the claw fuck? turns sideways, and just one claw hooks into the door and pulls it open. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone! We wake Looks up, up. the tree. I'm getting out of the hot tub with the SF. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're real company! Put him away. Oh. Put him away. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. It's, it's like bow. Willkommen. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of glides over and looks towards the, the closest thing there is to the study that you guys had set up at this time. Mm -hmm. Bit empty, but it could work. Do you want that cocktail? Caduceus has been making something with turmeric. Face, it's really face. weird. It's a very refreshing cocktail. <laughs> Perfect for this nice fall breeze. Sure. Jesus Christ, look at that. See what fucking, yeah, that's fucking how we host of a fucking host! <laughs> yeah! Hosting! Hosting! So, uh. Take that hospitality! 
<laughs> Essek traces something in the air with his finger, and you the slight glow emerges, and you watch from the glow as it pulls out and widens a tome, just apparates into his hand. His other hand comes out from under the cloak and flicks through. Do you have means of copying? <laughs> Let me teach you a few things. <gasps> no! Oh, so damn! He, uh, he will teach you up to three spell levels of dunamantic magic. <gasps> Oh, it's my motherfucker. Don't get excited. Well, <laughs> so this could be three utility mega spells of dunamancy. You have a few things at your disposal. That is also uh, a few with a slight more uh, kick. And, uh, or one, that is a little more of a influence, if you will. What is your interest? No. Are you interested in things such as uh, density, gravity, things that manipulate the relationship between objects? Are you more interested in the bending of fate, destiny? Mm -hmm. uh, or, ding, 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 ding. or do you wish to uh, find ways to sap and scatter the potentiality of your enemy? Let's go back one. All right. We have. Wow. Offers you these two. <gasps> oh, shit crackers! What is it we did? Don't worry. Oh, I'll never, never tell, tell us. us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> And so take the necessary time and the necessary cost of paper and ink to copy those spells into your spell book. Okay. And when you complete, you can see there's plenty of other spells in the book, but he watches you like a hawk, and every time you get interested to peek, you can sense his presence looming. And it's you gather you would not want to challenge that trust. Mm -hmm. Upon the completion of the secondary spell. I can barely <laughs> afford to do these two, so. The tome closes, and you watch as it kind of almost seems to spark and scatter away into nothing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ting, 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 ting. Oh. <laughs> Moscow Mule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to see what you do with these. I need a little bit of time. Rudimentary, the but they are the beginning building blocks. This is a great gift. Remember it. Maybe a time when I need to call the favor back in. Done. Very well. What do you think? Would you like a closer look at the tree? I'm fine. <laughs> and it's not bad. Unique, is that uh, turmeric? Mm -hmm. Caduceus calls it a white Shorhasian. <laughs> Mildly racist, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> the room gets real, like, just quiet and awkward for a moment. Goes, rough, rough choice. Wow. <laughs> Pure attention. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your evening, and he, he, he leaves on that note. I really would have leaned with a turmeric or not to turmeric. <laughs> not sure, probably a better choice. Turmeric. Going for the Lebowski pull. Yeah, I felt yeah, no, the, I'm, the, I'm aware. Yeah. yeah. My, col my college years, thank you. I did a thing today, I know. <laughs> I did a thing today, yeah. I'm excited about this shirt. It's hot. I'm a fan. If you know, if you've seen him and you go like, oh my gosh, she was like talking to me and I didn't know. She looks over towards Essek. It's good, it's good. They've been assigned as your wards, and you uh, trust in this, yes? You believe them? Essek's sitting there in the, in, the, in the chair. You can see the hands just barely crossed, kind of poking through the cloak. Goes, I trust them. Has he been checking on that ship? Oh, Probably. Nice. <clears throat> she gives a nod. Well, we shall plan accordingly. 
They will rue the day they tried to assail us on their terms. That would be what I seek. And the fastest and safest way to travel there. And kind of look over, and you can see across the way, Essek has been sitting down in one of the chairs. Well, if a safe and quick means of transportation is required, that would probably be my uh, specialty. Will you be going with us, or are you going to be sending us? Well, I have to come with you at first, (laughs) but I'll be returning thereafter. That's that's cool. Maybe you won't be, though. Maybe you'll like us so much you'll just hang out. There is a lot of business I must attend to as well. As you've heard from the Bright Queen, a lot of things are moving, and my interests lie elsewhere beyond a uh, kiln. Indeed, we appreciate your help. Uh, We will let you return to your your very pressing matters at hand. Oh, one last thing. Is it possible to send word to um, the, the people in um, where were we just? Bazozan. In Bazozan, because we left our more bounders there because we were in such a hurry to get oh, here, and know, I'm afraid they're going to it's okay. starve mean, to death. The little death panthers will be fine by themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Bright Queen kind of smiles and puts her hand up. <laughs> Your beasts are from these lands and will be fine, though they may be free to pursue their interests elsewhere. Okay. Should you require more, we can provide them. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Nope. Is Caleb back yet? So, well, while you're asking that question, so Caleb, uh, you don't really know where to find Essek beyond Mm -hmm. the Lucid Bastion in which he was in the chambers earlier. It's been a couple hours. Do you, are you trying to head back to the Lucid Bastion to retrieve? Yeah, I would head back. There. I would head back to uh, where we had our audience with the Queen, knowing that it's foolish and we want to get a hold of her. But start asking and inquiring to him. All right. Uh, you are definitely held from entering the Lucid Bastion. The guards there mm-hmm. are t- saying that you know you you have had one audience and that is what you've been granted. But upon asking for Essek, uh, you were asked to wait for about thirty or so minutes. And then uh, he emerges, kind of looking about, and turns to you with a smile. Hello. I heard you're looking for me. Uh, that is correct. Do you have a moment for me? A moment I can spare, yes. What do you require? I am embarrassed, but um, I, I have just come from your presence. The Queen granted us the ability to visit the scourger that you have there. Right, I remember seeing you request this not long ago. They are marked to die, correct? I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, execution, I heard execution mentioned. Right, they are to be executed, yes. Is there a timetable on that? Not entirely certain. I think they're to continue interrogation for at least a few more days before they uh, deem them of no further interest. So? Uh, I'm just hoping uh, you could stick to that timeline. Now it's a foolish request, but um, you have some idea of my past, yeah? Um, a fraction, maybe? I uh, once was on a path to be one of these, and I thought there was a chance I might have known this one. Are you telling me you were a scourger? Uh, No, no, no. I know about them a little bit. Right, right. I thought that this one, well, the chances were slim, I thought this one might be a person that I came up with in the Empire, knew something about, and perhaps that could be useful for my dealings for your queen. And I was incorrect. Um, caught me off guard. Frankly, it would have caught me off guard if it was the individual I thought it was, possibly. Well, but um, I would like to speak to them further, but I have a, an errand to run, and I just don't want to miss my window, and I need to get my thoughts in order, and sometimes I'm like this, I like to have order, and don't feel 
So are you requesting uh, requesting that we not accelerate this timetable, if I'm to understand? Yes, I thought it might be as early as this evening or tomorrow morning, but it sounds like I have a few days. I'll see what I can do. I, I would very much like to speak with this person uh, again, even in your presence, if that makes it more conducive. I'll see what I can do. Okay. That's it, I don't want to push my luck. I, I appreciate your help. Of course. Um, I have to get back to business, if you don't mind. Certainly. Thank you. I'll be with you. And as it turns around and enters the Lucid Bastion, leaving you there kind of solitary, still standing in the exterior courtyard. for a minute and then realize I'm an asshole and start walking towards your house. Okay. Ooh, I get into position so I have view of the ball bearings. All right. It'd be really bad if he just banana peels. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be amazing and we'll find out here in a second. Um, who gets the door? Uh, I'll get it with my mage hand. All right. <laughs> Ting, 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 ting. The door, <laughs> the door opens. The chimes tingle. Never get old. Um, you know there are two armed guards that just kind of are escorting Essek, uh, who are just waiting outside. And Essek arrives. And goes, hello. Uh, it seems you have made your preparations and are ready to leave. Yes, you may enter and crash into the threshold. Thank you. He glides in, and you watch the ball bearings actually separating out around Whoa. his form. Whoa. Like there is some invisible force that is pushing them outward and kind of like kind of just generating this strange force that keeps them at bay. Like a hovercraft. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Hovercraft. Oh no, did we leave the ball bearings on the floor? <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> you know who we should talk to about that? Our housekeeper, Dyron. You are a very curious bunch indeed. <laughs> Dyron! Dyron is already like right there behind you, arms crossed. Yes, I have arrived. Be more conscious to pick up all the ball bearings Jesus. next time, please. My apologies, Beauregard. I will not let this happen again. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to introduce you to our liaison, Essek of the Shadow Hand, right? Yeah. Oh, he's, the he's the Shadow Den Hand. Thalos. I have the heard hand. of you. It is a pleasure. Ah, ah well. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance as well, Dyvan. If anything needs handling while we're gone, this is a good point of contact for the house, or otherwise. Since we had to drop Yeza off, we figured it was smart to get a keeper. Understood. <clears throat> Well, have you gathered your things? Are you ready for your journey, then? Yes, yeah, I think sure. so. Then, come, join me outside. Turns around and glides out in the ball bearings, who have kind of wobbled and get pushed off again to the sides of the wall, clatter. He kind of looks down as he passes by at them. <laughs> you could call him the hoverhead. But he didn't see the bucket of water we put over the door! Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Mighty Pranks! <laughs> All right, so. Oh, wow, right. Are you hover handing me? Yes. <laughs> She's hover handing me. Hover handing. She's the hover handing. <laughs> 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 Sick Thales in every photo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, so let me get this <laughs> spell at the ready here. As you all gather, mm. uh, the shadow hand takes a count. Uh, is it just the seven of us then? And, and the horse and cart. If possible. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, this particular magic does not allow for such a uh, oh. a cart to come. Uh, let me double check here to see if the horse can. But uh, well, not the cart. Why did you get all this stuff? Mm -hmm. well, I mean, we can carry a lot of it with us, at least. But <clears throat> but it seemed I can bring you or the cart. 
Let's go with us. I mean, we should vote on it, I suppose. <laughs> but. <laughs> we'll, we'll pack as much of the food and, and supplies as we can. And Very well. We can use the horse later. Um, <laughs> he, provide, he uh, from underneath the robe, the hen produces the map that was requested. Excellent. Which will be arriving in the mail so this next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Devin, for rushing that. Sorry. Um, but this will but this will give you at least a brief overview of what the map contains for now. Um, That's Orange County. And <laughs> the last request I have is a destination. Caduceus. Yeah, you know you know where we're going. There's well, the Alps, right? Uh, the the uh, Flocket Alps, and I believe it's on the other side of the Ivory of the Ivory Lake. If, if I'm not. Uh, not hang on, uh, I wrote yeah, down. Thank you. I wrote down the. Sure. Cra Cravarat? Shady Creek, uh, yeah, and so it would be a... Uh, sand... Uh, crystal Sands box. Tundra. Yeah, the Cravarat Volcano. Cravarat Volcano. In the Floutket, Floutket Alps. Um, if we can't get Floutket. immediately there, then I say uh, Cinderess Sanctum is, is, is the closest thing I can see on the map. Well, I need a singular destination. This magic is uh, a bit... Volatile. Cravarat, yeah. Cravarat, you say. Very well. Let us hope for the best, friends. And you watch the hand that's still out there after holding the whole match kind of like begin drawing this slow sigil. You watch the hand kind of leaving trails behind it as it moves. And as it does, each of you feel the ground beneath your feet begin to Restful, kind of warm, like. warm and warmer still. You're all suddenly underlit by this ever swelling light from beneath you. Um, somebody please roll a d100 for me. I Whoa. gotcha. Whoa. 100! You got it? We've never done this well, before. I can do a 10 and a 10. I think Caleb's got it. Okay. 32. 32. Ooh, that seems just under or just over something. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay. He's so excited. <laughs> well, it was thirty-three percent chance. We're fucked. <laughs> okay, so we're all dead. <laughs> we're all inside a volcano. Oh no! He's laughing he way too long. much. No, what did He's he laughing do? a lot. Did we're Essex just kill things. the party? No, no, no. It does not kill the party. Just um, names them. You said it was 30... 32. 32, Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need what? you to go ahead. Okay, no, but you all do suddenly take. Yes. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yes. Cool. We just teleported into stone. Oh no! Already. Twenty points of force damage. Okay. Oh. Ooh. You all feel your body suddenly shift in but an instant into an open vacuum of space, and then suddenly you exist simultaneously with dense matter, and the magic rips you back out of the space, and in doing so, you feel horrible pain rack you from head to toe, as if you were suddenly just pushed into a wall with the might of a hundred hands, and then pulled back. Uh, roll another d100 for me, please. You got it, you got oh, it. Uh, that was a mishap. One, one, one. That was a mishap? Yes. As in it didn't work? 92. So we're... That's 90. The other 92, side. nice. All right. Now so you gained two levels. <laughs> After that weird little flux of energy, suddenly your vision goes white, and imagery begins to come back into view. You begin to see shapes, crests, heavy peaks, mountains all around you, surrounded by tall mountains. Jagged peaks and spires that come to dangerous points, all coated in snow and ice. You're sitting in the center of, of some sort of a, a valley amongst a mountain range. The temperature immediately hits you. You thought it was cold in Jorhas. It's much colder here. As you exhale your first breath, you can see the cloud. As it itself, the moisture from your breath begins to freeze in the air. It's not Arctic, but it's pretty cold. Um, there is a snowfall, heavy, not blizzard, but relatively heavy, that is falling all around you, and the clouds are obscuring some of the more distant peaks of your view. It looks like a storm is making its way in and hasn't quite I hit its full it. breath yet. What was that? Nothing. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
around you in the valley, you can see, uh, as you stand kind of on the edge of one of these mountain bases, an entire pine tree forest itself, dense with snow and white powder that has co coated it from end to end, just elements of the greenery below visible. And across this valley, immediately before you, the singular mountain that resists any of this snowfall, you see, instead of the gray and white and ice, there is black, cragulous, climbing rock. And from it, you can see three different drifting plumes of black smoke from different positions along its side. You can just barely see little glowing streams of orange pouring from different vents along its side. And at the very base of the center of where these trees are, you can see steam rising from what looks to be a small basin or a lake that's gathered from the what little bit of rainfall or uh, water that collects down here into the lake meets where this molten rock drifts. As you collect yourselves and look upon this isolated volcano amongst what you assume to be the flat cut Alps, the storm mounting, you've arrived in the Grang Wildlands. So, we need to reach out to Essek. Yeah. Yes. Who is Essek? Oh, he's oh. our friend. Is he nice? He floats. He's super he cool. Floats? He floats. And he's super duper hot. Mm. Hot boy. When can we go? <laughs> can we go now? Well, we well, gotta I talk gotta, to him first. I gotta talk to him. I'll talk to him. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna send him a message. Okay. Further developments on our mission. We need your help again to travel a great distance. It's of dire importance. Okay, that's one word. <laughs> what do you think? Can you? <laughs> Why? <laughs> if it is of dire importance, I will do what I can. But please, my skills are not uh, given parlor tricks. Be mindful. I send the message back. No, 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 we don't think that. <laughs> You're very powerful and we just need your help. We don't take it for granted. Do, 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 do. That's the entire message? <laughs> yeah. Very well. I will um, await your arrival in Rosona and will do my best to be of aid. Oh my gosh, he's going to help us. We just got to get to Rosana. That's awesome. great, that's great. Yeah. Good news, good news. <laughs> I will send a message to Ezeka again. Already. <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. Stopped it. Bruh. Bruh. Don't worry, we made it totally safe. We're back here, just heading to the house if you want to meet us there. We have something cool to show you. Um, we have a friend with us. Don't be surprised. See you soon. Um, oh, oh. Yeah. as a response. That is quicker than I was expecting. Well then, I will be heading over towards your abode shortly. Get your things ready. Get our stuff ready, he's okay. coming. Okay, okay, okay. Um, right about the time that Essek arrives, now, you see arrive to the front um, a, uh, a male drow, uh, short white hair, um, 
kind of a perpetual soft smile, a similar mantle of armor to the soldiers that you saw exterior, but beneath it, a cloak of dark purple kind of just drifts below and obscures the entirety of his body as he kind of glides in, no bobs or footsteps, just kind of drifting to the front of the house and entering the chamber upon being led into the rest. It is good to see all of you well. And this is the friend you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Kind of lean over to Jester, like, he has hot eyes. <laughs> wow. If I might inquire, what is your name? That's rainy. <laughs> well, welcome. Where do you hail? Nicodrana. What? Um, sorry, I mean, you're speaking very quietly. Huh? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm from Nicodrana. Hmm. Yeah. Me too. Indeed. So, you required my assistance. My time is. Yes. Limited. Really valuable. Remember how you teleported us somewhere? Yes, we, to the uh, Graying Wildlands. We need to go somewhere else. Whereabouts? Um, so it's called Mythborough? Very well. Have you heard of it? Oh boy. We have a map. No. Oh shit. <laughs> so we do have a map, but Very also well. I was thinking, what if like I scried on the dragon? Right? Can you do that? Yeah. You're familiar I'm with it. I'm familiar with it. We know his name. Yeah, and we I know basically what land. he looks like. Do dragons sense that sort of thing? Who knows? I don't. All right, let's do it then. I mean, one would assume. Yeah, that's rare. To sense it. So what are you doing? I'm going to try to scry do we, need, on... do we need to do this? Just to get a, we're doing this to get a location so, so that we can teleport for, closest. Wouldn't it be better if I could give you a description of what it looks like? That would probably oh, be helpful oh. to us to a minor extent. I was going to say, as I've not traveled there, it's going to be challenging, but not impossible. Perhaps also not attempting to uh, teleport directly right, on to top the of the dragon. dragon. <laughs> well, yeah, I know that. Like no, maybe no, like yeah. a mile so or two away. I'm just mildly curious. Um, dragon. Oh, oh wow! It's like a. Have um, you heard of? Yeah, yeah. Gilladon? It's a story with many parts. He's a piece of the puzzle in us trying to accomplish our overall goal. Mm. All right, so you're going to a dragon. Yeah. Um, Have you heard of Ice Flex? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mithril that's been bred on by a dragon, a white dragon specifically, so we have to go there and get him to breathe on the Mithril so that we can go and get the sword fixed so that we can defeat the Laughing Hand and, you know, serve serve the Bright Queen that she mm -hmm. wants us to. Pretty standard stuff, really. Yeah. It means to Quite standard. Turned. Yes. Uh, but here's the thing, like, can we sleep before we go? Hey. Well, I thought we would sleep once we're there. Yeah. But why? Why would we do that when we could sleep here to instead? To get a better sense of where we are and, and but what. But what if something attacks us there and we're not rested and we could be rested and could go? Could we put well, a pin in that for just one moment? May I ask you? This is a separate topic. Yes. Um, how is the timeline that we have discussed? <sighs> we are. Um, Looking at an extension of maybe two more weeks. Oh. oh. But I have pushed to the extent of my ability. Well, if we leave in the morning, um, I, we have two weeks, that's good, I have time, but I, perhaps tonight, now, today, would I be able to get in to s see this prisoner again? Or, or sometime There needs to be a bit more of a an acknowledgement in advance. Even I have my limitations within my den. Of course. And I've already pushed that to a limit to make good on your request. Um, if you intend to leave, well, tomorrow, then I'm not entirely certain why you summon me now. If you intend to leave tonight, either way, you would need a few days for me to we'll bring this to the den before we'll we leave tonight, then, if, if there is paperwork or logistics involved. Uh, consider this my formal application, then. I will go ahead and uh, put it in. Thank you. Now. I, 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 
I feel like I'm pushing too much. This is too much. I'll ask I'd him. I'd like it. Yeah, there's one thing. There's one thing. Caleb is is such a polite young man. He wouldn't bring this up to you and bother you with this. But he found an amazing page filled with magic and wonder, and you might be the key that unlocks it. Also, I brought you a present. Yay. They pull out the cupcake. <laughs> it's fresh, I swear. And then extends oh, his hand, and the cupcake kind of lifts out of your hand. Ooh, and kind of drifts, I did that. Drifts so. over. Oh, this guy's a germaphobe. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's why he's so <laughs> like, how, like Howie Mandel? Thank you. And it kind of vanishes beneath the cloak. Oh, he eats with his, with his sleep. <laughs> he's, he's subtle chew, subtle chewing noises emerge from it. Caleb it's like Vishamon from Dark Soccer's anyway. She sheepishly fishes that page out and says, I, I only just acquired this, but it is stumping me a bit. Does this mean anything to you? Reaches out and takes the page and then furls it. That's and begins like subtly incanting some spell, and you begin to recognize it. Hopefully, make an arcana check. Uh, what he's casting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. That's um, twenty-six. Dispel magic. Dispel. Oh wow! Well. I was going to do that tonight at bedtime. But great. He completes the cast. You watch as suddenly all the writing on the page flares. You hear a tearing sound and it seems like dropping out of the bottom of a page. <laughs> Two pouches and a, a, a round case. Whoa! Onto the ground. Oh my god. He goes, I think I figured it out. Sometimes the simplest solutions are escape us. I am in your debt again. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Cool. This. Yeah, so I scoop up the things and hide them away for now. Um, <laughs> you all join Essek, gather in a circle. He begins to mutter an incantation. His voice begins to echo loudly until it seems to consume the space around you. And in a similar uncomfortable sensation, all the color and shape suddenly blurs. I need someone to go ahead and roll yeah. Oh, yeah. a uh, percentage, percentage dice. dice for me, please. Got it. Are you doing it? I'm doing it. All right. Doing it on the map cam. Nope. Nope. 87. Oh, that's good. Seven. That's good, I think. Or is that bad? I don't know. Hold on, I'm pulling, well, up. I'm pulling it up right now. It's not exact science. Okay. We might die. 87, you said. Yeah. Bottom Into of the ocean. A rock. Oh, fuck. A lot can happen. Three Actually, miles in the air. All right, let me pull it out of the book here. It's a little convoluted than that. So, keeping the number in mind. Thank you for roots. your patience here. Oh. We're on the moon! Woo! Jeez! Moon Weaver ain't gonna help you there. That stone was right! <laughs> and then I die. <laughs> All right, so what'd you roll? 87. 87. Good boy. Oh. Don't do that. Oh, You're no. so mean. And with that sudden rush, the temperature immediately shifts as you find yourself suddenly sitting in the center of a mild snowstorm, familiar to your first arrival here in the Graying Wildlands. The successful teleport Aww. has brought you to the base of a heavy mountain range just beyond the white blasting of the snow around you. You can see the rolling, craggy Alps just beginning to vanish into the storm ahead. This region is still powdered familiar white from the recent and current snowfall. But one mountainside's mild discoloration before you catches your eye. A few hundred feet up from its base, a faceted, jagged, unnatural frostscape of white blue ice appears to, his, to have clinged the rocky incline for a few hundred feet more, looking like a plague of ice vines erupting from the mountain's belly, frozen in time after climbing and attempting to burst out of the mountain itself. And in the center of that spiraling web of ice, you see a massive cluster, a 
of cage-like ice growths that encircle an oblong mouth. A cavern that enters the mountainside. This, you assume, is Mirthborough. As Essek turns to you all, his hair blowing in the wind. Yeah. You're crazy, but good luck. So, as the wind is howling through, being spattered and smacked with hail and hard snow, Essek immediately kind of takes a step back and goes, All right, friends. I'm uh, not staying very long. This is ridiculous. Have fun. And turns around and starts walking away. Thank you. Walking or hovering? Hard to tell at this distance. What about his footprints? Is he leaving footprints in the snow? Uh, make a perception oh, check. Yeah, first one of the night! <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Okay. I, don't, I don't have my seven. Uh, I think it's a plus is four. It, plus is it? Four. Is it? Is it? Plus you actually get it right? That's 14, amazing. 14? Tell me it's a single tire, tire okay. track. I got a Just one. Perception. It's, 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 it's refreshing. Yeah, it's refreshing. No, it's, it's two wheelie tracks. <laughs> <laughs> 15. 15. 15? Would you? Oh, like 11. 11? Okay. Uh, what you do see are, you don't see any footsteps. What you see are two grooves dragging forward. He's on skates? It's his toes. <laughs> it's his toes. Oh. He's hovering, but the snow is too. Oh, wow. Is he wearing shoes? You can't tell. The cloak goes just past that. I hope his toes are okay. Probably pretty cold at you this point. Get, you can get frostbite that way. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> oh yeah, there we are. You have other spell slots. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Summon yeah. cupcake. Respond a moment later with, "Ah, so you have returned. Then I will gather myself and head to your abode post haste." He's on his way. Perfect. Okay. Okay. A short time later. There's a He's here. <laughs> He's here. I'll get it. Mage hand, open the door. <laughs> it's opened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I have needs. Indeed. Uh, he makes his way in. Well, it is good to see that you have survived your encounter, it would seem, with the uh, the dragon's den of which I last sent you. Yeah, we were amazing. Quite successful. A bit of a close shave, but we made it. Good. Good at improvising. The dragon's name was Gilladon. Never even saw us there. Well. Mostly. Mostly. Somewhat. A little. Still very impressive. Uh, not many have done what you've done and come back unscathed, it seems. I'm impressed myself. Mm. So, what is it you've summoned me for? Well, we have been running our errands. And we are back, we feel it has been a while since we have uh, checked in with uh, the queen and yourself. Um, and we mean to be of use, if we may. Hmm. And okay, I, I want to say a big thank you again for, you know, taking us to where we need to go. I just want to, you know, try that, okay, keep going. No, oh, that's fine. Of our, our track record has been a little less stellar than I would have liked, but I would hope that this encounter with the white dragon would speak. Wait, what? Hmm? We're fucking great. Well, no, we also well, haven't well. heard about any reports from, you know, our last incident. No. We were curious if there had been any word of any sight of this the laughing hand of this creature. As of this point, no. We have been researching and putting out uh, requests for any sort of sightings of the creature that you had mentioned, as well as perhaps this individual that was once among you. None have come back, but we are indeed looking, so do not worry. And to be clear, did you send anyone to the location that we mentioned? I mean, certainly there, there must have been some sort of remnant, a sign that they were there. Oh, there were indeed signs within the interior of this king's cage that you mentioned. Um, However, there was no sign beyond the exit, and what winds and sands of the barbed fields have washed away, what symbols or footsteps may have led us in a direction. But we are looking, do not worry. I think we're also possibly curious about, um, uh, the queen mentioned beacons still within the Empire, and if we can perhaps Steal the breath from a dragon. 
stands to reason that we could help with those as well. Good, so you are now in a place to call in some of the debt. Yes, indeed. Good. There is indeed one beacon that still remains in the grasp of the Empire. We have numerous ways of pushing towards that goal. However, should you have been careful in your dealings, you have a little more reach within the Empire than someone such as I would, of course. I would request, on the behalf of the Bright Queen, to see if you can discover where this beacon is being held. I get the sense that perhaps you've had some encounters with uh, members of the Academy, maybe the Assembly, or at least people who can connect you. From what we understand, they seem to be directly involved in the acquisitions of the beacons and most likely hold or know where the current one is being held. If you can bring us this information, you may be aiding bring an end to this conflict sooner than later. Have you any ideas of individuals? Well, I could name off the assembly for you if you'd like, but I get the sense you already know them. I am familiar, yeah. Hmm. Can I get the sense he's being genuine when he talks about ending the conflict? Make an insight check. <laughs> you need to fucking warm it up. Yeah, I do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it will not fly. No. Oh, can I, uh, wait, can I give you guidance? Is it too late? It's too late on that. You gotta do it before the roll. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Everybody take longer to pick up your advice. Yep. So I can remember. <laughs> I think we both uh, have He's... Advice. He's pretty much always been Essek. His manner and demeanor rarely changes. So it's kind of hard to read. It's just Essex. <laughs> God damn you, Essex. <laughs> okay. All right. We do have um, ties in the Empire. Good. Some connections. In all these rumors that you are parsing out, um, is there any area of the Empire in particular you have heard of this thing being seen last? Unfortunately, such information changes. You see, they know as well as I do that it's dangerous to keep it in one place for more than a period of time. Such a central artifact would be moved often, most likely. So, your guess is as good as mine. But, should you learn this information for this reason, you need to let us know soon. Do you happen to have any other teams on this um, sort of an quest? Oh, we have a... A few spies throughout, yes. Any way that we would be able to identify them, just in case we happen to cross each other's paths? <laughs> Not at all. I figured. What about that prisoner that they're keeping, Caleb? Would would that be a place to start? Couldn't hurt. You have a couple more days before the execution is carried out, so I would recommend you doing what you are looking to do soon. I Today works, I will do it today. I could escort you. You, you want help? You want company? Uh, definitely someone, yeah. I'll come with you. I'd, I'd be happy to as well. Right. Are you gonna threaten her? I'm going to talk to her. All right. No time like the present. Very well then. Come with me, we do guest. Both the fucking clerics are going. We should go too. Yeah, I guess we'll we go. Come on. Yeah. We're, all, we're, all, we're all gonna go. I guess so. Okay. Is ah, that okay? It parts you then. Well, come. We leave immediately. Ah. He <laughs> whooshes around and glides through the open door. So you guys are all heading with him? Yeah, yeah, that's all right with if you, Caleb. As long as we don't, you know, crowd, crowd the cell itself. No, of course yeah. not. Here for support, if you need us. Mm -hmm. All right. You... And guidance, whenever you need it. Before the roll. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yeah. All right. Following Essek, you're brought to the familiar space of the Shadow Shire. 
beneath the center of the city of Rosona, towards the Dungeon of Penance, through the strangely off-putting interior, and you know, feeling the kind of central enchantment of the space clouding your mind but a bit, but eventually you find yourself standing at the familiar cell where you first had met the prisoner. Glancing through the small hole in the doorway, uh, you can see the female figure currently sitting, arms bound behind her back. Looks like shackles holding them to her ankles from behind. Chains from each arm and each leg affixed to all sides of the room. And there are multiple guards at all times keeping watch. Outside the cell. Outside the cell. And the chains, does she look like taut? Or, or is it loose? Uh, they're somewhat lax. They're not taut like she's being suspended. Okay. But she can't move, probably move more than a foot in any direction should she wanted to. Um, would you trust me enough to enter the cell with her? As it looks to the guards, the guards come and give her a nod. Looks back to you. I just would recommend nothing funny um, for uh, should such things occur. I would not jeopardize our place here in the I dynasty. Would hope you would not. And you seem like a upstanding practitioner of the arcane arts with interests in the greater mysteries of life that you would not uh, throw your life away so quickly. Wow. Open the door. Uh, the guards immediately rush in and, raising their crossbows, fill her chest with, with bolts. What they they were, at which point you watch as she begins to lift up off the ground from the chains, and you see Essek, his hand out of his cloak, lifting her off the ground. Ooh. And you see her kind of like, <laughs> from blood pouring from the corners of her mouth, her eyes wide, as it kind of just looks to you. I walk up to her and just stare into her eyes from six inches away. Oh. Two a sec. Oh. And you watch as her entire central torso crushes inward. The chains go taut and you hear the metal bend as some of the chains begin to pull and break in places before she is dropped to the ground limply. I'm going to look into Caleb's eyes as that was happening. I wanted to see what he was. I am helping apply pressure. Got any healing spells with that pressure, Cad? You can't do them in here. We gotta move them out here. I'll, I'll help Cad move we them out. We can't do it in here. Out of the cell, Essek, can out of the we, cell. Why not? Can, can we heal magic? him? Can we heal him? Essek, yeah, we can heal him. Enough. We can heal him. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll the guards have already that. loaded new bolts into the crossbow, and they're all just keeping an eye on the somewhat mashed cure corpse. wounds. Cure um, wounds. I'll just do a, like a level three cure wounds. That ought to do it. Let's see what you got, because if not, I'll do. I know. Isn't that nice? Uh, six, 12. 18 points of healing. I'll do cure wounds. It looks like he's still bleeding a little bit. I'll do a <laughs> level uh, a level two. Alrighty. That took an unexpected turn. I kind of saw that whole thing coming, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Did she, are you okay? Did she give you any useful information? 12. Oh, yes. Yes? Oh, yes. Do you have anything else you want to talk to her about? I don't think she's going to hear it. I don't think she would be willing, though. That can always be handled. Oh. Oh, yes. Death is just a pause. Oh, yes. She still might not want to talk. Kind of seemed like... Mm -hmm. Yes, Would you allow us to use this corpse for an interrogation? Under our supervision, quickly, and do not mention that I allowed this to anybody. Nessa looks to the guards there and says, and that goes for you as well. The guards all kind of Taking a risk, I don't like it. Nod and step back a bit, and kind of, kind of move away from the chamber. <laughs> um, um, I don't know if I have.
have it ready today, but we would just have to keep the... Um, if you give me, if you give me a day for, to speak with her, I just need a head. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry, I thought my friends were I wasn't prepared. ready to do it immediately, we but... We could take uh, our head with us. Oh, God. Uh, unfortunately, no. This, um... You can't do it right now. This needs to be notified immediately to the rest of the dens, and the body needs to be produced. So if there's something you cannot do now, I'm afraid I, I, I it cannot be done. I we could find information in a way that we were not just able to do. I think that we could speak to her. I have seen him do it. Are so you good. attempting to speak to the corpse? Yes. As her master, yes. Then I cannot allow it. That is standard procedure after execution, and the body cannot be utilized in the same way again. If they attempt to make the body available for such a ritual, and it does not work, they will know that it has been done in advance, well, which will lead just... them to me, which will lead them to you. Can we just request to be in the room when they do it? <laughs> I think that may be stepping beyond the bounds of which your arrangement here is. That seems fair. Situated. My apologies. I want to help as much as I can, but there are limitations. You know, she. I think she did this intentionally. I think this was. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, all things considered, it's a clever way of making sure you can't ask any more questions. She was also waiting for this opportunity. What if she knows where the beacon is now? Then we will find it from the body. But you can't be the ones to do it. There is protocol. And the last thing you need is anything like this to be traced back to me or you. You've been more than generous. <clears throat> You really have. Very much so. Uh, Caleb uh, wanders over to her corpse and kneels, and with his own bloody hand, wipes her hair out of her eyes. I'm sorry. We are done here. I think we are. Are there any scars on the body? Uh, well, uh, the, the arms and legs have been nearly pulled out of the sockets, where the torso has been crushed inward and the chains were pulled taut. Essentially, the body was kind of pulled away from the limbs to the point where they're still attached, but definitive uh. separation internally. Uh, most of the torso has been kind of crushed inward. The jaw has been kind of broken in, and it's. it's I was specifically curious about the arms and legs. The arms and legs, uh, you do notice there are scars among the forearms that are similar to the ones that Caleb had. I'd like to, if it's all right, quickly just approach the body for a second. Uh, as you do, Essie goes, careful. You do have to leave soon. Of course. No funny business. Nothing funny. I want to uh, palpate the region. I want to press the arm and see if I what the scars feel like. Okay, make a medicine check. Thank you. I'm going to look over Cadiz's shoulder because I know what he's doing. Okay, what are you trying to figure out from this specific? I want to know what caused the scars. Okay. I want to know. Oh. I don't know what he's doing. You, were, you thought he was trying to I thought, it. I, No, I thought he was going to see if there's still crystals in there. Yeah. I don't think I would know that yet. I'm not okay. But I do you know their magic scars because oh. I've seen his. <laughs> well, you, you know the scars. Yeah, so. going to make a medicine check to ascertain the nature of the scars. 25. Okay, looking them over, you can see that there are multiple, probably for each arm, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 individual scars that are puncture scars. Mm -hmm. um, they aren't seemingly violent, and they've healed over fine, but they are placed in, uh, the, while at first glance it appears to be random, you can see what looks to be faint patterns in their placement in the arms, intentional. Does it look like like runes or anything like that? Or? Not like runes, but you get the sense that at least these scars are deliberate and they're mirrored on each arm. Hmm. Let me check out that chain got broken. Ah, Caleb. <laughs> this is the same thing that happened to you? Touch anything. Get yelled at. Yeah, it's all of his 
students. Okay. I think we should get out of here. Yes. Uh, one last thing. Did he, did she just manage to break that chain or file it down or? It seemed like she was under lock and key. How did that happen? Yes, I am very curious about that myself. And the other guards kind of look at each other, getting back to their posts. One of them begins talking. None of you speak under common, correct? Just over common. <laughs> so yeah, none of you here. There was some conversation, conversation back and forth between Essek and one of the guards. Essek gets a little more infuriated. The guard kind of backs down a little bit, seems to curtail and step back into his position as it looks back at you. Mm. Well, uh, it seems that these scourges, these uh, Volstrucker, are um, well trained. We should get going. How? Just out of curiosity, I'm going to just go over and check check out the the body. How tallish was she? Best you can glance outside beside the, the the crushed status of the body from what you've seen, probably in the neighborhood of between like five two and five six. Also, can you study her features? I've been doing that while they were having the conversation. You think you could make yourself look like her? Obviously. All right, good. <laughs> okay, so you but like study. a slightly slightly better looking. Yeah, right, she's a real crazy right now. Very nice. <laughs> Uh, and also, out of, out of character, did she uh, seem younger or older than Caleb? Younger than Caleb. Yeah, you know, you'd probably guess looking at her. It's hard to tell with how emaciated and, and unhealthy she is from the time she spent here after being captured. But uh, you surmise somewhere in the mid to late twenties. Jorhasi, okay. hi, the next generation. <laughs> Stop it! God damn it! <laughs> Sorry. Let's get out of here. Okay, home we go. Essek leads you out of the prison and back to your home above ground. What would you like to do? I don't know! <laughs> what do we do? We're going to check in with the Bright Queen? Do we need to, like, no, apply for that? I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. I don't think we Maybe need to do that. Maybe we towards our debt. Is Essex still with? He would still be with you okay. unless you tell him to leave. So is it, is it uh, on us? Uh, there are no resources of any kind that you could provide in, in our yeah. foray back to the Empire. A lead of arrow. Well, what kind of resources would you require? Everything is being placed into the war effort for right now, so it is a bit stretched. Information, do you know the last place this beacon was seen? The last Felderwin. place that we know of it was in Felderwin. 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 And you don't happen to have any safe houses or um, bases of operation behind enemy lines? Oh. We have a few locations that we've established, but for the purposes of keeping them safe, respectfully, I cannot tell you. Felderwin, that the we the, the the tripod. We have the tripod. Does that help us at all? We'll find out. Did it touch it? Does that count? Does, can we scry on that or anything? No, I guess not. Are you able to scry on? On things you have never seen before. It would be similar, obviously, to the one that we possessed. How would it pick between the two? I didn't think about that for a minute. If I was clever, I would have it very protected from such things. Yeah, like, Got to you start know. somewhere, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, let me look at my spell. Well, we I know back. a lot about yeah, yeah. it, I just know. I mean, if we're, we could go back to Felderwin and retrace their steps, I suppose? We could... You know... We could try to get our hands on the living scourger. It's a, it's a creature sort of thing. I can I can scry on people. You can scry on a location, but you had to have seen the location before. I can scry on a location or a people, but not like an object, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, going back to what Essex said, the members of the assembly, do we know all the members of the assembly? I mean, fear. I, Caleb does. I would need to go through notes. There's a lot, there's a lot of them. What if we go back to... Should we start scrying on each one? What if we go back to Usa, Aranus, and Nicodranus? Usa? Usa. What would he say? What would he know? He's a sort of on the outs arcanist. He might he have... Doesn't like the academy. He doesn't like the academy, but you know you know how like all rich people know each other? I do know that. Don't know yeah. that. <laughs> you know, he might have heard rumor. 
don't seems really like we're know closer to the where his things that lie. he is. I mean, we we've we've met in person a lot of the people we're talking you about. You know, somebody that seemed to have a lot of information about lots of different things. If I had some incense and some um, ivory, the gentleman. The oh. Papa. What? Potentially Papa, but. You know, I mean, he had his hands in a lot of different things. He might have heard about such a big artifact crossing the lines. Also, and he's back in. Sadash. Yeah. We have all these leads in this name Jagantoth keep coming up, and they tend to be expert smugglers. That is true too. If I was the Academy, I would try and distance myself from any of this on my hands as much as I could. Well, we hired. know they were in possession of one in Zadash. Exactly. Why, why couldn't they move the others? Well, they would, well, they, they are. The military is moving in Urzen, you said. Yeah, it's, they're sending more military towards Urzen, yes. But they would still be trying to use it in the way they were using the one that we stole. Can you, like, sense Duna magic? Now that you have tapped into that. That's what you call it, right? That's like sensing Duna magic. Yeah, Duna magic. Are you talking about jacking into the mainframe? Yeah. <laughs> Can you do that? Those glasses. <laughs> it is referred to as Duna Mency. Yeah, Duna magic. Oh boy. I'm just shortening it. Trying to he just turned someone into a pretzel with the Duna magic. Tone it down. <laughs> it's fine. It's difficult for many to grasp its uh, elaborate and esoteric depths. I'm making a pun. You don't have to be patronizing. But I always do. That's true. <laughs> Puns by their very nature. I could meditate upon the uh, uh, upon the piece. If I had, I would need some incense and some ivory. But I could, I could uh, maybe glean some information that we didn't have. It's not a bad idea. I actually like Jester's idea of the gentleman. I mean, he is very well connected, and mm -hmm. if they're trying to move, albeit discreetly, through the Empire. And while I think that uh, my good friend Beauregard was being somewhat facetious, uh, it's not a bad point either. If there is any other um, arcane tricks of your kind that you think could help us in our search, know that I. I love my home. My home is out of control. I want to end a conflict. I know many here think that that is insanity. I do not. And everything that I am learning here, I mean for the good of both our people. Make a persuasion check. I touch Caleb on the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Sneak it in there! Yeah. 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 There it is! <laughs> That's a d4. Add a, Add a d4, d4 too. That is crazy cocked. Light it on your mouth. <laughs> 22. That's good shit. That's good shit. 22. Good All right. 18 plus 4. Okay. Ooh, good 4. That's a good mm -hmm. 4. Gather your books. They are on me at all times. <laughs> Good. <laughs> then to the den. All of us? Just. If you wish to watch, but I gather this might be a bit above your uh, respective levels of understanding. I have some chopping to do. Well, now I feel like he's just. Now he's laying it on thick. Yeah. I'm just being honest. No, we could gather some things while they're doing yeah, this. Yeah, we'll prep. We've got our own notes and books we have to hit. No, you Perfect. Don't. You don't yes, I do. Yes, things. I do. I punch your book, <laughs> fucking face. Sure. We can go get some ivory, I guess, for you, Caduce. A little ivory and a little incense would go a long way. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go fucking watch it. <clears throat> okay. You were in a show. <laughs> <laughs> the most boring I'm gonna show. go make my popcorn in the kitchen, I'm and I'm gonna go, go sit down and study. watch them do it. Carm caramel corn. I'm gonna go watch people study for the She's SAT. Yeah, I'm gonna quit. <laughs> Fuck. Were you referring to your den or ours? Yours. Ah, okay. Well, what? What is it you wish to do? Do you wish 
utility in the manipulation of the world around you? I'll always. Okay. Perhaps. Do you enjoy the idea of drawing the potential from discarded timelines? That is intriguing. <laughs> How do you mean? Let me show you. And he pulls out a book from beneath the cloak. The, the, the glyphs are being shown, the pages are brought one after the other, and the instruction comes to Caleb. The first spell in which uh, Essek describes, there are ways which you can manipulate the gravity around specific objects to uh, become a fixed point in space. Like, for instance, and he takes out a small, uh, looks like a, a sack of some kind, and pulls up some gold dust in his hand and scatters it across one of the nearby chairs and takes it and lifts it up. He kind of does a small series of finger motions that creates this kind of slight spectral glyph. The sand, or the, the gold-like dust pulls towards the glyph and then <laughs> vanishes. And he releases the chair and the chair remains fixed in space. on it a little bit. Does not budge at all. That is useful. Yes, I know. That is useful. It's a meager trick, but it has many uh, creative applications. Does it, can you do to people? No. Two non-magical objects of a smaller size, but uh, I mean, give it a tug. You're pretty strong. See if you can move it. Yes, just okay. uh, give it a tug. I'll give it the hardest tug I can. <laughs> Make a strength check. I, can I dangle from it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you may dangle from it as you tug. Oh, the tug is Make a Can I give check. myself guidance? I'm a willing creature. Sure. <laughs> that was like a dive bomb. That was. That was. <laughs> Hey. Oh, that's not good. Twelve. Twelve does not move at all. You actually lift your entire body up off of this chair that is just frozen in in place there this in the middle. This is really here. awesome. Can you climb up and sit on it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's in an angle, but you can kind of do it I'm if you hold, hold on to the back, to the of, the back of the chair. So yeah. Uh, is that comfortable? I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> Less I'm kicking my about. feet. You can't see it, but my feet are kicking. <laughs> Less for about an hour until you wish it to stop. And he snaps, oh. and the chair falls <laughs> onto the ground oh. with Jester. Oh. Worth it. So, hopefully, this immovable object spell will be uh, useful to you. I can come up with a few applications for it, yes. Here is uh, something a little more interesting. And I will request that you be careful when using this in any public space outside of Rosana. Understood. These are tricks that um, are pretty well guarded. Are you putting yourself at risk by sharing these with me? Maybe. But let that be an extension of my trust in you and your friends. I expect, hopefully, the same trust in return. Is fairly established, I would like to think. Good. We have friends now. I like that. Friends. So, time. When you move through it from moment to moment, you make choices. Each choice guides the next path of where this timeline will go. But when you make that choice, so many potential timelines are left to decay. So much potential lost to redistribute into the universe. Why not put some of that unused potential to use? He procures a small piece of obsidian from inside and draws this quick shh across the air, and you watch this kind of line shh carve across, and where it does, it looks like shadow pours out of it, but the shadow forms legs and a cloak. <gasps> and you see what looks to be a 
black, shadowy, spectral copy of Essek. Ooh, that's like... <gasps> These are referred to as echoes. They are potential selves left to fade in unrealized timelines. Some elements of Dunamancy have allowed us the ability to call them. After all, they are a piece of us. Why not make use of them before they are reabsorbed by time and space? That is fascinating. I had some notion of this being in contact with your beacon. We had it for a while, and if you spent time with it, you sensed that very possibility. Some of our elite warriors, known as Echo Knights, specifically focus on this technique. But us as practitioners of uh, arcane arts, it's a little more specific. For you see, this version here contains a facet of my magical capabilities. I can cast one spell, <gasps> but when cast, it vanishes. And it can easily be destroyed as well. So, keep it safe. An even weaker wizard than I am. <laughs> Don't tell it that. But anyway, come, I'll show you how to copy these down. And these spells become now available to you. The resonant echo spell and the movable object spell. Oh, dog. shit. Can I practice them too? Sure. <laughs> Takes his book and hands it to you. Tell me, um, what of these particular glyphs can you ascertain the connections? Make an arcana check. Come on, roll high. Now's the time. <clears throat> Now's the time. Guide me, traveler. Get to the bed. Fuck me. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh. It looks like absolute gibberish to you on the page. Balls. <coughs> so what do you see? Um, I see great peril <laughs> and <laughs> lots of time changing, and I see um, this little part kind of looks like a mouse, and then <laughs> over here, that's definitely, that's a tree. That's a tree, because you can see it's got this line right here, and then that's, and. Make a deception check. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> the dice hate me tonight. <laughs> I got a natural one. You didn't guide yourself. <laughs> that just wasn't worth it. As you're pointing out the tree, Essex slowly pulls the book away. I think we'll keep this between the, the learned. Individuals. I'm learned in other ways. Of course you are. I could probably teach you some things, Essek. Uh, I... I bet I could. I'm certain you might, but I am not particularly <laughs> interested in what you have to teach. Nevertheless, he takes the book back and tucks it into the cloak. So, I will bid you goodbye. Remember, be careful. Echoes are definitely indicative of dynasty abilities. It would be very easy for someone within the Empire to question your allegiance should you be carrying one out in the open. Why would they question my allegiance? With discretion, I understand perfectly. Very well. Good luck. Thanks. And uh, remember, should you find the location of such a beacon, time is of the essence. All right. Goodbye. Hey, Isaac. Mm -hmm. Could you put the chair back in the air? It's just really cool up there. Your friend Caleb is able to do that now. It is uh, not inexpensive. Oh, okay. Do you have 25 gold to pass along? 
Well, I mean, yeah, but I don't know if a chair in the air is worth that. <laughs> that is exactly what I mean. But maybe you can like convince him. All right. <laughs> he leaves you to your devices, but with two more facets of Dunamancy in your uh, midst. <laughs> okay, I'm going to send another message if I can answer. All right. Sorry to bother you again. Um, would you be able to provide transport into a uh, place within the Empire? Um, is that something you're willing and able? Do you? Do you peep? You hear a. Oh, he's slipping. I think he's slipping. Respectfully, you have a capable. Arcanist in your midst. I have already shuttled you to places far away. You should not have a problem returning to where you came from, right? Well. Oh, well, that's the end of your spells. Mm -hmm. No, I've got two more fourth level. I'm going to send a message back. Oh, I know, for the record, that's totally how I was feeling about it, too. I was just double checking, you know, because we needed to check. And that's it. <laughs> it was all filler work. <laughs> that's the whole sending message. I just... wish you luck. Let me know should you discover where this beacon may be. Okay. I'm going to send him another message back. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> 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 we definitely will do that, Essek. Also, I hope you have a really good night's sleep. And thank you for everything today. The chair is really cool. Sweet dreams. <laughs> no response comes through. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. You approach, and as you ride, waiting outside, you see arms probably crossed <laughs> from, from, from the, the slight shape of the front of the cloak and mantle. You see Essek just there, kind of staring at the ground and then up at you as you all approach. As you <laughs> kind of make your way over <laughs> towards him. He looks over. Hello. Super sorry about this again. As you can see, we've come a very long way on horseback. Yes. We've just arrived. Impressive, I suppose? We are in a bit of a hurry. And I know that we are wearing out our welcome, but we need to get to the Lotus Den. Very. The Laughing Hand is about, and you know, the people that we talked about who we accidentally, that got loose up, um, I don't remember where, but it was, I think, in the north somewhere, and then they have figured out how to open up somebody else's casket stuff, and then they're going to awaken somebody else, and it's going to be even worse, because there's already three of them, and if there's four, then they're going to be so much more powerful, and now he's got a skull, and he's going to find a heart with to beat him. The heart of a very, very, very <laughs> bad creature that they want to awaken. Yes. And it, it, it's prox it's more it's closer to to the dynasty than the empire. This is this could directly impact your people. Yeah, it's a demon assassin. Super bad. Part of a demon assassin. It's a group of people that were letting all the bad things out. You know. Skull of a demon assassin. He seems to be part of a, a cult it's called mm -hmm. the Angel of Lions. I'm sure, I already told you about the thing. Yes, you have informed me of this, and I have already agreed you are not needing to convince me any further. Okay, I was just wondering, um, you know, it's super important, that's why we, you know, ask for help. Do you have a place to put your horses? Um, consider them a gift. <laughs> well. In exchange for your continued assistance. <clears throat> yeah, these are empire horses. Rarity in these parts. They may know something. <laughs> <laughs> his, ex his kind of rocky held exterior cracks a little with a smile and goes, Well, um, I do not consider this payment um, a favor for a favor. And I'm certain I would call these favors in at some time in the future. But for now, 
just go ahead and hitch them to the exterior of your home, and we'll be on our way. Seems like a plan. Yeah. Great. Let's do that. Yeah. All right. We do so, so. You bring it, hitch them to the side there. Um, you gather up around them. So where to then? We're we just doing this out on the street. Do we go do, inside? Do you or? know where the Lotus then is? I do. Yes. You do? Have you been there? I've not been there, but I've studied the vicinity of uh, Joras. How, how big is it? Well, it's fairly large. You well, you saw it, right? I mean, I saw where they were. Maybe you could show a, an image. Maybe that would narrow down some of the geography of the, of where we're headed. Maybe I, mean, I could try to draw what I saw. Oh, oh okay then. Well, maybe I don't know. Make a nature or survival check, your choice. Nineteen. Nineteen, okay. Remembering back to the vision you had when they were traveling and thinking of the time of day that it would have been here and where the sun was in the sky, you can ascertain they were probably heading south. Whoa, I'm so smart. <laughs> they are, I think they were heading roll. south. <laughs> So we should probably go towards the south of the Lotus Den, right? Were they in the forest, or were they? They were entering the forest, right? Or were they in the forest? They I can't remember. Them. Well, they were entering, and then they were like. They, I feel like it was swampy-ish where they were coming from, and they were getting to more dense foliage or something. Yeah, Essek, on this map, do you know if uh, the area right above the Lotus Den, sort of represented here, is that swamp land? As far that as is uh, largely marsh before it goes into the Fever Gulf. Yes. Should well, that's we, probably should where we, we try we're... the middle, or should we try the the most southernmost point and work up? No, I think no, no, we no, should no. go where they were, the swamp. Yeah? Just yeah. south and of they it, were though. Their way here. Yeah, yeah. I think we heading... should be south of them. Well, they were looking. If they're, they're traveling southward towards the den, yeah, through a swamp area, then I think you're onto that. But the northern side. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah, let's let's do that. Do we want to like uh, take a pee break real quick while we're here at the Jour House? Check in on the plants, you know, make sure that you no know, one's broken in, any disturbances. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I, I, feel like... I feel like there's a bit of urgency here. All right, gather around. Mm-hmm. Did you? I mean, it's a Jour House. Yeah, yeah. but it's like super <clears throat> fast. We have to be like, we have to beat them. Mm-hmm. We just have to dope dirons here. Yeah, we have to, to, we have to beat them. I will to cast this place. message and point inside the house and say, Tyron, are you in there? Uh, no response. She's not home. Let's go. <laughs> All right. We're ready. His hands emerge from inside the cloak. You guys gather in a circle, familiar <laughs> joining of hands. He focuses, and I need someone to roll a D100 for me. I'll do it. Okay. <clears throat> the wizard. <clears throat> that was a 92. 92, all righty. That's good, that's good. Uh, yeah, so okay. with, without issue, <laughs> you all find the entirety of the scene, of the city around you, fade to darkness, and you're all drawn in that same instantaneous kind of forceful gravitational sucking sensation from the center of your torso, like the, your, your sternum is trying to burrow its way out of your chest, not out of pain, but just a forceful tug. And as you are dragged along with it, but a moment later, your feet find purchase once more on hard ground. But not as hard as you began this journey. Your feet kind of into kind of marsh, about a foot, uh, I'm sorry, about, about an inch or two into the mud, your feet descend and suck in. The water seeps in a bit through any of the cracks of your lower part of your boots, Gross. immediately soggy in the base. I'm glad I'm wearing my old boots and not my new boots. Would this be considered <laughs> difficult terrain? Uh, not this deep, okay. but it were to turn into a deeper swamp, possibly. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, about what time of day is it again? It is. What time of day is it? <laughs> uh, what time of day is it? I'd say it's a town. Like early afternoon, I'd say. Because you, you traveled. Because it was. Let's see, you got to the. So wherever you peg it, Caleb okay, would know. He knows the hour. No, I know. I'm trying to think. So you journeyed to, to, to Zadash. You arrived, pretty much beelined to the archive, researched for hours. So it'd be like mid afternoon. Okay. Three. Three ish, like that kind of thing. Four, five, four, five, four, five ish, pushing okay. towards dusk. Three, four, five. In the next no few hours. Problem. It's four thirty-eight. 
very specific. Do we have any way, my, by magical means or otherwise, of tracking or tracing where our former friend, now enemy, murderous assassin Yasha might be? Maybe. Is there a locate I spell? I have a locate some? object spell. You know her, I mean, her weapon. Her sword, her weapon, yeah. yeah. Magician shit. Yeah. Yeah. I could mm-hmm. cast Magician. that. It's a concentration, and then as, if she's within a thousand feet of us, I will know. Could, could, you, could you do it for the heart, possibly, or no? I don't know enough about it. Mm. I just know it's a heart. But I guess I would know it's a heart not inside a body, potentially, but it, it could be inside the body, Madrasa, I don't know. If that it, it actually is a heart and not something that's represented as a heart. That's true, it could be like that's a giant true. jewel or something. Yes. Like the heart of the... The sea? The ruby at this. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, you are thinking yeah. the other I imagine the, other campaign. Campaign. Come on. I imagine the hope is to get the heart before they do, so that they can't get their friend that's together. That's their goal. Not necessarily to find them. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, what should I do? You should find the thing that we know, her sword. And just hope that we stay clear of her? Yeah, hope, hope it doesn't trigger at all. Okay. I don't think she's within a thousand feet of us anyway. I'm looking around. A thousand feet is pretty far. As you look around, the one thing you do notice is kind of emerging from the nearby marsh, and it is like, you know, Various degrees of some hillsides that protrude from the somewhat damp, swampy marsh floor. Uh, the sound of buzzing insects surrounds the vicinity. Mm-hmm. Um, later in the day, that kind of hot, kind of orangey light is coming through the broken, clouded sky. Uh, it's not hot, but it is humid um, and just a little muggy and uncomfortable. You do notice on one of the nearby rocks while you guys are conversing, Essek has made his way over there and is drawing his teleportation circle on the rock and mm-hmm. is just not even caring or listening to what you guys are doing. Can I get a beat on on his mood or his attitude towards us since we met up with him? Make an insight check. Okay. Over to this again. Ooh. Uh, that is a 26. Good insight. Oh, whispers. This might be my first whisper of the campaign. <laughs> guys, so, whispers aren't sponsored by anything, but uh, you, guys, you guys should go to the Crit Roll store and, and buy our merch. And also, uh, what was my sponsor today? Paranoia, happiness is magic. Happiness is mandatory. Uh, you should you should buy that game when it comes out and uh, keep a uh, look at the channel because we might pl- plan it. <laughs> Play it soon, I don't know. Mm-hmm. All righty. Every time you lift that monstrous metal beast. Just as a baseline, aside Horror from the daily. aside Sorry. from the buzzing insects, are there um, <laughs> is there bird animal noises? Uh, is the, does the forest sound like it moves quite a bit, or is it actually quite still? Uh, well, the, the area that you're in right now, there's occasionally sparse trees, maybe you know a few. A dozen yards apart each. Oh. The tree line of the Lotus Den is a little further south from you, maybe about a 10 minute walk. You can see where the actual Lotus Den Greenwood begins, and it is a dense forest. So uh, we bamped behind the group, or we I tried we to bamp in. F- we were trying to bamp ahead of the group, right? Yeah, middle of the Lotus Den, right? Yeah. Or did we bamp behind where they had already gone? He was told mm. you wanted to bamf onto the northern side of. The forest. Okay. Okay, so we bamf behind them. Yeah. Are there okay. any trees, or is it like a swamp with vines? Can I pull some Tarzan shit? Can I climb to something for a better vantage point? Uh, you can go to one of the lower trees here. The higher trees are in the actual lotus den, but you guys, it's, it's a quick jump yeah. to go in there if you wanted to. It's up to you. Now let's just go in, right? Yes! Sure. Can we see any footprints or mm-hmm. anywhere? I'm going to cast Locate Object on so Yasha's sword. Just so we're all on the same page, yes. They started at the top of the Greenwood, we and we bamped to the same area. Yeah, yeah not in the we middle. Were, I right? thought we were bamping we thought we to were the middle. Get more ahead of them. Yeah, I thought that's what we were doing, but if because they're moving south, and we were trying to cut them off so we south, get to the south, south side. Of the I don't think we. Right? I mean, that's what I thought the plan was too: was to be ahead of them. Yeah, and then we trying were to to intercept. Yeah, these right. are invisible things we that we don't the understand. South side, but is that what we mm-hmm. did? But we bamped to the north side. Um, the person who's responsible for teleporting you was followed the instructions he was given, okay. which was teleport you to the north side of the of the forest. That's right. done. That's fine. Okay. That's done. Yeah, we'll track him. It's fine. If you want to be, if you wanted to go somewhere more specific, you should have pointed it out to him. It's all right. Misunderstandings this, happen yes. between drow elves and 
tieflings and humans, you yes. know, so that's what happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe it's like a col- colloquialism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. We can do maybe some tracking, it's great. Yeah, okay, Caduceus, so I'm gonna cast... you're a good tracker, right? Oh, what? Oh, I have a boy. pretty decent survival. Well, aside that's from that, tracking. Caduceus, are you getting any sort of feeling from? He hasn't. But Essek hasn't left yet. If you're, if you want to file a complaint or ask for <laughs> something else to, to help, like he's about to jump through a teleportation circle. Are you? That feels rude, right? I'm the rude one, and I feel like that feels rude. What to ask him to do it again? Yeah. <laughs> I would ask him to do it again. I wanted to be in the middle. Hey, Essek. Yeah. <laughs> he's like. You got any more of those? Like, how many? How many times can you do that? I'm so sorry. I feel like we didn't communicate clearly when we <laughs> pointed to the middle of the forest. That's where we wanted to go, not here, there. The Could we do that? Biggest assholes. <laughs> he stands up straight from he was slightly hunched position over the rock, finishing the final scribblings across its surface before he turns, holding his kind of iridescent blue chalk in his fingertips. He just spins and goes. That stuff is expensive. That's, it's pretty. It's, it's very pricey. Like, do you think like worth one horse pricey or more fine. than that? He's gonna kill us. He's gonna mm, just he totally flip kill us off. Let's see. He jumps gravity. into that circle. Just, you want to grab it? No, he's no. I said, gra- I said gravity. He's got gravity on his head. Oh. Oh no. I mean, we could just find where we are. <laughs> I think what my my companions uh, are trying to request. Um, we weren't clear enough, um, which is foolish of us because the stakes are so high right now. <laughs> but we actually wish to go, Ford pointed out on the map. Oh, uh, just, just, uh, just delicately. And I walk, I walk forward yeah. to Essek and, and place my hand on his forearm and say that it's on me. I should have um, been a little more involved in the planning of this moment, and I apologize very much. One of the two of you Make a persuasion check with advantage, or you can each make one separately. It's up to you because you are helping each other. Ford and me. Yes, since you are both the two that are trying to, <laughs> trying to persuade him. I'm gonna just pat Caleb on his the back of his arm. Guidance. <laughs> People can see that. Yeah, it's it's not like pat. It's saying a phrase and a gesture. And Ravelo uh, loves you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's on me. Had advantage. Is that all right? Is your persuasion pretty good? It's not as good as mine, Ford's is, we should both but roll. it's close. Right. Let's both roll. And Natural what did you twice. give me? Oh! <laughs> what did you four, four, four total of twenty-six. Twenty-five. Ooh, twenty-two. Well, a D four. You have to roll a D four. It's gonna be four. It was it's four. four. <laughs> twenty-six <laughs> and a natural twenty. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, why can we always roll like this? I know. 22, 22. The, the chalk descends back beneath the cloak. He looks at the two of you and looks across at the group and goes, Very well. Though this is expending the limits of my uh, prominent abilities for the day. Come gather, are you going to do this or not? Do you want to hang out with us until you can regain your spells and stuff? Yeah. You can, I mean. I, there would be nothing I would love more than to not be around you all (laughs) for the remainder of this day. So, let's try this again, shall we? Okay. All right. Give his forearm just a little squeeze and then let it go. He kind of like pulls Ooh. it away, just like enough. Mm. Go ahead and roll a d100 for me. Oh, oh, shit. oh god! Oh god! Yeah. Should someone what else roll, roll a d100? No. no. No, this is good. We're fine. Ninety-one. Yeah. Okay, you're your math. <laughs> some lucky rolls today. All right. <laughs> I don't want to be in the middle. <laughs> so. The familiar sensation, this time as opposed to, you know, being pulled into a void and then pushed out to the other side, this feels almost like reality, kind of static shifts, and you guys are suddenly shunted um, miles and miles to the south. As soon as you all stop, there's like a brief moment of momentum, and your stomach kind of spins and feels sick just momentarily as you all touch down onto even 
uh, say spongier ground. It's still marshland in this part of the, the forest, but as opposed to being just like a thick, watery swamp, it's just damp, uh, kind of undergrowth and general kind of dense, gross forest floor. Um, around you, it, it's you can hear the echoing calls of strange birds, kind of just permeating what is a very thick canopy of dangling vines, mm -hmm. tangled branches, and thick, thick, deep green leaves. <laughs> you can see faint, low uh, hints of mist that just slightly kind of drift over large, heavy roots that protrude from underneath and kind of uh, twist and knot between each other as the different trees that kind of push in the space around you. You, you realize as you land that few of you may have been a little close for comfort to some, something solid, but you safely <laughs> managed to make your way here without issue. Um, you occasionally hear a little bit of a, a strange monstrous like in the distance, another creature's kind of this is a very predator shit. It's a very lively, oh very lived oh in. This is way creepier green. than the other place we bamped to. Okay, so the air smells of fresh vegetation, a recent rainfall, uh, occasionally waves of kind of a, a putrid musk or sweet flower scent kind of whiffs through the air. Uh, it's a very lively, natural uh, place where civilization seems to have not really got a foothold, or if it has, it's been heavily reclaimed over time. As Essek kind of looks around. Well, now I have formally visited the Lotus Den. I would not wish to return. Good luck. Essek, Thank you. Mm -hmm. do you know of any, like, ruins around here or anything? Have you heard of anything? I have no idea. Okay. Mm. Hey, Essek. Yes? Are you mad at us? <laughs> Mad is not the right word. I would oh. say um, ready to leave. Uh, At least you didn't say disappointed. I feel like disappointed is the worst. Is that. It's like three thing. small yeah. words that yeah. somehow combined hey, man. one big feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Having forgotten that we owe you a favor and that you wanted to talk to us about needing something, so hey, you're at the top of our list as soon as this is done. A number of favors. I have not forgotten. Mm. Neither, neither have we. <laughs> but in all honesty, be careful, be safe, do not be stupid, and uh, goodbye. <laughs> you watch as he finishes casting that spell he was subtly oh. kind of signing in the air, and you watch him just fly through the canopy <laughs> as he goes through, uh, not like rocketing out like Superman, but like kind of just <laughs> drifts up with a fair bit of speed. Some of the branches kind of snap and fall from where he was, and there's a brief little bit of light that kind of peeks through where he kind of pushed his way oh. through the tree line. Some pieces. Did we already summon Essek, and how do we do so? Oh, yes, while they were gone, I sent a message to Essek. Right. Okay. Wait, Hold on, I gotta make sure I have that. Just say a message. Perfect. Right uh, there isn't a, I think we're back. We really need to talk to you if you have the time, because it's super important. Also, uh -oh. you're super cool. We miss you, and you float really good. <laughs> <laughs> As a reminder, you don't have to say all the words, <laughs> but I appreciate the effort. <laughs> you want to use maximum you want to use I respect that. Exactly. Yeah, every Those every words <laughs> wasted. Every piece of the buffalo. So. I respect that. Um, <clears throat> Essek responds. Ah, this is good to hear. I'm glad you returned. I assume safely. Uh, I will go ahead and pass on by within the hour. He's coming by. Excellent. Yeah. Right. What can I see and hear? You go. To, <clears throat> door open slightly. The uh, chimes gonna tick mm -hmm. here a little bit. On the other side, you see Essek with uh, two of the uh, guards of the Rosona Guard at the side. Hello. Um, I, Wait, I'm, he's got two guards. Yes. Why has he got two guards? Wait, what? That's Sorry, new. keep going. That's about I, I I apologize for the. Um, Companions, uh, there was apparently a uh, a break in last night in some records, and as such, uh, we're just being more careful. 
Oh my gosh. So, anyway, um, <clears throat> wait outside if you don't mind. Two guards stay exterior. Dyron's not in the room with us, right? Dyron has, he was nowhere to be seen currently. Okay. We haven't seen them all morning. No. Okay. I would have told them to, like, <coughs> that we were doing this and to not come and, like, hide. Dyron, uh, you've not seen it all this morning. Okay. At all. Um, so Essek enters the chamber. Might have come out of the shower again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I see you have all arrived safely. How, how did the venture go? Not well. It went real, real bad, Essek. I'm sorry to hear that. So are we. Yeah, well, unsuccessful again. We seem to be in an ever-ending chase after that, which we are trying to prevent. Which means uh, Oban is one step closer to his overall goal and potentially not on this plane with us anymore. I think given the circumstances and how uh, how dire this growth seems to be at this individual you've been after, Perhaps we put our specific endeavor on hold while you pursue this one, yes? Pursue Oban? Here's the thing, I think we're a little bit out of our depth. He's pretty powerful, and he just woke up somebody else. The, the inevitable end. All right, I will I'll put some research into this. I already have a few operatives mm -hmm. looking to infiltrate, to locate and infiltrate uh, the cult of the Angel of Irons, oh. you said it was. Yeah. In hopes of gathering more information. You have? Yes, since you gave me this information a while back. I Thank you. didn't oh. know if you were really yeah. listening to us or not. I'm, to be fair, and he kind of steeples his fingers underneath his cloak, I have a lot of plates. I'm spinning at any given point in time. Uh, this is one and I'm now giving it a bit more prominence, so I apologize to have misled you to think otherwise. And I also apologize for my attitude. Yesterday, I have been under some pressure. I can not at all. We are trying to be of use here. Can we be of use? Um. And kind of looks back over the, the door. Your usefulness currently by the mind of the Bright Queen is in offering uh, a tactical advantage or any information you've gleaned from the Empire's military movements. You've been a great aid in that once already, and so they are very interested in anything else you've heard. Locally, I don't know what much you can do, but just speaking of the interests above me, if there's any information you can find, glean, or have heard of any sort of military movements of the Empire that could put us in a continuous uh, advantageous position, she would be extremely grateful. There, there is, I think, one thing that we could say that <sighs> there's something that, if it were considered, could be advantageous, although to an uncreative mind, it may not seem useful. There are more than two parties at work in this conflict of yours, and I think this dual thinking is going to be the end of you if you're not careful. And I would say that we feel pretty confident that there are people within the Empire working against the Empire, and there are people in the Dynasty working against the Dynasty, and perhaps these people are working together. And if you are one of those people and we're hoping you're not, then this information will never go any further than this, and that's the end of that, but if you're not, maybe it will make its way higher up. I feel more firmly than ever that this war is a game. That these two nations are being thrust into for someone else's purposes. I appreciate your candor. I will take this information to the right, trusted few. And only after very careful Betting on my end as well. If what you say is true, then that is 
very much uh, disconcerting. Can I raise my eyes slightly and see if I was the sphere is still I was going to beat check, on his. Yeah, uh, same. Inside check? His, yeah. yeah. Go and for it. Inside I, check, and you're you looking to see, see if the sphere is still up there. Yeah, it's still, it's like coasted and it's now moved kind of the center of the chamber and is kind of hovering above all of you. It's true, Robin. 19. 19? Natural 20. On the inside check? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just double whispers, double whispers. Uh, Guys, pins, pins, chibi What's yaka. The total on the inside then? Chibi What's the total on the inside? Uh, so I gave myself a little, uh, um, chibi oh, I couldn't chibi. have given myself a thing, damn it. Never mind. Chibi Laura Bailey. Ooh, I would buy uh, that. 29. <laughs> <laughs> 29 total what? insight check? I, it's hard to lie. You know more about them than they do. I know more about you than you do. <laughs> That's probably true. 29. They keep asking you to tell me and you just won't. Skybound. Dwarven Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt D&D yourself. D&D Beyond. These are all fabulous, <laughs> fabulous supporters of Critical Role. <laughs> It's, by the way, can we comment store, on how miraculous uh, your heal is? Yeah, you look really good. I got, uh, I got an adrenaline shot. Right? Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be 12. We appreciate that. Well, good luck. You as well. Um, should any th- more concrete, anything I could bring to the Bright Queen about this threat that you're after, this Oban, this Angel of Irons, whether I find it first or you do, but anything that you think could draw her attention away from this conflict and perhaps focus on they said that this thing. Kato Geist was a, a servant of who? Of a Loth. And that, that is Loth. certainly of interest to the queen. He had a contract with Asmodeus. That is a strange is union. But I'm yeah, not brushed up on my history, them. but. It's referred to as an assassin for Loth. I will look into this. We will uh, share whatever information we can without I'll compromising our very complicated position. I am certain you will. Your We're timing is impeccable. Like best friends all the time. Just think of it. Is there a certain <clears throat> time of day that's like better for me to contact <sighs> you so that maybe I'm not interrupting anything? May- Preferably uh, no later than midnight. Johan's time. Okay, I'll ask you, you'll remember, Caleb, what time it is here all the time, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and would you like like a breakfast message, if possible? Do you like your dinner messages? When do you check your emails? Quarter of the day, maybe. It's pretty I'd, quarter of the day. don't think it would make a difference, so whatever suits your fancy. Okay. <sighs> Good luck. Same to you. Thank you. Don't and trust anyone. Not even us. <laughs> no, no, no. We want him the, to trust. Don't even trust, trust us. Stop! Stop! She's just fucking with you. What? <laughs> right. Anyway, um, <laughs> keep in touch. And he turns around and glides his way towards the door. Ding, 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 ding. As it opens once more, the guards awaiting him, and they exit. Guess who's back? Um, we're back at the Jor house. We miss you so much. We need to talk to the Bright Queen. Are you around? Oh my gosh, you have to hear about everything. That's one word. That thing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. It is good to have you returned. Give me just a moment, please. And uh, as you guys kind of gather yourselves a bit, it's a, a patient 45 minutes or so before Essek makes his way to your door. You have. Four to five minutes or 45, 45 minutes? 45. 45. 45. It's a power move. Seven hours left on the seeming spell. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you haven't dropped it? Not yet. Okay. Ah, uh, who is it? <laughs> it's the Shadow Hand. Still a cool title. I'll use uh, my Mage Hand to open the door. <laughs> Opens and ting, 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 ting. drifts in. Yep. Thank you. Well, uh, you all look well. <laughs> Sorry, if it is the wrong time, I no, can't come back. No, it's not real. I. <laughs> 
It's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> oh, now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> Are you okay, so, Isaac? Um. Ah, yes. You can't take it. It looks a little sleep deprived. Yeah. I guess look a little weary. Everything okay here in uh, Rosanna? Um. Well, everything is is. All right, I suppose. Um, you know, the, the assault on Rexentrum uh, that's orchestrated over the past few weeks um, was set upon the city until um, this arrival of a Taldorian dignitary came and invoked your name within the bastion. I take it you know this individual. Right. And uh, she corroborated your concerns regarding the uh, Angel of Iron's cult. And uh, based on that, and based on my backing up your word as well, the Bright Queen recalled the attack on Rex Syndrome. Why had the attack been launched in the first place? Well, it was believed that perhaps this missing beacon of which I had sent you to seek itself was somewhere within the city, and the attack was sent to uh, draw attention away from the district and where it was initially placed. Um, this was all orchestrated by Task and Adin Tassathar? Abdin Tassathar? Adin Dazar. I, I, yeah. Mm. Adin Tassathar was pushing for this timing to coincide with the lull following this Harvest Festival. Since then, uh, we've investigated the Dean, found him already halfway across the Ghostlands on his own, shrouded and seeming to attempt to escape. Wait, what? He was what? part of the, the Angel of Irons cult, he was part of it. We ambushed and retrieved him and have spent the better part of the past day interrogating him. Oh, wait, wait. Is that why you look so sleepy? There's been a lot of work to be done, yes. So he, was he the source of the intelligence that the, the beacon was in Rexentrum to begin with? <laughs> well, it appears, as you say, that Hadeen was part of this cult, the Angel of Irons, and uh, was working directly with someone within the Empire. In his chambers, we found traces of these pink crystals. Were part of these uh, devices, the one that you had first brought before the Bright Queen, and uh, we managed to push him to confess. He had a correspondence with this Vance figure that you had spoke of, and this Oban that you are chasing. Oh, he's Oban the Punish now. He kind of had a change in position, and. Title, and then a nice, good squelching. Yeah, he's kind of like dead now, or I guess like eternally fucked. Eternally fucked. So you've managed to to exact your vengeance, then. We have. That's that's great news. Took a while. Sorry about that. It's all right. We did it. Big things like this do take time. I mean, we didn't like, you know, and everything with the cult. I'm sure, but. A big, huge part of it. And, and the Vance is also on the run now, uh, uh, on the other side of the uh, conflict. <clears throat> you should also know we uncovered a shackle, one of the th things keeping the chained oblivion at bay. This is what this Alora had said to the Bright Queen and had uh, made the request for this temporary ceasefire. Also, as you inferred to me, uh, this other individual that may have been working within our midst to provide the beacons to the Empire, oh. Adin also uh, confessed to secretly trading away these beacons. And this, mm -hmm. they must have been very high up in the hierarchy to have access to these things. And why haven't we heard of them before, if that's the case? How did we miss this guy? There are many dens. You've only encountered but a few. Yeah. How long have you had him in custody for questioning? Uh, two days. Any idea of, hello. Any idea of uh, accomplices? 
we are working on that at the moment. Uh, he is currently imprisoned and is being held awaiting judgment from the Bright Queen. Once we've exhausted our interrogations and find no more purpose, that is where he will go. Traded away beacons. What did he get in return? That is uh, something we are currently seeking. It would seem perhaps access to this empire figure, perhaps something to do with the cult itself. We are not sure. Which empire figure? Vents? Possibly. Do you know how many beacons, or just one? Are the two that we were originally missing. Fuck, that was going to be a conversation. Mm. I have not yet informed the queen of these findings, as this was a recent acquisition. You had him for two days, though? We've had him for two days, but we've only recently been able to get this information out of him. So she, she doesn't even... <coughs> She's about to. <clears throat> well, well, we have some information for her as well. Yeah, Maybe we, we should lay it all on her at once. Uh, yeah. Very well. Uh, when are you ready to speak with her? I mean... Is there any reason why you haven't told her yet? Are you trying to confirm or gather, or...? I was... If you're going to, in a point of extreme tensions in warfare in which the queen is impatiently waiting for any sort of concrete proof as to why the ceasefire was necessary, we wanted to make sure that we presented it as an entire package, as opposed to piecemeal. It is better, and hmm. also we need to cross our T's as well, in the instance that perhaps any of this information is incorrect. You've done very, very well by us. Would you care to hear what we would have to say now so it doesn't catch you by surprise? Please. We can confirm that the Empire does indeed have one of these beacons. We've seen it. Mm. Whereabouts is it located? Up north of Rexentrum. Mm. Outside of the city. We don't know the exact location. They kind of teleported us there. Right. Is it a place that can be accessed, perhaps? Maybe via Purple Worm? Yes, but you may not need to. They've agreed to give it back. In exchange for what? Peace talks? A meeting. Supposedly huh. to perhaps ease tensions between the two nations. And we are as skeptical as you seem to be now. But it still seemed like an opportunity. Indeed. Curious what it is they want or what it is we're not seeing here, but if it stems the spilling of blood for the time being, it should at least be entertained, hopefully. We have suggested to them a, a neutral location, neither here nor there, um, just so that no one would unduly have the upper hand. Um, we are cautious, though, and are loath to bring uh, any danger here. It seems like a difficult path still, but um, we would like you and the Queen to entertain the idea of, of easing tensions here. I know how um, hardline she seems to be, and, and it is not unfounded. We she, understand. She has seen a lot of bloodshed in her years, and I understand where she's coming from. But I think it's worth a conversation. Mind you, for such a negotiation, there would be no uh, personal appearance by her. There would have to be proxies and emissaries and, and uh, probably speak via mirror or some sort of uh, distance conversational point at the place. So at least these negotiations have agreed upon these transferences could take place. Like a FaceTime talking to another FaceTime? <laughs> like that? I assume that is something of a similar thing as the mirrors, but probably. We just were holding up two, porn, two yeah. porn books, by the way. <laughs> I'm not judging. FaceTime is a great series. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of mouth stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the YA section. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> you mentioned crossing your T's. Um, I wonder if perhaps would it be foolish of us to think that an audience might be had with your prisoner? We were first hand with more of these Angel of Iron cultists. I wonder how they might react to knowing that um, prominent figures have been dealt with, done, squandered. Uh, that could probably be done. I have to pull some strings, but it could. It would need to be just a. Oh my god, you know what else we could do? What? Oh my god, okay, okay, okay. So 50, what? 50 chance is ridiculous. <laughs> What if one of us could make ourselves look like Vince? Uh huh, uh huh. Like we've been caught. And you could throw Ooh. him in the cell next to your guy and, like, leave them alone a little bit so that they could talk to each other. Maybe get some more information. Do we know how Vince talks? We saw him in that vision once and he was, like, talking to, like, um, a FaceTime. Did he have a sending in <laughs> Someone was sitting on his uh, face. Uh, he did, yes. We can certainly try it, but we have to do it soon. He's or, or, supposed um, to be given over for um, If your your guy has talked to Oban, maybe one of us could make ourselves look like Oban. We know what he talks like. It's also possible. Mm. How would Oban he would down be in the jail in the cell? That's true. He wouldn't that's be stupid. Jail, but Vance, yeah. Vance is a good yeah, yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty make good. Idea. Make it so that it looks like his throat has been slashed oh, and he's nice, raspy. raspy. Oh, that's true. It would be much easier to bring one person into the prison than Seven. True. Agreed. So who would be the one to make this attempt? I mean, I can change I how I appear. Probably Ford is really good at sounding I mean, like other people. That would be my people. second choice, yes. It has or been your specialty in the past. It, yes, yeah. Oh, I don't want to do it. I can also. <laughs> you might have to shave a beard, though. No, 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 I can too. make myself look like other people. I can always come in and punch him in the face, too. Trust me, there's truth. been plenty of punching for two days. I do not think that you would maybe. Uh... But do they have magical punches that make people talk? We have to Bob magical Bob. means of forcing the truth, if that's what you're talking about. Fuck. Whatever. Yeah, let's do this plan. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good plan. I need to know everything about. <laughs> Fence. Where, what did he, how tall is he? What did he look like? What did he sound I like? Draw tell you exactly. I draw him in my like my most photorealistic way of drawing. Oh, we know what he wore. <laughs> yeah, 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 There's yeah. That swath of fabric that we had. I will give you my. Oh, well, you got to change. I could give you my armor that can change into any. Oh wait, we're gonna change your appearance. We're fine. We're yeah. fine. We're fine. Okay. Could you make yourself look like him for a moment? Could I make my? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. that's that a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna go that up. Disguise self as him to make height everything absolutely perfect. Great. This is what I look like. My name is Vance. I'm an idiot. I am a cultist. That's not. Oh, that's nice. Nice. I don't actually sound like this. <laughs> did he have his Indian accent? Yeah. Did he, he did. Yeah. <laughs> and his boss is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ludinus. Ludinus. Yeah. Nachos yeah. written in your notes. Yeah, I am. It was bland. <laughs> it was the shrub sticking out of the Oh yeah, the, barbed, the barbed fields, yeah. What was the, what was the word, I'm blanking on it, for what Vince was? He's not going to, he's not in succession to be part of the assembly, but he's like one of their right hand people. There was uh, a word. Correct, correct. I'm trying to move off the top of my head, it's been okay. a while. Hang on, wait. Um, <laughs> I'm I also Perineum. wrote down like the entire conversation somewhere in here. It's one of those. Oh, damn it. Because I take such brilliant notes, your prisoner's name again is. <laughs> ah, the prisoner's name was uh, Taskhand Adin Tassithar. Tassithar. Did you say Cascand? Taskhand. Or the T? T A S K H A N D. Taskhand. Adin Tassithar. Tassithar. Gas can, ass pants. Yeah, I was here gas can, all sorts of shit. If you are to attempt this, I would recommend doing it soon. No. As, um, 
the longer this information stays unspoken to the Bright Queen, as well as your own concerns. We should do it right away. The, uh, the more tenuous this ceasefire becomes. Yeah. He fled. The forces that were withdrawn from Rexentrum are still beneath it. They did not return. Oh! Oh shit. They are just awaiting word to continue. Oh! Yeah, they're still in place. They're still there. Yeah, they're waiting to strike. The, the purple, purple worms, worms are still, still under the city. The, the Tascan, when he was ambushed and taken, was he given reason for his capture? Does he know that an operation was thwarted, or they were onto him, or? All of this has been given uh, um, elements of it to attempt to force them to fill in the blanks, to prove our uh, curiosity and uh, let them prove that they were involved. Has he done the normal thing of holding his tongue, or has he been forthcoming? Do you know? Uh, long threatening to not know what we're talking about, and uh, demanding to be released, but upon uh, magical inquiries, forcing of one's will, and through physical uh, persuasion, he managed to excise the truth, and the task hand has uh, given his hand, if you will. I have friends as a cantrip, but I've never used it. How the fuck does that work? You can't cast it. You can't cast it when you're in there, probably. Oh, I have it. Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you have it. I don't. It you gives it on you, the person. You you cast it on the person, and it gives you advantage on mm-hmm. charisma checks. This self, I cast it on myself. Mm. Oh, yeah, it just gives you advantage for charisma checks. Yeah. Okay. Peter <laughs> could use seeming on you, and then then you'd be free to cast for spells. Hours, yeah. If that's Good. what we should do. It's for a different, different type of interrogation. I can do uh, Mask of Many Faces without knocking out a concentration spell. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's that? that doesn't Friends is, uh, you have it? Yeah. It's one minute. Oh, right, right. And I believe at the end of the minute, they know they that they know. Yeah. They've had a, a spell that affect be, their mind. I also have command. I'm going to, I'm going to give resort. you Enhance Ability when you're about to go in. That gives you advantage on Charisma checks for an hour. Oh, great. That is nice. Brilliant. And maybe Caleb, you could give him an extra yeah, stroke of luck. Planning to do that. Okay, I found my notes on that conversation that Jester was relaying when she was scrying on fence. They mentioned, he mentioned that he had the emblem, that he wanted to meet at the Overcrow. Mentions a female's paranoia. I'm assuming it was the, that uh, old woman at the. Cardinal Actually, I don't know. Maybe. No. Maybe. I actually don't know. And he was reading a book entitled The King That Crawls, which we know. Oh, and then he signed off with Angel's Eye. Ooh, that could help. Yeah, yeah. At which point you see uh, uh, Essek is in the process of drawing a quick glyph in the air and he recognizes a uh, sending spell. And do you speak under common? Uh, oh. mm-hmm. uh, uh, yes, I learned it. It's my most recent. There you go. Um, speaks through the, through the sending spell, basically saying, um, please move the prisoner to one of the binary paired cells. This Inter- is what Essex says? Yeah, no. The interrogation is to continue. One of the primary prepared binary. cells? Binary, binary paired binary. cells. Paired cells. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Got it, got it, They call it the Chantry. What was it? The Chantry? <clears throat> chantry of the Dawn. Chantry of the Dawn, Father. And the Bishop. Of the Dawn. What was the, the Bishop's dawn. name? The guy that the fucking dude that was up at the altar? That was doing the yeah. the stuff at the. Cardinal the Respa. Cardinal Respa? Yeah, and it was a she. I'm assuming that's who he might have been referring to with her. Might have been. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Also got Oban you can throw into the conversation. You could talk about the the laughing hand. You could talk about the Ordenic. Yeah, and what did did they call um Ferris Dune anything? No, they they didn't know who they, they were know following. Ferris Dune. I don't think angel anybody lines. it's just the angel. Mm-hmm. So are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Do you want anyone to go with you invisible or anything? I would not recommend that. There are wards against invisibility within 
the dungeon of penance. Mm. You would be revealed upon entry, and it would not aid you in that instance. Understood. That we should. Will it, will it show that he's disguising himself? Will it that shouldn't. Be? I can provide a buffer as we pass through. Okay, good, 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 good. We should travel uh, with him to Up the prison's it, entrance. Yeah. 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 Up until where he won't see us, and then he'll go on alone. Very well. So you are coming with to the exterior of the dungeon? Yes. Yeah. This is exciting. How long once you get to the dungeon, how long to get into the cell? <coughs> Five minutes. Okay, okay, good. Then come quickly, let's do this now. You are led back to the Delamafri to the tunnels and staircases that <coughs> go below into the uh, the fields of subterranean farmland that provide much of the food and growth that feeds the people of Rosona, until eventually you come to the familiar exterior of the Dungeon of Penance, where you had previously found Yeza, as well as interrogated a uh, captured member of the, uh, um, my brain is not working, uh, the Volstra. Um, as you reach the exterior, Esk turns to the rest of you and raises a hand and looks to you, and is currently like reaches over and kind of grabs just the back of uh, your shoulders a bit. Looks down. Can you provide perhaps any sort of visual of irons or chains? Sure. Um, yes, I'll make myself look like fence, and then I'll use. Uh, some if you'd like. Yeah, we actually have we some. We have some. Yeah, you can do, do that if you want. Yeah, I'll take out some of the manacles. We have two, three pairs, two pairs. Okay. So, so apply the manacles, you wanted to cast the spell? Yeah, yeah I'm going to go up and put my hands on either side of the horse face and cast um, Enhance Ability, Eagle's Splendor. Um, yeah, so you get advantage on any kind of charisma. I mean, you'll be a smooth talker. You already are, but you'll be an even smoother talker, okay? I'm sure. You should be able to trick him better. Should. You can do this for it. Yeah. Yeah. And some injury to your throat, maybe. <clears throat> so that Yeah, you, make it look voice... like you're like cut or, or punched like a bruise or something, like you're strangled, so it makes sense that okay, yeah, you wouldn't I'll, sound exactly like yourself. I'll think about giving myself like a, a rope burn, like a terrible, terrible rope burn that started to scab up a little bit across my throat in an angle. Okay. <clears throat> Fourth, come. Uh, hold the pearl up to his forehead, and you see some geometric halos of white for a moment, and I've cast Fortune's Favor. So you have uh, a luck roll, essentially. Ooh. Uh -huh. So any shit roll I can reroll? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fourth, if you do well in there, I'll give you a button. <laughs> a button? A button. But it's not just any button. It was discovered on Buttonbeard's ship. <gasps> That's all the inspiration I need. <laughs> <laughs> Truly a, a grand gesture, not <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> I'm ready. Why you for me, Button? Very well. It's, no, there's no such thing as Buttonbeard. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Essek grabs the uh, the front of the, the chains as part of the shackles, there is kind of a lead to the front and kind of pulls you in alongside and you guys watch as Essek takes Ford in illusory form into the Dungeon of Penance proper. You can proper. do it! Be careful, Ford. <laughs> Immediately as you step into it, that kind of disorienting effect hits you, and as you step deeper and deeper into it, you know, it's either what gravity pulls at different spaces or there's something about it that just makes you a little dizzy, uh, your eyes have a hard time focusing. Uh, it, there, there, there's, and you recall as the times you've been here, there's some sort of enchantment within here that is designed to ensure that you and possibly other people who step through these halls have a hard time really remembering where they're walking or keeping tabs on the layout of the interior. As we're moving, I'll whisper to um, Essig, how long will I have? Well, I don't know. It has been a very thorough investigation, and whatever information you might get could be filled with lies, could be that they are confused. Uh, just don't make it too forceful as to gather in attention 
that would make this a curiosity. This is off the books, as you would say. Flat bag, like it. Leads you down a few more corridors, a long staircase that goes to a floor that you've not been on. And eventually you come upon, there are two cells um, that are next to each other, separated by a wall, and in the center of the wall there is uh, what looks to be a small window of bars intentionally placed uh, for prisoners that have some means of interfacing. And you are thrown into the chamber, and as it kind of floats into the shadows, one of the guards at their post kind of stands there and waits, but off to the side. As you're kind of tossed in, you get a quick glance in the corner and you can see there's a figure curled up across like the stone uh, bed platform, I guess you would call it. It's not made for comfort by any means, but in tattered, ragged, uh, Rosona-style clothing, very affluent at one point probably, but now torn and dirty, do you see a, a drow male curled up on the edge, and as you impact and land, the figure kind of stirs slightly. And then you're inside the chamber now. And is this square between the walls small, or is it large? It's small, it's about like that big. Uh, I'll stand up and head towards the, the doors and shout out after the one that threw me in, in a better Zimnian accent than I can do. You can't keep me in here! No response. I'll go and I'll walk by the square. Is he looking or going back to sleep? Is it, are his eyes open? Uh, the figure is kind of gl glancing up and looking in your direction, but hasn't got up yet. I'll clear my throat. <coughs> A few moments pass. Eye contact at all. You look looking up through it now? Mm -hmm. About a minute later, the head shifts again, and from what little bit of light there is from the dull torch sconce across the way, uh, you can see a little bit of a flash of kind of wet eyeballs that look in your direction. I'll look away and move away from the square. You very faintly hear the shuffling. for a minute. Does it sound like he's moving any closer? You've heard movement. I'll wait another minute. I'll get up and walk to the doors, look around, shuffle back towards the square, and just do one eye to look through. Mm -hmm. What do I see? You see a Male drow face. <laughs> um, bloodied, one eye is swollen, nearly shut. Um, hair tattered and matted. And this is kind of breathing a little heavy. You're looking in my direction? Yeah. Angel's eyes. Why do I know you? Shh. I'll move away from the window. Sit back down. I'll wait two minutes. Okay. And without making myself visible through the window, <laughs> I'll say, what do they know? If They pulled me from my station and accused me of things, but I did them, but I don't know how. I know you, but I don't know how. I feel like I'm going crazy. My time here will be rewarded. Stand fast. <laughs> what are you talking about? We succeeded in Rex Syndrum. The Angel of Irons is one step closer to being free. I, I, I don't know this angel. No, I do. How? Who are you? Your vets. Why do I know this? Shh. 
Cardinal Resper sends his regards. Her regards. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the head kind of comes back up and looks at you, and the the eyes are, are wide, uh, or at least the one that isn't partially swollen and tense, and there's like sweat currently mingling with the blood that was partially dried and caked on that side, the forehead that you can see. It's like, I don't know about what you're talking about. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Were your delivery successful? I don't know why I did what I did. It doesn't make any sense. It kind of pulls away from the hole, and you hear the body kind of scrape and slide against the other side of the stone wall. <laughs> and you hear crying. <laughs> He traded for the beacons for. He traded? He traded the beacons for something. It's a man. 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 Talk this shit out at home. We can talk it out. Talk it out. You, what did you really? <laughs> the D &D game. Talk it out. What were you given in exchange for the beacons? <laughs> <laughs> there's a long silence, and the sobbing continues a bit, and then through the sobbing, you hear it doesn't. I would never, I would never give away the heart of our city, but I did for money. Why? Nothing makes sense. Nothing in here makes sense. Yeah, we gotta do this. And he smashes his face. Stop, hold, hold. At which point, kind of <sighs> exhales, and you hear nothing for a moment. And then. Oh, he's fucking knocked himself out. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Task Kid. You with us? Hey. Hello? Hey! <laughs> Shit! That accent. <laughs> I'll like walk over to the bars and be like, hey, God, come here. Come here! The car looks over. I can't see, I can't, I can't see him. Is, is he passed out? <laughs> the guard just stays at the station. Uh, Essek, as you get up, Essek is still in the shadows, about 15 feet back, kind of against the wall, and kind of turns and looks in the other direction. I mean, I'm just, are you worried about President Welfare? It sounded like he was hurting himself. I'm just making sure he's alive. Essek kind of slowly drifts to the edge and looks over. He's asleep. Ah. Oh, that's good. Thank you for quieting my concerns. Um, you know, I think I would like to confess <laughs> some of my crimes. Perhaps I can do that to someone of a high station. I'm ready to leave. Very well. <laughs> Opens the door, the guards help, takes the chain and leads you out. Ah, you bastard! <laughs> You're so strong! Come on, come on. You'll never take me alive! You're over You floating it. fuck! <laughs> what was that? No, I, I take it back. I'm sorry. Don't overset it. <laughs> and drags you along slowly through the interior of the 
Dungeon of Penance once more. Um, so weird in here. By design, friend, by design. Pulls you outside, you guys watch as Essek emerges, holding the chain, pulling behind the rugged looking events. We all cheer. <gasps> Yay! Yeah, you, right. you did it! it! What'd you find out? All the stuff? Well, I totally didn't forget to ask what he traded for the <laughs> beacon delivery thing. Well, that's, that's good. That's that would have been an important yeah. question. He seems to be quite disoriented. And, uh, oh, no, the other guy. Yeah. yeah. The other guy. <laughs> I was worried about that. Uh, I don't think he chose to do what he did. Uh, it sounds like he was under some sort of control, mind control. Is that a real thing? Yasha! Yeah. Yasha was mind controlled? Mm -hmm. We it's think. Exact Yes, not. <laughs> but but did you, you knew that it was not you doing those things, right? Or was it confusing at times? Yeah, it was very confusing at times, but I mean, I knew that I was, I, I, I was a puppet. I mean, it, it, I didn't have control over the things that I was doing, but I knew I was doing them. It could very well be a similar type I effect. Wonder. Vince was also a puppet. But you knew the source. Yeah? Yeah. Imagine if you didn't know the source. He, he acted as if he didn't know why he did these things or why he seemed to have taken money for the delivery of the beacons. He didn't know why he did that. And then he smashed his face against a wall several no. times. Man. He's dead now. Um, what? Yeah, it's just a horrible tragedy. Um, oh, fuck. No, he's alive. Oh. Um, <laughs> he seemed genuinely confused. <coughs> he seemed to recognize Fence's face and also the greeting, Angel's eyes. Um, Angel's eye? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, I might have made it plural in the room, which yeah, is, might have you. been what the look was for. <laughs> Why add an S? I don't know. <laughs> it was, you know, your first time playing that character. It's yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't get a rehearsal or anything. Like you, you <laughs> know, it's just actor's nightmare, straight out on. Uh, yep. We're open to make right. strong choices. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, Imagine if you were told not to think about what you did. I mean, is memory modification a thing that yeah. happens? It is? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can do it. I can, you know. What, what, do you, do? what do you mean? I can do stuff like that. I uh, like I could make you think that something different happened than happened. It sounds very similar to what Yasha went through. All the time, or just once? Well, it is a very dangerous magic for someone to be playing with. I haven't ever played with it. I know that it's you know Speaking important. Of which, your abilities are very strange uh, compared to the Empire. I mean, just being in here is sort of nauseating. Does the beacon or your practices allow anyone to control the mind of someone else in that way? Uh, Dunamancy does not work in that way. There are many sorts of magic and uh, arcane spells that can alter one's experience, a memory from what I've heard, but that does not fall within the purview of Dunamancy by any means. I mean, it's no short spell. You would have had to have been under control for a while. Gain access to the beacons, make these exchanges, deliver them. To be fair, this is true. He would have been the fourth person that we knew that was under a constant, long-standing control within the skull. Yasha, the task hand, the laughing hand, the laughing hand, then the unbreakable or the inevitable, the inevitable, inevitable, inevitable end, unbreakable face. Who knows with um, Bruce Willis? Uh, <laughs> who knows with people like Vince or Cardinal Respa or maybe? Oh my God! Do we were all under a spell? We've already learned from what we've researched with the Chain Oblivion that he was guised under this cult of the Angel of Irons. It seems more righteous than what it is. It's all manipulative to get him to rise under some other form of a deity that's false. So Mamela his entire to bring about absolute destruction of everything. So I would imagine, yeah. It Do you have a mark logic. on the back of your neck? Did it leave a scar? Or, uh... Oh yeah, the thing. Yeah. Can I look? Can I look yeah. and see? Give it a look. Is it still there? Uh, there is a brief mark there, the termination of what was there, though it has begun to heal. <gasps> Did you see Essek, something? Essek, Essek, come here. Look yeah. at this. Look at this mark. I I show exactly what it looks like. You should see and see if. See if that guy has the same mark, and then you know that he was mind-controlled, maybe. It's I will inspect. 
Give it, me a moment. If it was not his choice, you know, I know it's hard, but maybe he shouldn't be punished quite as harshly because, you know, maybe he... That is not for my judgment to make. Well, if, I don't know, if if there's an emergency, I, 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 I could also speak to him in a, in a different way from someone who ha has had a similar experience oh, to yes. him. If violence is not working to uh, get the answers that you need, um, maybe I could try relating to him. Well, we, we have the answers we need, but what answers are you looking for, I would ask? Well, uh, maybe, I don't know. Who was doing this? I, I don't know. Yeah, sure. I wonder if it's Oban it's got somebody him. besides Oban. It's true, yeah, or if he had any else. more connections here. Maybe Oban was Oban? like one of several generals for the chained oblivion, oh, you know, shit. in like a pyramid scheme. So if it wasn't Oban that mind controlled him, then who I was it? I think it was probably <laughs> Oban that mind controlled him. It I was think, probably Oban that mind controlled him. I think the question him. really but, is. If he knows that he was mind controlled, maybe he I can. I think that's the thing to me. It, start if he didn't saying if he talked to anybody else. Well, let's have Essek look at the back of his neck. That'll be first thing, mm -hmm. and then we'll get more answers from that. Just you should yeah. know, he said he hated weasels. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Did he say when he was controlled he hated weasels, or was it he said normally? Much outright, they they wither and die if not left out into the wild. They are not <laughs> pets or oh. Is that true? <laughs> Wrinkle says he's real happy. <laughs> exactly where he is. She's crazy. <laughs> well, let let Essex check, and then perhaps if it turns up what we fear it does, then a new line of questions is in order. Yeah, Not why right. have you betrayed your people, but how long have you been experiencing this? Uh, do you remember meeting anyone? Do you remember a trigger? <laughs> Yeah, if, if, I don't know, if there's any other for weeks. answers you guys need. Stiff as a board. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like a cat scratch. Oh my god! I say so weird. He's not dead, he's not dead, he's alive! Stop um, it. <laughs> Wait, he's wait. bloated. Wait, he's wait. just an airplane pillow now. Oh, <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> wait, wait, one second. <laughs> You're terrible. Oh, no. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> Move. Show that. Move. <laughs> See? Show that the fire. <laughs> Does he move? He didn't even bit my finger. Okay, he's fine. Rigor mortis is a bitch. <laughs> I'm fighting every urge to make a cannon, but, no, <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. Not that. No. Just think of it like anytime he seems like he's a little bit, mm, I give him a little healing spell. <laughs> <laughs> he's okay. She's just weakened at burning, she burning him at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he bit me. Oh, that's very naughty, Sprinkle. I've been to the other side 12 times. Oh. <laughs> Stop it, he's alive. Stop it. Stop it. It's not cannon. He's alive. Stop it. He's alive. It's so <laughs> <laughs> for CPS. Welcome to the Bates Motel. Spring. Maybe, maybe we could, you know, if, if we find a very beautiful place, we could, we could, we could let him go into a forest. Are you talking about the prisoner? No, I'm talking about Sprinkle. Sprinkle wants to say, you know, I asked Sprinkle if he wanted to go hang out with what's his name, the guy. <laughs> The guy that likes the animals, what's his name? Yeah, the guy's oh, yeah, the wizard. The, 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 the wizard man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I asked him. Uh, uh, and Sprinkle came back to me, okay? He didn't want to go to work class. He wanted to stay with me. You all. all, all. Mother? Mother, can you keep me? Man. Uh, As it, go check on the guy's neck. He's already gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Huh. Uh, okay. God, I can't see straight. Oh, my oh God. man. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. 
<laughs> oh, well. Essek returns a few moments later and says, What does the light mean? <laughs> I did not see any mark on the back of his neck, but. Inside check. Mm-mm. Make an inside check. He's in the truth. 18 plus five. Ooh, I'm so insightful. 18 plus five. Whisper for now! Oh, dude, I just realized what you should do. Skillshare oh, is a wonderful. Cool. Don't talk through your whisper. <laughs> Don't talk through your whisper. Oh my God. God. This is the funniest shit. He nearly, Eat it! He Eat it! Out. Oh my God, I Jester! No, he Pickles didn't. dead. He's still getting tumbled <laughs> for weeks. No. Like down the hall. No, just completely <laughs> mouth the gate. Oh. In a expression oh. of terror. Oh look, he's eating. <laughs> <laughs> he's very picky. <laughs> hmm. Nope, not right now. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. He's been dead since the Underdark. <laughs> so, it is curious if. If this is the assumption that perhaps this Oban figure have him under his control, there would be this mark, you said. Um, since it's not there, it's a possibility that either it was removed or perhaps there was other magic involved in erasing a trace. Could have been something else. Was the, uh, was the mark forcefully removed from you or anything? Oh, it was actually. That could be the difference. Oh. Hmm. But <sighs> certainly explains a few things, though, doesn't it? Does not seem to be in a physical state for future interrogation necessarily, and time draws short with the Bright Queen. So, if we are to make our cause there, we should definitely get on our way to the Bastion. Okay, 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 okay. Have you confirmed this with your eyes, then? No. Yeah, we've confirmed that it is not within the city of Rexentrum. Essek immediately takes her gaze, and Essek goes, My queen, we have, as you know, arrested one of our <laughs> higher dens, and you see he makes a, a gesture towards one of the empty chairs within the chamber. Whoa. Oh, fuck. And the interrogation has been fruitful. As much as it hurts us to admit our very own Taskhand Hadin has admitted to the deed of both giving aid and progressing the interests of this cult of the Chained Oblivion, and was responsible, it seems, for giving our beacons to the Empire in the first place. The room immediately goes into whispers and pearl clutching gasps, and the Bright Queen immediately goes, slams her staff twice in the ground to silence the room. Indeed. Well then, that reckoning will be something to deal with. Backwards, I was listening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Essek breaks rank with you to head towards his business. You make your way back towards the Jura house. Bye, Essek. <laughs> You can come by tonight and get some dinner or something if you want to. Yeah, we we miss done you. We haven't any shopping or anything. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty empty in there. Oh. I'm gonna, I'll, I'm gonna I appreciate to the offer. Over? I, I have my own work and research to continue. But, well done. Impressive work. Just hope it sticks. He drifts off. Cool. I like him. Yeah. I wonder what work he has to do so late. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, maybe yeah. he's got to go torture that guy some more. That's true, yeah. yeah. Could have a yeah. second job. I mean, you know, mm. people people have two jobs. Who knows what the Shadow Hand really does? I mean, that's you, probably... You guys have arrived at the Jor House by now, if you want to. <laughs> so you're, you're in your private space. Do you think he's a family man? I think he he's a family. Have we ever Does asked him about, about himself? We don't know no. anything no. about Essek. Have we been to his house? What's his mother's name? <laughs> does he have a, 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 a significant other or anything like that? I don't know. know. I feel like I tried. I think we asked if he was single. Yeah, and he was like, ooh, I'm aloof, I'm Essek. Should I call, should I call him and ask him? Uh, hey. Yes. You should send him a message right now. He hasn't got that far. See if he was lying about working. 
if he just actually had to go. Tester, you know what you need to do. Okay, I'm going to send him a message. Just say, just say, okay. ASL. Essek. We don't know anything about you. I just realized we should really hang out more. Uh huh. Are you single? <laughs> do you have kids? Swipe right. Swipe right? <laughs> also, <laughs> mom's name? Social security number? Vegan? <laughs> that was quick. Uh, I'm not particularly interesting. Don't like to talk about myself. Don't worry. Just happy to be around. Cat person. Mm. Mm. He's shy. He says he's not very interesting, but we know that's a lie. Yeah, anybody who says that uh, is super interesting. interesting. Mm. Hmm. I'm going to go to the door. Okay. You go ahead and kind of peek through the curtain there in the front, and you see behind it uh, the familiar visage of Essek, the Shadow Hand. Oh. oh. Hey. We just saw you. Opening the door. Ding, 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 ding. Thank you. Is this a noise complaint? No, it's, it is not a little noise complaint. Um, I just, uh, if you would have a guest for dinner, perhaps? I thought about it. it. I hadn't really, you know, done something like this in a while, and perhaps it is a it is something I should do. Inside oh, check. Yeah. I know. Do I, Make an inside do check. Do I believe so him? Though. Is what you're Does supposed have, to say. It, do I believe him with an inside check? I know. Make an inside check. Uh, actually, he did. Okay. He, he takes it out from under his cloak and hands it over. Uh, this is uh, Solovia Grove's uh, diamond plum wine. Oh. Uh, you didn't even notice that. I'll decant it right away. <laughs> yeah, natural twenty. Natural twenty. Oh. Holy, all right. He has to do a little spin on the way over. Natural twenty. Wow, wow. This whisper is brought to you by NordVPN. Nord they can protect you on the internet. Uh, nothing can protect us from the dangers that abound in Wildmount, but... Keep you Nord from split slicers. Mm. Split slicers? <laughs> Simul <laughs> Simul slicers? That's hard. Split I was slicers. like, this Fun isn't it. Freaking. Also, that's very uh, hard to say. Spit this is why Laura got the job. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I mean, it was a bad audition. I was having a bad day. This is hard to say. <laughs> My apologies. And you watch as he kind of like, after stepping in to the chamber uh, and handing off the, the bottle of wine, he kind of stops hovering and lands on his feet and Whoa. unfastens the oh, mantle. We're and gonna see behind the his curtain. body? Just We've never seen his body? body. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a reverse crank. <laughs> Oh, Don't Google reverse crank, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, I did that once in college. <laughs> uh, but no, he removes the, the mantle and kind of sets it on one of the chairs in the kind of foyer area of the Shore House, and he's oh. dressed in nice, comfortable uh, clothes, kind of well trimmed. <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> just his juicy on the ass. Yeah, it's from the uh, the Rosanna Victoria's Secret comfortable line. Um, no, it's actually not not too different from your <coughs> Jorhasian outfit as you had it tailored. Mm -hmm. The design of which you requested is kind of loosely based on similar designs you've seen around the city, mm -hmm. and his is more of a like designer version of that, but comfortable and designer sleek and nice. Though. It fancy. would be from he's his. Fancy. He's fancy. Do you float all the time? I'm sorry, I called it float. It just seems you're always <laughs> gliding. Uh, not all the time. For me, it's more of a. Uh, I don't know. It's an expectation, I guess. People it, expect it of you. Oh, when you're young and impetuous, you tend to do things to try and impress people, and then once you've set a sort of expectation for a presentation, you have to maintain it. <laughs> it's your gimmick. <laughs> More or less. So people just Whoa. expect you to float everywhere. Yes. Does it make you tired? Not particularly. I mean, walking makes you tired if can you, you think make, about it. Yeah, can you make anyone float? Or it's just your. I mean, via certain incantations, of course, but uh, this is more of just a developed for myself type 
trick, gimmick. Bring up some wine. It's Here you go. It still needs more time to, to air it. I'm <laughs> gonna go get everything going in the kitchen. I'll have everything up and running <laughs> real quick. In for a treat, Caduceus is quite a cook. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited, thank you very much. Come into the dining room. We so have are you single? Room. Do you have kids? What's your last name? Oh, sit down and okay, do some small talk in. first. Oh, sit down. I'll build a fire. <laughs> Oh, I'll start heating up the hot tub just in case later. Oh, that's <laughs> it, takes, it takes like an hour or two to. Yes. <laughs> Where are you from? <clears throat> Here. Are you married? No. What's your mother's name? <laughs> well, uh, my mother's name is. Uh, uh, Dirta Thales. She's the Umavi of my den. Oh, oh wow. wow. Andre? What was your last name? Which then? Which Thales then? Thales, Thales, Thales. One of the multitude of dens. <laughs> Shall we sit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Come and have a seat on this couch. <laughs> so we have couches. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, just yeah. chaise lounges. Just everywhere. <laughs> so, um, so uncomfortable. Painting couch. Ooh. I'm not imposing him. I... No, 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 we're just playing a concert for um, our. I was wondering family. what that sound was. <laughs> that was us. It... it carries quite a distance. Oh yeah. Yes. Good. So we focus. <laughs> After a huge meeting, we play, and join our thoughts as one. <laughs> <laughs> An unfamiliar custom, uh, but uh, it grows on you. Hey, uh, it is not unlike some things I've seen in Aserius. Mm -hmm. uh, Frumpkin jumps into his lap. Oh, hello. So, um, hmm. what is the mood here in the dynasty? Here, yeah. right now, it is tension, um, a little bit of frustration in the. Halting of what was to be a very successful raid on Rexentrum. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tents. Um, that's primarily it. This is so far removed from the front lines. It's mostly just information disseminated via. Uh, word of mouth and uh, the occasional street speaker, but warfare makes for not entirely pleasant opinions of the opposing side. The tension in the throne room was fairly easy to read. Um, I wonder what the dens, the various dens, think the people here. Yeah. That varies from den to den. There are numerous, so it depends on which opinion you want. Um, about Den Thales? Den Thales, um, they would like very much to see our nation established and respected in the broader sense of the world. Unfortunately, our most neighboring nation tends to consider most everything to the east. Um, you know, savage landscapes and dangerous cutthroats and you know, drow a killers and everything else. So well, that is foolish. That has not been our experience here. But and there are people on our end, and many folks who assume that the empire is nothing but a bunch of money crazed, murderous villagers ready to kill each other for a scrap of meat. That's very true. That's how everyone is there. Lots of. Really? Mm -hmm. Just that's not. That's. I care little for politics, to be honest. But it seems you did as well. But circumstances thrust us into spaces where we least expect. What? Uh, what do you care for? What are, you know, your hobbies and things that you like to do? Pet peeves. <laughs> Allergies. Hopefully none of this. A cheese and vegetable plate comes out. <laughs> so. You see, like it, the tension breaks when you when you yeah. sit it down. And he's like, "Thank you so much." Right. Main course <laughs> coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, here. Yeah. Do you need help in there, Caduceus? 
I'll be, I'll be just a minute. I'm fine. <laughs> That's a state of fuck out yeah, of the kitchen. I, 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 I'll, I'll cut you. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> well, wow, this is where Caduceus gets violent. <laughs> you've asked me quite a few questions, and I'm willing to converse. But I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious to get to know you as well. Um, what, what is it you want to achieve? What are your goals? What are the things you are looking to do? I assume you weren't intending to bring a beacon here and throw yourself into the midst of this chaos, so <laughs> what would else it is pushes you forward? Would it surprise you to know that perhaps a year ago we didn't even know of a beacon or of the dynasty or of any of this? Hmm. We knew a bacon, <clears throat> just not a beacon. Important distinction. Yeah. We all have individual goals and issues that we're working on. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, what about you? Oh, me? Yes. Um, Tell her. Maybe she can do it. I'll take a big sip of wine. I. Um, I've just had uh, some. Uh, I, I, I. I'm not myself. And haven't been for a while, and was uh, like many of us. We're all we're all sort of searching for. Well, many of us are searching for sort of who we are. But but mine is much more um, odd because I know I, I'm not I'm not supposed to be like this, and uh, I'm trying to change myself physically. Hmm. So this is not your original form. No, and actually, being in the throne room of your queen, it actually gave me a lot of hope. I mean, seeing that people among you and her and some of the den leaders, I suppose, have changed form and shape many times over mm -hmm. and put their spirits into other bodies. This is true. It's actually given me a lot of hope. They said that when we were in there that you had to be, what was the term again? Consecuted. Consecuted. That is a process, though I would say it is uh, one that requires a lot of patience. It is a bit convoluted. Does it take a long time? The ritual itself takes about a day. Is it painful? Yes. The consecution is not. The process of having to die to be consecuted or return to a new form, uh, Depending can be painful, I'm sure. How do they do it? Well, they don't kill them once they're consecuted, but when life comes to an end, huh. and they are within a radial region of a beacon, then the soul is taken by the beacon and then implanted within a new life. Have there ever been any instances of outsiders having this done? No one who has not been bound to the beacons via consecution has fallen into its net. That is a requirement for the process. Are you consecuted? I am. You're not excited about it? I mean, prolonging life is, is divine. But I think religion is a, I would say a crutch to some spaces. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the dynasty is so focused on this Luxon, and this religion, and the possibility of, of what it means, but it's distracting them from what other good things they could do with the time and focus, maybe. And it's selective, right? Not, not everyone in the dynasty is consecuted, so there are some that expire in this life, and that's the end for them. There is a an expectation of advancement within the faith to be consecuted. I really do not care for the specific theology behind it, but I was lucky enough and privileged enough to be born within a den to where it was not questioned, but. Uh, so it's reserved for people within certain families. Well, it's expanded into those that aren't part of the dens, but they don't just Consecute anyone who steps into the dynasty and requests it. And you are, forgive me, on your first life. Yes, I'm nearly the youngest of my den. Uh, um, forgive me if this is presumptuous. How 
old are you? It would be close to 120 years. Oh, same for all of us, just as <laughs> Do you have to be consecuted every single lifetime? No, once you're consecuted, the you're process in. continues, yes. For thousands of years, you're just there. Well, until you <clears throat> die too far from a beacon. Ooh. That's... That's a, that's a thing. You see, the, that is why the beacons are so important. They allow the expansion of our civilization. Right. If a city does not exist within some radius of a beacon, everyone within that city is unable to return. And just to follow our thought experiment with our friend, not here, if she were to be consecuted, she would need to remain here. I, well, you would have to ensure that if you were to pass away, uh, it was within the radius of a beacon, yes. But again, you would, she would be transferred to a new body and a new young life, not a current one. Correct. And you like would. A baby? Yes. And you How would old? grow in age. How old are you before you realize they're like the same person you were before? Uh, a little bit into adolescence, you begin to have dreams and visions of memories of your previous life or lives. And um, That's crazy. you begin to seek out members of the dynasty to then bring you through this anamnesis process in which you are to combine your current life's memories with the personality's memories of your previous lives to become one. Yeah, that's... Sounds very confusing. <clears throat> I'm sure I've not done it myself. But like, what's to keep somebody else from like coming and saying, oh, I'm the queen, I'm the bright queen, so... Well, those who would receive her would then ask many questions that only the bright queen would know. The answer I guess that makes sense. Do you remember your previous life fully? I don't know. I have not undergone this process myself. Has anyone, like an adult, been consec? Like, could you have you used an adult body before instead of an infant? I think what he's saying is that a, a new life is born and the soul is within it. It, it is not of, it's not of our choosing. It is the no, choosing of the, the, the beacon. Of <laughs> it's entirely ownership. Wow. And we've had issues in the past yeah. where beacons and you know, our soldiers were killed <clears throat> on foreign soil, and then souls were born in elements of the Empire. We had one conflict about 13, 14 years ago on the northern side of the Empire in which many of soldiers on both sides were killed, and recently some of those spirits began to undergo anamnesis there, around Nogvarat. And as such, we helped the children return to the destiny. Holy and as such, have now been reintroduced Whoa. into our society. So Empire kids might turn 15 and be like, oh shit, I'm a queen. Under I the, need to go back. Under the rare conditions in which a, uh, a spirit that has been consecuted were to die <clears throat> near a beacon away from the dynasty. That's why, do you remember? The criers were going, children have been stolen from Nogvarot. Mm, that would make sense. Unique spin to the tale. Stolen from Nogvarot. So yeah, they may remember. have just awakened yeah, yeah. and yeah, yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Fuck. Wow. Whoa. Shit. Cool. I wonder how old those children were. <clears throat> Adolescents, I bet. There's food. Oh, All right. oh, wow. So to your point, it is possibly a way, though there is no uh, guarantee which body will find you. It could very well be another goblin. It could be one of our fine drow, which is not so bad. It could be all manner of creature. If what you're seeking is some sort of a, a, a transference to a new body, I don't think that's within my purview. Can you just, like, turn this body into a different body? I do not know of such magic myself, unfortunately. There are rumors of extremely powerful polymorph uh, spells and incantations, but even those have limitations that can be temporary or dispelled. <clears throat> but if I hear anything, I will let you know. If we hear of something, could we ask your aid? If I can. In deciphering it? If I can. So you live alone, huh? 
I do. You uh, mentioned that you felt like the dynasty could utilize its time for much better purposes. What would you see the dynasty do? I would not focus so much on pressing these religious beliefs that are based on myth and interpretation. I know gods exist because we have proof, and there are those who speak to them. There are visions and, and miracles that happen, but the Luxons not speak to anyone. It's a lot of religion based on assumption, on existing scripture written by individuals hundreds and hundreds of years ago. There is power in the beacons, and Dunamancy in itself is something unique. That, I think, is worth pursuing. The rest of this is a distraction. Is that pursuit frowned upon or, or largely ignored? Like a standard is kept and additional knowledge not sought out? It's not so much ignored more than not as much of a priority. It's like not knowing how deep the ocean is. Indeed. Do you know how deep the ocean is? It's pretty fucking deep. Yeah. And that is what I spend my time toiling away, is to find those depths. And there is so much, so much untapped possibility in the utilization of Dunamis. I, to answer your question of what it is I want to do, and I believe you, you can understand this, and I can see a similar spark in you, Caleb. I want to unlock these mysteries. I want to dive as deep as I can into that ocean of the unknown and see what is possible. Are you saying, are you saying you want to date Ford? I don't think that's what he's saying. That, that isn't what I'm saying. I'm sorry, I, got, I was distracted by there's well, cookies. The, yeah, and also the ocean talk. Yeah, the ocean, the dive deep into it's the ocean. It's a metaphor. Please rip that open real rip fast. It. Rip, rip it, rip it, rip it. I believe in you. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Turns it back to Caleb and says, mm -hmm. to pursue beyond the limits of what you're told is capable, to seek the impossible, to do what every archmage before us has failed to do. Anything is impossible. You just have to look long enough and hard enough. Indeed. Things we've seen. You don't strike me as having much of an appetite for war. No. I have an appetite for knowledge. Yeah, going back to the ocean metaphor, because it's kind of working. Thank you. You could also get crushed into oblivion by several tons of weight at the bottom of the ocean, or, you know, consumed by some other um, scary being like Katoa. Are you not remotely humbled or afraid of some of the unknowns you might find? I am as afraid as anybody is facing into the unknown, but that's what makes it worthwhile, is it not? High risk, high reward. Indeed, but you can mitigate the risk. That's and actually an interesting how, train how, of thought. How can we mitigate the risk? In investigating your Luxon and, and the beacons, has anyone ever, I don't know, died researching it, or perhaps gazed in it too deeply? I don't know. There have been those who have not understood what they're capable of and reach beyond their means too soon. Their research was incomplete. They attempted to bend the core elements of existence before they were ready to do so. And that is a lesson we all must learn from. Maybe the lesson is that it's way too much power for any one person to be fucking with. This is possible. But that's why you take care, and that's why you work alone. Only because Jester loves the details. What happened to those people that messed around with things sooner than they should have? There are rumors of some that just vanished, that either succeeded in finding some sort of alteration to the planes of existence and never returned. There is two tales I can think of off the top of my head of those that wish to try and use Dunamancy to actually step into the annals of history. 
to step into the time before. Oh. Whoa, really? And one of them returned. What? To scatter the dust. Who? It's possible, but it seems to be extremely dangerous. So to answer your question, there are things that are possible, but if we're careful, we take our time. Who knows? He is fucking with shit at his home by himself. <laughs> is he? Do I gleam? He killed he his wife this? with the time machine. <laughs> he just got some HG Wells shit. Make, go ahead and go ahead and make it. Make, um, make an inside check. Going based off of his. That's Can I why you assist her alone. in that? Because I'm feeling yeah, the same way. Okay. Uh, sis, me and me and Ford. Uh, no, I'd, I'd, I'd say both of you guys, if you guys are both checking, it's both of your, this isn't a skill you necessarily help somebody okay. with okay. for this particular instance. <laughs> Eight. All right. Come on. Uh, oh, wait. 16. Insight, though. What? Insight. So, 15. Okay. Oh, more whispers. A bit of whisper. Oh, boy. Cardio. We're getting a lot of lore tonight. So guys. D and D, D and D Beyond. How cool is it that Matt has a book coming out with all this shit in it? So cool. He thinks yeah. of this shit, and then you get to read this shit. Our canon. <laughs> it's canon. Yeah. 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 Canon is. Yeah. It's all that shit. Okay. Well, what do you mean someone came back and then they returned to dust? That they came back Meaning and they just poof. poof. This this was a an assisted ritual, and when they returned, they turned to dust. Poof. I don't know how else to describe it. How long it. were they gone? Oh, it was but a few moments. Really? How long ago was this? Hmm. Seventy years. Well, how long were, were you able to talk to them when they arrived? Well, I wasn't they... present for this, oh. but I heard about it. Hmm. Poof. And you've heard of. <laughs> Two instances, mm -hmm. but you do not know the result of the other. No. Well, just because we don't know the end of the story does not mean it didn't go on. This is true. We met the guy who kind of could control time. I was just thinking about that. Oh yeah, we played mm. in his like uh, festival fun house. Yeah, it's happy, yeah, fun, it's happy fun, fun ball. But even if that person was gone for just a moment, that doesn't mean that they weren't gone for a very long time. True. Hmm. What was his name again? Halas. Halas, yeah. Have you ever heard of him? I have. You have? Was he the other guy? Was he the Did other you story? Meet, like people or something? He's like really weird. No, I, I just know of scattered records from the previous age. He trapped a demon. It's still trapped in his happy fun ball. What is this happy fun ball? <laughs> it's a dimension that he made or, or at least used to create a space where he could Experiment, uh, draw. Did you access this? Well, it's a weird little puzzle, and you you, you, you shift it around just yeah, right. It's two turns left and two and turns. And then right. all of a sudden, you get sucked in, and like you can't get out unless you, you have this right now. No, no. I do not. Well, we sort of look like? lucked into it. Actually, we are not in possession of it anymore. It was mm -hmm. called the uh, also the Arch Archmage's Bane. 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 Was attracted to you know terminate. Magic practitioners that had a wandered in. Now, for now, okay, I'm not going to look at my notes. Have you heard of that? Pretty violent. Right? I have not. Is that last the other uh, yeah, story that you knew? No, no. Okay. This was all dunamantic based within the dynasty. But the thing that happened I didn't know if his was, uh, was t time moved at a different speed different on the inside yeah. than on the outside, although and apparently yeah. it could change, if I yeah. recall. You couldn't really control it. You could be in there for like 80 years or like eight minutes. It was more changing the rate of passage. Mm. Mm. That is Dunamis adjacent, though I do not know if that is specifically, or perhaps an, an un, a lack of a realization of what he was dabbling with. Hey, Essek. Yes. How come all of a sudden you want to talk to us like we're friends? Not that I mind, because I'm really happy that you're here, but did we do something cool or something that you like us all of a sudden? <laughs> he takes his wine, takes a big sip. Don't need a tea cracker, cookie thing. Oh god, they're so good. Just frisbee that bitch. <clears throat> Would you oh. like a frisbee cookie? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. I'll frisbee that cookie. You want to toss one? Okay. <laughs> toss my cookies. 
The dynasty, I've lived here my entire life. And while there are benefits and there are the places that are much more challenging to live in, I find it frustrating at times. I find that uh, the obsession with this Luxon entity belies what the truth may be, that these artifacts, I theorize, have nothing to do with a, a divine being, but are just perhaps artifacts designed in the Age of Arcanum that have been misread, in which case it is being misused, or at least only the surface has been scratched of what's possible. So, my interests leave me not trusting anyone, not feeling like I, in some ways, belong. And as such, I spend a lot of my time in solitude. I trust us with your interests. Because I'm thankful to have met you. I don't have much in the way of friends, due to the expectations placed upon me, and you are driven, you are adaptable, you're clever, and not shackled by blind devotion to one flawed society or another. I think you all have what it takes to survive in this cold, cruel world, as it's something I pride myself on. And I don't know, I haven't felt a kinship with anyone in a long time. Is this friendship safe for you here? Nothing I do is safe. Fuck. Fuck, I like him. Do you want to go get in the hot tub? Uh... Mm -hmm. <laughs> He goes and takes some of the food off the plate. And the, uh, this is very good. Could this is? We appreciate the trust. It, it means a lot. We move around quite a bit ourselves. You've been a rock for us, and it's appreciated. Should I tell him secrets? Right, right now, right now. Right. Sure. Sure. We owe him some favors. Yeah. Hey, what? What? Yeah. Let's yeah. let's do that first. What do you mean by that? What favors? I don't know. Perhaps some of my research at some time might require uh, more hands than those I have it myself. How many do you have? Two. Oh. Sure. We can get hands, we kill a lot of people on occasion. Yeah. Mm. Or we can mm. use our own hands. Uh, oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Still. Well, we're asking we... questions. You've asked a few questions of me. I'll ask a few questions and you can ask some more. This is how conversation works, right? Yeah. I'm a little rusty. Um, I'm sorry. Do you? Yeah, I can relate. Do you ever get lonely in your solitude? I didn't think so until recently. Hmm. What about you? Um. Yes. I think if I'm answering honestly, I think, um, but I, I think I almost became uh, more lonely in my solitude after I became friends with all of them, hmm. because I realized uh, what having good friends feels like. Hmm. Oh, you're going to be so sad if we leave, because you like us so much. Now? I'm throwing acid. What, uh, <clears throat> what is it that you wish to accomplish, Borogat? I'm doing pretty good. Wow. Main expositor now. Congratulations. Thank you. So, considering I wasn't sure if I was going to live past 19 or make it out of my hometown or amount to any remote, decent person in society. I'm not really, I don't know if I'd say I'm a decent I didn't know if I was going to amount to anything, so feeling pretty fucking great. It feels nice sometimes to be the youngest 
when people expect little of you and then to prove them wrong. Yeah, the bar was pretty low. Just hope you can maintain that bar you raise to your own standards, not theirs. Yeah, well, you always hold yourself to the highest of standards first, right? Hmm. True. What about you, Ford? What do I want? What do you want? He's very religious. No, no, I, I'm practicing faith. Um. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. Um. Whatever it was that I started out thinking was important to me seems with time to have faded into something else. Um. I've been pulled into adventures and conflicts with this wonderful group of people, and I want to see them protected and kept. It seems my personal matters from before just have sort of taken a back seat to sort of the grander things on our stage these days. And you, Jester, what is it you are seeking? What am I seeking? Mm -hmm. Well, there's Traveler Con coming up, so I'm seeking, Not you know. Not familiar with that, but it is. Well. She's seeking a hotel room. And here's the, I mean, yeah, we have to find, there's so many preparations we have to make. Give him have the it. elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I? Have you heard of the Traveler? Oh, no. I've heard of it in the context of your arrival. Oh. Well, the Traveler is a god who, obviously, like normally I wouldn't, you know, mention it around people here because I don't want to get murdered because of you know, but that's okay, because sometimes, you know, if you're super into your god, you're supposed to maybe get killed for them. I don't know. It's, I don't think the Traveler would want them to be killed for him, though, right oh, now. No. You know, they, not, anyway, no, the Traveler's really cool. He wears this green cloak. <laughs> he's super powerful. He travels around. He's always with us. Um, he likes, you know, for you to do good things and bad things. He likes for there to be a good balance. If you feel like doing something funny, he's into it. Bad things? What? Well, like little bad things, not like bad things. No, <laughs> not like bad things, bad things, Tricky but it's things. like. Like naughty things. Well, yeah, but like, that's, you know, everybody shows their devotion to the Traveler differently. I'm sure maybe there's murderers out there or something that can be, you know, liking the Traveler, but at the same time, if they murder people, then maybe they have to go and make a lot of babies. I don't know, you know, it's all about balance. That seems... Maybe I'm presenting this wrong. What I'm saying is, we're having a big convention for everybody that's like super into him and we're gonna get together. And that's happening in like a month. Interesting. Never sounded more like a cult. <laughs> Never sounded more like a cult. It's a cult. It's not a cult. It's not a cult. It's not a cult. There's like, because the thing is, here's the thing. If it's a cult, then it's not. You're not actually worshiping like a god or something. You know, you're just worshiping a person that thinks they're like religious or a god or something. But this guy really is a god. Okay. So it's a religion. Well. Good luck. <laughs> Do you want to hear more about him? I'm fine. I can, I have here, I'm gonna get my brochure out. Here, take it. <clears throat> if you just want to read up sometime, or if you just like want to meditate with me and talk, you know, then maybe we can discuss. If you want to come to Traveler Con. Some good pictures in here. Do you want There's... to tell him what happens at Traveler Con, perhaps? We are going, and it's going to be at the volcano, and it's going to be super fun. We'll probably have some big speakers, maybe a band play. I'm not sure. Um, we'll probably have some, like, a party, a dance party, maybe, like, mm. you know, maybe a costume contest. I'm not sure. Do you want to what come to a volcano? Do you want to come to a volcano? I'm we have right. a ship. <laughs> Jesse, hmm. Traveler Con. I'm 100% down with, and I think it's great, but going to TravelerCon is not what you seek, is it? 
Well, n n no, but, well, I mean, ultimately, you know, I'm kind of just trying to find, you know, like where I fit in in the world, ultimately. That is a very, uh, a very noble mortal cause. Also, how many babies makes up for a murder? You know, maybe one. You take one, you give one. I'm not sure. Give a penny, take a penny, got it. I'm not sure. You know, I haven't mm. actually talked to the traveler about that because I don't, you know, murder people on a regular basis, but mm -hmm. he did give me healing powers because, you know, maybe because we're out doing these kind of things, you know, we fight people, so maybe that's why I can heal people. What is the worst thing you've ever done? As far as bad things go. Oh, well, I stuck a, um, an axe in a dude's head one time. Yeah, I watched you do it. <laughs> yeah, that one was pretty fucked up. But that was badass. And totally justified. I mean, he was going to potentially kill us. Yeah. Too, so I was just we'll defending. What about you, Essek? What's the worst thing you've ever done? <laughs> I would say... Anger my father to a point where he went unprepared into the depths of Bazozan and didn't return. Oh. I'm right, sorry. Um, what did you do to make him so mad? That's a lot to unpack. And why do you think you're responsible for that? Like, even before you, you tell us what you did, why do you think you're responsible for your dad not returning? It's complicated. And I say bad in the sense of what is largely assumed to be considered a bad thing. It doesn't bother me necessarily. He wasn't a great man. He had little aspirations. Do you mind if I ask if it was Basil Zen near a beacon? Uh, yes, and uh, there is an opportunity that he will return. It's going to be odd raising your parents. <laughs> oh, we are. Yeah, the more you think about it. Doesn't Did everyone... you say raising your parents? Well, if he comes well, yeah. back as a kid. Mm. And you know point. he's your dad, but he's also five. Nope, not going to No. It has to have happened. Oh, numerous times. Not to me yet, and I'm. Curious to see what that would be like when or if it returns. When somebody dies and they're like in love with somebody else, and then that person gets really old and it's like a like a two hundred year old person, right? And then the other person realizes when they were like fifteen that like, oh my god, I loved this person. Do they like marry like the person when they're like adolescent? Or does it like not transport like that sort of emotional feeling? <laughs> like, are you Starcross lovers for all time, or do you like reset? Yeah, it's it, uh, these are not matters I've conjectured too often, but there are individuals that have relationships that span multiple lifetimes. Whoa. There are those that. Over lifetimes, feelings change as the heart itself, for some, does evolve and wander. For others, it is uh, held straight and narrow. How long? Seven hundred year itch. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still figuring a lot of this out. I understand it's, it's very, a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah. It, Terrible. So, can a, a person still be dead for a very long time for them to come back into another? Body, or does it happen? As far as instantly? I understand, it's it's fairly quick. Oh. I mean, as long as it happens in a place where people are being born. I think theoretically, if a Luxon were to be in the presence of, let's say, theoretically, thousands of deaths, and yet no children are born, they would just be waiting. Oh. But then with each progressive birth within the radius of the Luxon, those souls would be then transferred with each new child. 
That's so, it. like, if one of the beacons got stolen with a bunch of souls, or does it? Yeah. But it would just, like, let out the souls as it traveled, right? Mm-hmm. But only to those that have been consecuted. Well, the souls no. that have been captured are the ones that are consecuted. Oh, right. If you were to travel with the beacon, <clears throat> in theory, Oh, then right. they would disperse as children were born within that radius, as it like, like a fog bomb. That is yeah. overreaching. Do the other beacons oh. share yeah. like a like a pocket universe? Like, are they all connected, oh. or are you you jettisoned into a specific beacon, that and then that's your research? That is part of what I'm curious about, but um, such beacons are heavily guarded and are assigned to certain individuals for the uh, interests of the religion to yes. keep. Is there any knowledge of, of the in-between? Any recollection? Uh, none that have been recorded. Whoa. Just off in here. How often are you able to interact with a beacon? Like, you beacon study hall. Not often. Uh, there is a lot of uh, importance in having them Specifically located and kept safe within approved areas of Jorhas to ensure that the masses of the population are usually within the radius of one. Have you ever stared at one for about a minute? If you're referring as to whether or not I have uh, attuned with it for a moment, numerous times, yes. Of course. I'll trade you a secret if it crosses off one of those favors. Better be one heck of a secret. Done some research on the Luxons. And beacons? The Luxons. Are they the same thing? Luxon, Luxon beacons. beacons. The Luxon be I've done some research on the Luxon beacons. Beacons? Snake snakes. You sound very knowledgeable about them, mm -hmm. so this will be. We've had like two bottles of wine. Okay. <laughs> Worth tossing, tossing maple cookies. Mm -hmm. They're really good. They are very good. The Empire found another one. They uncovered it in the archaeological dig site of Pride's Call, where they found a lot of arcane weapons from the um, pre calamity stuff. <laughs> Secret, secret. Check that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's my house. 1.5. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. From the Ar Age of Arcanum, right? Mm. That's what I was looking for. I ask you this. What are your opinions on war, on this conflict? What is it good for? Nothing, that's what. Oh, saving him. <laughs> It was so fast. It was. <laughs> it was travel. Wow. Um, <laughs> I mean, basically, that's our stance, right? Yeah. Yeah. If you truly intend on maintaining this peace, of seeing this negotiation through, and find that this conflict gives no benefit to you and your interests, it would do well to not let that information find its way to the Bright Queen. Don't tell them about that. You don't why? want to tell her about that. Why? I think it might tip the scales. Because then there would be no reason to stop the conflict if they're not giving all the beacons back. Correct. Now, this is largely considered within the dynasty that these are the religious, re religious right of those that follow the Luxon to find and maintain the beacons. And do you Even care more about stopping this war than serving your queen? The dynasty is where I live, the dynasty has many great things it does and provides. I don't necessarily believe with this theological focus to the point where it continues the cycle of warfare and bloodshed. War is a cycle and an addiction. Of course, I've and seen it happen many times and it will continue to happen. Little to do with its people. Well. I'm not being watched, right? But I'm a little floating ball. Yeah, there. have we been watched since we've been here? I do. <laughs> uh, 
You make a perception check. Oh, hmm. son of a bitch. If we've been watched this. Of course we're being watched. Natural one. Oh, shit. Okay. We're fine. You do glance around and you see nothing of the sort in the vicinity. So, the dynasty have us bugged in this house? Uh, it would not surprise me if they, at times, chimed in. You have been under watch here and there since you've arrived, mm -hmm. as you were a, a, a challenging addition. Were well, you proximity. one of the ones watching us? Did you ever watch yeah, us? To be specific, we've seen ourselves being watched. We were hoping it was you. Uh, at times it was. Hey! <gasps> oh my gosh, did you see us when we were changing clothes? <laughs> were you watching us when we were naked? <laughs> Just was naked a lot. No. But it was part of my assignment when you first came under my wing to ensure that there wasn't any chances of undue empire business finding its way within the proximity of the bastion. Makes sense. Would if you chimed in when we were changing, would you have kept watching or would you have checked out? I am more respectful than that and have no interest in such things. Why? Is there one of us that you would have watched longer? Yeah. Than you? Uh, yeah. I'll play. <laughs> no question. Oh. And which one? You can be open here. Yeah. So. <laughs> How much is the end of the This additional beacon, where is it now? We we'll tell know. you if you tell us which one of us is the hottest. Yes, Zone of truth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, do you want to play seven minutes in the zone of truth? <laughs> <laughs> Epic <laughs> fantasy, heroic personalities, <laughs> fighting against the dangers of the world to rise the ranks of power and glory, too. Who do you like? Find out who wants to make out with somebody else. This is Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, <laughs> don't kid yourself, that's why we're here. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, we don't. We don't we don't know where it is. We just. Uh... Well, we know where it came from. <clears throat> I can tell you, it's the one they plan to give back, which I find deeply problematic and have since they poised that plan. Because I'm assuming as soon as the Bright Queen takes one look at it. Yeah, it's not like a dead goldfish where you can just like swap out another one and be like, here's a goldfish! Like, she'll know that it's not the same goldfish. Will she? Well, it depends if they're handing over this new one they found or if they're returning the one that was taken and then plan to keep this new one for themselves. I mean, there's no way to really know which one is which. Yeah. And what you're saying, there. though, is any one of them, even this one that has been found dug up within the Empire's reaches, would be considered uh, the property of the dynasty. By their divine right to own these artifacts that extend their ability to maintain the cycle of life, yes. What if these things are like all over the world, though? I believe they are. That is the assumption. And you're telling us you would prefer to keep this a secret in this room? I am advising, based on your Proclivity to not continue this conflict and the lengths of which you've gone to prevent this war from spreading further and further, putting yourselves in harm's way to do so, that if that is what you continually wish to do, to not notify the Bright Queen or any other members of the Council around her of this. Would it, would it be uh, advisable? For us to urge the empire to give back the empire the to give back either the correct one or honestly both, or steal it back. That I don't think that would accomplish what we're. That would just be us plundering them. They that would, would have be no a reason very to stop. Really shiny, though. Well, is it in the hands of the Service the empire? Assembly. Yes of the assembly at the top. Mm. That both makes sense and confirms that you should not attempt to take it from them. That's what I thought. Plus, if we take it from them, they're just going to blame it on the cream. <laughs> Start the war more. Do you know about these things? What could they do with it to abuse its powers? Well, they have some powerful minds in the assembly. Well, they are somewhat dubious. 
So does anyone of true intelligence and capability. <laughs> a few necessary choices are moral choices, and uh, in my experience, I'd trust uh, they would have similar interests of seeing what it's capable of. Perhaps they can be reasoned with, and perhaps I would think on this. I don't know if, I'm not sure if the Empire even knows that they're giving the wrong one. I don't think they talk to each other enough. I think there may be secrets within secrets. There's well, definitely <clears throat> secrets within secrets. It's just oh, a matter of who knows. People, just like here. Too many people not lying, too many people telling the truth, then right. all the truths conflict. Do Some you have know. a relationship with the Assembly? <laughs> Some of them. Somewhat. Our sense is, um, and I'm sure that you all have guessed this yourselves, but the Assembly has its plans separate from the King. I would assume. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if they have it, at this moment I cannot see a path to its retrieval, nor any true benefit in attempting to blow things up, if you will. Man, I am so glad I talked to you about this first. I'm that really would have been super bad if you had just like brought advice. that up. Woof. Yeah. I'm really proud of you, actually. That was really good. That was another, another good move. There has to be something Thanks. about this yeah. new beacon, right? There has to be a reason why they are even offering it up. It has to be I different from the first one. Something? As long as we have been so forthright with you already, we are very skeptical of the intentions of the assembly in this meeting. We are expecting fuckery. As, uh, we As you should. We would like to um, pull the rug out from under them. Not to topple the empire, but maybe to clear the rot a bit from our nation. And do you believe that the individuals that make the laws and employ them across your empire are more capable than these mages? Do you not think there is perhaps a necessary balance between the two that maintains the order? No. It's the dance the Cobalt Soul and the Cerberus Assembly have been in for hundreds of years now at this point. Understand. The Assembly, and individuals of which I know some of, seem to be dangerous and calculating. But anyone of such extended study and pursuits I can understand far better and see eye to eye with than I can a power-hungry monarch who came into their seat through bloodline. I get the sense that they feel they have found the upper hand somehow. Well. I want to see the conflict end, and I do not get that sense from them. What is the biggest danger to secret research? People finding out what you're researching or what you're... Discovery. discovery. What better way to avoid discovery than to find a way to stop a conflict that pries into what you're doing? Mm-hmm. He's got a point. You are suggesting that they want to keep their extra. It could be. Or they intend to trap whatever it is they're delivering and gain an upper hand. Or something else. I'm but one mind, they are many. It's likely something else. You know they can extract things from the beacons. Energy or liquid yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 they made potions out of it. 
Really? And where did you see, see this? When, when we found the, the, when we were in the Empire Resort. We found a place that they had been doing some of their research, and there was, like, potions there. Hmm. Well, if you have any means of discovering more of such experiments that they're doing in their private chambers, that would be of definite interest to me. What if they're willing to give it back? Because it's not the one that they found that was empty. It's not looked at it and she got a signal. What if they drained the other one that they stole? That would be an astronomical feat based on the sheer volume of power within each of these beacons. That buried one was just sitting there, not absorbing. Maybe it was absorbing. It potential lives in a beacon, thousands, hundreds? It would have to depend on who was consecuted and passed in its presence. I have no idea. What does the ritual entail? They cut, they cut the foreskin off. <laughs> you are guided by Numavi through a uh, soul-binding process. It is extensive, it entails a bunch of uh, spoken rites. It uh, is usually observed by many individuals of various dens, especially if you belong to one. And often when you are consecuted, you are given a path to a den. Oh. The families are expensive. That question. Mm -hmm. In my research, would I have found anything about Pride's Call that talks about them having some form of reincarnation as part of their culture? Or Pride's Call? With the Dwarven Society? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, nothing like that, actually. Nothing that sounds like. Mm mm. Okay. Repackaging. Hypothetically, if we had one of these potions that they had derived from the beacon, what would you do with it? I would study it top to bottom. What could it tell you? I have no idea. That would be the purpose of researching it. Why do you have one such thing? I mean, let's call this one favor. <laughs> Whoa. Taken care of. Fucking dropping things. Oh, that that every time. <laughs> would be a favor accepted. Oh, he didn't accept your secret. Do you release him? Mm -hmm. Wow. Secrets are very valuable. We're giving him up like candy here. All you gotta do is be nice to us. We don't have enough people being nice to us. I have plenty of people being She's nice to me. He's got a point. Yeah, the SWAT team like bursts in through the windows. <laughs> 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 yeah. He just sets it aside on the table. Whoop! <laughs> I can commiserate with that. Um, honestly, part of the reason I accepted your invitation was after thinking and realizing that uh, perhaps it's been a while since somebody's extended such niceties to myself. There are elements to a solitary life that sometimes can be more challenging once you have a basis of comparison. The whole returning favor thing is kind of a bit in jest, in all honesty. We do deeply appreciate all the things that you've done for us over these past several months. Yeah, if you ever feel like ditching out here and traveling with us, just let us know, you know? <laughs> yeah, but no, she's, she's, she's not joking. I mean, you know, you said, you said an important part of what you do is, is staying alone. And I think we all thought that too before we met each other. It's true. Literally. <laughs> Very lonely, all of us. Well, if I can be of help in some way, Perhaps with your predicament, as you were requesting, well, let mean, me know. There was a woman, a mage, who helped them turn me into this. I don't really know anything about her, though. What was her name? I don't know. What'd she look like? A lady. Like, what color was her hair? I don't know, I was like, mostly dead when I saw her. <laughs> you, Caleb. Was she ugly, was she pretty? I mean, not as pretty as you, but she's pretty. Your specialty in the arcane lies in the realm of transmutation, yes? Primarily. 
although I, uh, similar to you, I'm an avid reader. I'm very curious about everything. Hmm. Everything. Well, he's been studying something to help me lately. Working on equations. Yeah. Been noodling about with something. Perhaps I can offer some aid. We would be willing to accept that. I think we have a full plate for the next couple of days, but hopefully it will be wrapped up safely. Show him now, we'll just show him now. Oh, he's a little drunk, he might not be able to. Oh, all right. I mean, we could get into the hot tub and just sort of look through the pages. That makes it really good. Worse, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Getting oh, in yeah. the hot tub? Well, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> I'm game. I'm you seriously have a hot tub. We really, really do. Yeah, I mean, do you want to see it? Yeah. It's very nice. Oh, it's, it's kind of really great. It's kind of just like, like it. Like a bricked in hole in the ground and we heat it like with our magic. It's it just or falls with fires. Off it's I'm certainly it's curious. Oh, he's <laughs> doing it. Let's do it. Worked very hard on that hot tub. You're right. Yeah, it's yeah, very I'm nice. I'm trying to minimize it. Don't minimize it. It's I'm spectacular. Not. Yeah. It's a great hot And it's got a good view. You see up into the tree. <laughs> the tree roots, like the way that like they've been expertly so carved. You do, you, around. do you want to borrow some some knickers or something? You want to go you? naked? I just wanted to see it. Oh. Uh, you want to get bit. in. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Do it. Peer pressure. Fifteen. A small dip, maybe. Ooh. Hey, put your feet in. He's a feet dangler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's that's the Pulls gateway. Pulls the pants up. <laughs> yep. the knees. <laughs> so he takes his boots off and then <laughs> rolls up the legs just beyond the knee and does kind of place his feet in the. How's his feet look? Yeah, are they like toes. super delicate? Okay. From are he just like floats all the time? Yeah, like are they I atrophied bet. from that? Yeah. <laughs> Like How detailed are your notes? <laughs> they are very, very well kept, soft feet from a man who takes care of himself and the nobility. Sure, there you go. Well manicured. Oh man. You can see a glass slipper just fitting right on. Oh, <laughs> writing it in your notes. Of infinite darkness. Jesus, yeah. you guys. Underneath his floating robes, he just has glass slippers. <laughs> That's why he doesn't. Hey, hey, yeah. 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 foot chamber. <laughs> Something occurred to me when you were talking about lives and reborn and stuff like that. In your den or when you were growing up, wait, how many people live here in Jorhas? Like thousands, right? In Jorhas, between the dynasty's influence in particular, hmm. Somewhere between in the neighborhood of three hundred thousand within the within right. the dynasty, mm. that just, involves multiple cities. Probably more than that. There are many of those who exist outside of the dynasty's purview. I just thought maybe you might have heard of a friend of ours. Maybe have you ever heard of someone named Lucian or Nonagon? I cannot say I have. Mm. My apologies. All right. Wow. Yeah, there was a story he told me. What? It was right before he died. There's a story he told me about how he convinced some town he was a god. Mm. Molly Somewhere. Yeah. 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 Molly Somewhere out cult. there. <laughs> huh? Molly has a cult. Molly has a cult. Somewhere out there, there's a town that thinks that thinks Molly is like the shit. Do Why do they think that about Do you know more about this story? I've, I. I vaguely remember it, and I feel like it always made me laugh. Yeah, it was, it was actually a good story. We're all in the hot tub by now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> You've all landed from the hot tub, and he just has his feet over in the bed. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> yeah. in a hoodie no on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making no. notes on improvements for the hot tub. I've got plans for this thing. It's going to be great. What if we strung up lights from the roots, That's like what I was up thinking. and down? Like <laughs> so you could do it. We're also going to try and get some some <laughs> and lights that like the steam that smells. <laughs> <laughs> so you always have like a okay. nice sense uh, the globules of light to sort of hover around in the roots. Mm-hmm. Can you make People them change talking, colors? I don't know yet, but. Right. Um, Can you make them like rotate through oh, the color Jesus spectrum? Yeah, 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 do it. <laughs> <laughs> you just go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> set, set word to disco. Does yeah. it work? They're amber. Do they work? Yeah, they do. Ah, moody. It's, a, it's simple enough to do with a cantrip. Hey, Caduceus. Yeah. 
while we're getting real and shit. Why have you never wanted to scry on any of your siblings? I've been separated from them. They went off looking for these things. Why not check in? As the token sober person in this group. I'm also sober. Are you also sober? Yeah. Have I not noticed that you haven't been drinking? No. Milk. 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 It's that low it's perception you have. Token sober person who's just really not been paying attention to what you've been drinking. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I always seem slightly drunk anyway, I think. It's part of your charm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's either, if you had asked me that a month ago, I would have said, because I don't need to. Why? Because I'm on this path. It's the right path. And, uh... But we're asking you now. I think I'm on this path, and I do think it's the right path. Maybe I'm afraid. Afraid something happened to them? Afraid that if something did happen to them, what would it mean? I, uh, I don't want to uh, open the envelope, so to say, before it's time and be hurt before I'm there. I'd rather trust and try to process the fear. Fear is kind of new. Uh, uh, for the record, I'm, my home is dying, slowly, up north. Sorry to hear that. Uh, I have been on a quest sent by my goddess to fix my home, to uh, bring it back to life, to replenish it. My family, all my family, already begun this quest without me, and I do not know if they are alive or dead, but this is the quest, and I was given these people, and I have done my best to support them as they've blossomed into heroes, and I thought I was going to save my home and regain my family, and that would be my reward, and now I'm... Uh, this world has, uh, this world has changed me. I don't know anymore. I don't know what is going to happen. Uh, not because I think that I've been lied to or been given the... I don't necessarily believe that I understand what it is I've been asked to do yet. And I don't understand what it is I want anymore. And that uh, has shaken me. But this is a very big world. <laughs> uh, it's been a lot. It's been nice to be useful. <clears throat> it's good to be useful. These are good people, despite themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Faith is a strange thing. It is. That's why I find no use for it. I understand. But I hope you find what it is you're looking for. Thank you. I'll find something, at the very least, and whatever it is will be, in the end, what I was looking for. Hmm. Well, if there is any way I can be helpful, you know how to contact me. He looks knowingly a jester. <laughs> Have you ever been doing something that like you were really embarrassed about when I was like talking to you? <laughs> Not particularly. <laughs> insight check. <laughs> Make an insight check. You pooping? You pooping? Yeah, I'm splashing. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, insight? Yes. Uh, 18. 18. 
<laughs> this is where it's gonna be. He was pooping. He was <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, I don't wanna Guys, D and D Beyond will feature a lot of the stuff that's coming up in the <laughs> Wild Man Mount Explorers Guide. Wow. <laughs> Did you you okay? Anyway, the evening draws late. I should probably return to my my home. Uh, thank you, you for- Did you spend the night here? I live not far from here. How come we've never seen your house? Well, per- next yeah, time? Perhaps if you want to discuss this uh, equation you're working on. Yes. Yes. What's your address? Uh, I'll show it to you. Um, easier to show than to describe, really. Sure. Um, oh, we'll let me know when, and I'll come uh, show you to my place. Okay. But uh, he pulls his legs out of the water. <clears throat> Are they struggle? Uh, <laughs> in the natural way a foot would be after spending, you know, 30 minutes in a hot tub? Sure. <laughs> I accidentally, like, brush up against one to see if it's an illusion. No, it's a foot. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Brush up against it. Don't be guys are so weird. I thought that was a piece of soap. I was picking it up and uh, didn't want you to slip on it. I feel like you're over apologizing. (laughs) (laughs) It's fine. Anyway, he goes and goes ahead and replaces his mantle and turns uh, the front door and says, This was nice. Thank you. Thank you. That was really fun. Could you, um, could we walk? Could you show me where you live so we know where to go? Sure, come with. Yeah. I'm coming too. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stay here. Yeah, I'll let them come. Watch okay. from the window. That's too weird. <laughs> he leads you outside, and as he steps off of the, uh, the threshold of the front door, you watch him kind of lift back up into his general hovering persona. You know, shoulders held aloft. Um, he guides you through the neighborhood, kind of the path you would take from the bastion that curves into the neighborhood to where your house is, it's past that circle and then it leads deeper into an area that would be kind of the equivalent of a Rosona gated community, I guess. Um, there are guards there, there are folks that are you know, guarding an estate, and there is, um, it's as opposed to a singular, you're used to like the candles, these large, elaborate, you know, wizard towers. Um, his estate is three towers that are shorter, but they're all connected by walkways and they're different heights. Um, and uh, atop Sorry, the house. atop of the tallest one, you can see there. Uh, you, what looks at first like a weather vane. Instead, you can see is a contraption that seems to have a series of metallic. Uh, rings inside that all kind of are, are smaller and smaller and smaller within that slowly will like rotate on its own in a way that you don't understand its purpose or really what it does, but it's unique and it's uh, engineered uh, to be strangely pretty. Mm. Um, you can see the uh, the brick exterior of it uh, kind of falls. It looks gray, but what little bit of light there is as you walk past. Um, you can see now the there's a slight kind of iridescent almost quality to the exterior of of the bricks that are laid at the base of the towers. Um, and he just kind of points to him and goes, "This is where you can find me most of the time." This is ever uh, fascinating. Is this uh, to do with the turning of the heavens, or uh, this has to do more with the uh, adjusting of the? How do I put it? There are almost ley lines of energy that themselves span like a net across all of Alexandria. And these ley lines sometimes shift and swell and expand and reduce based on the seasons, based on the time of year, based on celestial uh, gatherings and uh, alignments. This is part of a device that uh, just keeps track of it. Where is it? Well, now we know where you live. Um, I would like to take you up on your offer to uh, examine that thing that Nott and I are working on. I have a number of things, um, including uh, some souvenirs from inside the um, Happy Fun Ball we told you about. I'm very curious love. about that. So am I. And, uh, and I think you and I share um, interests. 
I, I understand the pressure um, of being young and, and expectation. I'm not 120 years old, but I feel like I understand a little bit. I've seen those far older than you that have experienced maybe half the pain I see in your eyes. Age isn't everything. Experience is what hardens you, prepares you for the worst. I think you're prepared for more than you give yourself credit for, Caleb. Well, we come back later and compare notes. I'll be here. Perhaps I can uh, provide breakfast as a thank you. Dope. I'm just thinking about mimosas from your house right now. <laughs> oh. Oh. Have that green jam. Mm -hmm. oh. It's really good. Well, good night. Glad you got home safe. Thank you for it's the nice. escort. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> and he just uh, drifts off to the, the gate, opens on its own, and he heads up to the interior. How weird that that's like the thing you just get stuck with, like floating, like people who like um, put on an accent for like half of a year, and then then how are you going to get yourself out of it? Or a name, or yeah, burning things. Mm hmm. Basically, like half of our group has like something like that, but his is floating, and he's just committed to floating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Commit to the bit. Oh God! But like, why? Flo like, does he feel like oh. is he? He's gonna have shame. Does he feel like ashamed if he doesn't float? It's just so fascinating. It's one of many things that are fascinating about yeah. him. Yeah. But at least we know there are feet under there and a full, mm -hmm. full adult-sized body, not mm -hmm. a tiny baby. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Let's go back. All right. All right. Should we uh, I'll send him a message? Yeah, I'll send him a message. Um, hey, Isaac, we're out front of your house. Um, we're just wondering if you want to have breakfast with us in your house and also take us somewhere. I just start waving towards the house. That doesn't go through on the message. He might, the, but the, when uh, he the, peeks out. It comes back and you know. I, I was wondering whether or not you were going to stop by today. Um, uh, there's a brief pause, and you see on one of the walkways from one of the towers, you see a, a figure kind of step out and ah, look over. See, see, oh, <laughs> Kind of gives a nod and then continues into the next tower, and then eventually emerges from below. And Essek approaches, waves a hand, and the gate <laughs> Opens Rosa and lets in. you guys in. Yeah. <laughs> come, come. Uh, allow Sorry me to. Late. Oh, it is all right. I do have some food prepared as a uh, return favor for the Good. delicious dinner. Thank you, Caduceus. Uh, this way, please. Yay! It leads you into this. Uh, what appears to be like a, a foyer-ish type chamber with you know nice kind of furniture curved on the edges of it. Um, the smell when you come inside is. Uh, very kind of strangely herbal, like it has a, a very kind of earthy herbal smell to the air there, uh, with a bit of um, one thing I describe as like a, a, a hint, a hint of electrical fire, like something like that sort of, of smell. Um, but there are these beautiful, almost glass-like stairs that emerge from the wall that don't have like a, a hard set. Uh, connecting between them, they're just kind of free floating, it seems, outside of the stone wall. And they're just like translucent steps that lead up the spiral of the tower you're in. Oh, Very well. it's ultra modern, as yeah. to say. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, uh, let me to, to, uh, take care of this for you. And he kind of waves his hand for a second. You watch as the chairs and the furniture kind of <laughs> scoots from the edges into the center, forming like a little seating area. Table scoots in. Yeah, you should learn to do that. That's really impressive. Um, I, I, I can do an approximation of it, but it's a little more herky jerky than that. A big cat paw like, pushes oh, that's it over. True, yeah. Yeah. Uh, eventually, kind of brings some food and sits you all down. Ah, uh, so, so uh, um, how do I do this? How was your day? Really great so far. We did some shopping, some errands. Yep. We're going on a trip. Oh. Um, we've arranged. Nice. Uh, uh, we, we've received word of some of the details of this uh, meeting. It's yeah, bottom. they found vents. Ah, that is good news. It appears now both sides have a 
cultist of some esteem in our midst. That bodes well for the negotiation. Should, should, should I just tell you? They said the negotiation's good to go. Everyone's getting ready. Hmm. Four weeks. Four weeks. Um, they've probably notified at least someone in the council, but I will pass this on as well. Okay. Um, four weeks. Very well. Um, or did you bring that project you were working on? I, I, I have it with me all the time, yeah. yeah. Do you want to eat first and then yes, maybe? Yes, let's eat, uh, or you can eat and we can take a look at it. How was your day? <laughs> Fine, I've been here. Yeah. You go out or like during the day, do you go shopping and stuff? When necessary. Do you float in your house or do you walk in your house? Does he float in his house? He's currently floating and as soon as you see that he goes, <laughs> uh, you don't have to float around us, man. For, it's cool. It's a habit. You should walk with uh, what, what is it? A swagger. You you could show you could show him how to walk with swagger. I could totally teach you swagger. Like your ring walk, you know, like how you you yeah. prep without. Let me teach you swagger. I don't know what that is. Show, you know, show, sass. Fucking crack it out. Let's go. You know. What are you what buying? What are you buying? Uh, what is what are you no. walk I with all gone. I walk with swagger. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> strut. Yeah, do what she does. It's you know. Vogue. I'm good, thank you. Oh come on. Man. I follow Bo around the room. Wow. Very well. Can I have a look uh, at your notes? If you, it, you you know this trick, right? You know this one? You push up. Essek. Essek. His poke is like completely obscuring <laughs> his torso and he's yeah, yeah. Essek, yeah. yeah? Yeah. You're making him uncomfortable. You're making him uncomfortable. Wow, oh, wow, Storm Lord, Thunder and Lightning. Swag. There are cheeses. <laughs> I'm Ooh, so excited like for cheese. cheese. I mean, this is good. What <laughs> <laughs> kind of pastries? Are we talking good pastries? Uh, they're, they're like some small kind of wafer cookies, nothing too super sweet. You're a little disappointed. They're okay. <laughs> Kind of dry up the mouth a little bit. <laughs> I gotta put a couple That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're functional. It's like show the, the grandma gives you vanilla wafers, and you're like, mm -hmm. mm. right, right here, over. Yeah, show him the book. <laughs> All right, so uh, Caleb starts to move food and drink out of the way because he doesn't want to harm any of the he goes, notes. Mm -hmm. I, you know, come, come to my uh, laboratory. It would be easier. Oh. Should we all go? No, 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 just, no. no just just me. Yeah, just feed, feed your ferret, they'll, they'll crack us or whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, eat for a second. Not. <laughs> Come, of course. Yeah. He leads you up the stairs, um, kind of gliding for the first few steps, and then kind of stops and then starts actually taking steps. You can see it's, it's it, it, there's a, a bit of a, a disjointed aspect to it. You see him trying to kind of change his instinctual behavior around you. I bet Essek gets like really tired when he's walking upstairs now because he's not used to doing it. So like when he's forced to do it, it's like. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, he doesn't want to act winded, but he's like probably really out of breath by the time he gets to the top. Yeah. <laughs> you head up to a, a secondary floor. Uh, this one has a window that overlooks kind of that part of the neighborhood. There are a number of shelves of books. Uh, there are some uh, small glass cases that contain, you know, what looks to be keepsakes or objects that are just out of you. Mm. He leads you to one of two doors that opens up into one of those pathways that connects mm. towers and leads you to the tallest tower. And from there, you go into a, a kind of a mid chamber of this this next structure. Within here, uh, the smell itself is almost saccharine sweet, but has a very chemical smell to it. You recognize it as an alchemist. Uh, there are a lot of of elements here that remind remind you of very sweet but caustic chemicals that are used in the creation of potions, that are used in the creation of uh, compounds that can break down metals and other such things. It's, it's, it's a mixture here. There's some alchemy or elements close to it are done in here. Um, but it leads you up another set of stairs to a, a tall chamber beneath where you imagine that strange moving kind of spherical series of rings were on the top. Mm -hmm. As you head into this final room, the entire chamber itself has these deep grooves dug into stone across from edge to edge, uh, and you immediately recognize it. It is, I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds of lines. It looks like someone has just dug every possible line path connecting element here, and uh, for certain uh, magicians or, or, or uh, sorcerers, practitioners of magic, uh, this is essentially a bunch of preset grooves that most basic and advanced uh, runic circles 
can be drawn within here with whatever materials very quickly. This is beautiful. All the candles immediately light as you kind of all step inside. Oh. Y'all there, or just, mm-hmm. there, or just the two of them? Just, oh, just, I can't help so it. I will always way. love the architecture of a tower. <laughs> we stick with them for a reason. It seems as hackney as it may be. <laughs> come, come, set it down. Uh, and he kind of like closer to the heavens. I start laying stuff out. So, um, this is what we acquired. This is very old. These are uh, unfinished, um, but but much to be gleaned. And I've done my best with them. And I lay out all of Hollis's stuff. Okay. And then here he takes is his mantle off and sets it aside, and kind of comes over to join you as you guys start laying it out. And you see him; he's listening to you with one ear, and and the rest of his mind is kind of in the process of taking in the extent of what you've already drawn and connected. And Caleb recognizes that and says, "Okay, so while you're taking that in, not help me roll this out. And here is what Not and I have been working on. This is um, my approximation. I've tried to fill in some of the blanks and." And uh, this particular knot was hard to unravel, but we did. And um, I know that I'm close, but I am sure I am missing something. Yeah, but he's got that look in his eye. He's close. I can see that look. <sighs> All right, I have some ideas. And he walks over to his shelf and starts like plumbing through different uh, compounds and pulling out elements and taking out some additional books under his arm and basically gets down on the floor with the, with the two of you and begins attempting to continue this. You guys are having your cheeses and your snack. We're practicing our swathers. Yeah. About like 40 minutes rolls by they've been gone and you guys have just kind of been sitting there and waiting and oh, talking and they've just oh, not I'm returned. looking around his place. Yeah, There's a uh, red button to push somewhere sure. around here. I don't want to touch anything, but doing the like, Looky looks. Speak for yourself. Okay. Um, I just don't want to, like, you know, he'll know, right? Boop! Ah! Uh, okay. What do we find? <laughs> oh, roll an investigation. Or that would be a perception check if you're just looking around. You like looking in his bookshelf, or are you going to the bathroom, like looking in the medicine cabinet to see where, what weird medicine he takes? It's like the medicine cabinet type of stuff. Ooh, what's this cream? Is that a difference <laughs> between medicine cabinet versus just looking? Well, what, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you find his bedroom and locate his bathroom. Yeah. yeah, there's a difference between being like, what room is this? Oh, master bath, and yeah. being like, I'm gonna go pee, and being like, ooh, behind the medicine cabinet. That's some shady shit. That is some shady okay. shit. I do that to every house I go to. That is. You, if you, you know that. If you invite yeah. me over, I'm gonna look at all that. your shit. <laughs> <laughs> so disappointed by the medicated right, shampoo. I always put a note in the medicine um, cabinet whenever four, you come four, over, this is <laughs> Isaac. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. The um, you head upstairs, or in the chamber you're in right here, you can see plainly. Most of it's just furniture. It's it's a it's a hosting chamber. It seems a lot of it's dusty. Um, it's generally just furniture and, and decor. Uh, do you go into the staircase above? Just which? Where are you going? Think for yourself. What are you doing? <clears throat> well, I just I figured we could divide and cook. I'll go upstairs. Okay. Uh, you head up into. <laughs> oh, that's the end of the bow right there. This is this is the next chamber where you see there are you know, bookshelves aligned in this area. Uh, there are the two doorways; they're closed that lead uh, out of the tower to those walkways you thought you had seen. Um, there are a couple of small, looks like glass cases that are kind of off to the side. What's with those glass cases? Uh, you go ahead and look within. One of them contains what looks to be like a rod, maybe about a foot and a half long. Um, the other one, glancing inside, you can see there's two books that are locked, like, mm-hmm. like with the actual like physical lock holding them closed. Can I see, like, uh, do they have a name, title? Uh, do you know Undercommon? Yes, I do now. You do. Um, what? Glancing at one of them, uh, it goes into, uh, or the, the the title at least, and, and only one of them has a title. The other one is like just a plain leather binding, um, like a deep, deep leather, but there's no actual talent. The first one you look over, and it says in Undercommon the equivalent of um, the connecting nether between the elements. You're not quite sure what that refers to or what the contents might be toying with, but it seems to be something referring to uh, the elements. Okay. 
dark matter shit. All right, cool. Um, anything else I can check out? Do I have time? No double doors. There's the two door. doors. And then what else? Bookshelves. Bookshelves. Uh, I just peek out the two doors. Do like a crack and a crack. Uh, neither of the doors open. They are closed Fuck. and they are locked. <laughs> right. Back to the bookshelves. Do a quick scan. Okay. It's all manner of collection, all under common for the most part. A couple mm-hmm. of spattering of common books. Um, some of them are history. Some of them deal with uh, studies of uh, like chemical compounds. Some of them deal with uh, historical recollections of the Age of Arcanum and what elements have been collected from what ruins have been found and uncovered. Writings of uh, prominent figures during that time period. Mm-hmm. You see uh, one that deals with the various societies and uh, you know races of Jorhas mm-hmm. and the social dynamics pre and post dynasty involvement. Uh, these are just the kind of things you. It's it's a it's a wide variety of, of books. Okay, okay, okay. I just head back downstairs and um, I relay what I found to Ford. Glass cases, books. Man. Right. That's so tempting, but I mean, we I just know. established. We really. I don't want to. I don't want to be a. T- All right, fair. I'm yeah. just trying. To, I'm just being nosy. What did you find? Nothing. He has no guests ever. There's like nothing in here. It's just kind of bland. I like it. I think it's really nice in here. Mm. <clears throat> Simple. It's got nice staircases. It's a very nice staircase. <laughs> I'm gonna take out my harp and play a little. Okay. Pass no. I'm going to dance while she's playing the harp. Okay. I'm the take out my flute. Swaggerly. That's gonna be something about this guy. So she swagger dances <clears throat> and starts playing the harp. The beautiful sound fills the chamber, and then. Bone flute starts playing. Oh, I know. I'm not going to actually. Oh, you're not going to play. Just, okay. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, in the interim, mm. go ahead and make an Arcana check with advantage. Uh, is it all right if I? Oh, with advantage, great. No need, no need. Come on. Come on. Okay, cool, cool. Are we doing Dr. Cool, cool, cool. I love uh, intelligence or Arcana, did you say? Arcana. 28! Yes! Whoa! Showing off in front of Essence. Big wizard energy. <laughs> you, uh, you, the three of you begin to sink and like, kind of one person will posit a question where they're kind of at a point in the equation and the next finishes it, they make eye contact and smile, grab something, finish that line, grab this piece of paper, toss it to you, this equation finishes, and rapidly you become, the three of you become kind of fervored researchers on the cusp of a breakthrough. By the close of the hour, the moment hits where the equation connects. The spell is complete. Oh, Essa kind of stands up and goes like, "I don't, uh, I don't know what to say. This is very impressive. You are amazing. This does not happen very often. This is history pulled from history. Thank you. Well, you have done most of the legwork yourselves. Thank, thank you both for this. Can we do it?" What are the features of this? Um, time you needed requirements and components. Uh, the component for this uh, requires a about fifty pounds of raw clay, um, which the spell consumes, uh, as well as about a hundred gold worth of ground gem dust. Doesn't. Doesn't matter the gem. Okay. And it takes about an hour to cast the spell. Uh, what does it do? Uh, I, I'll give you the specifics, um, but the overall essence of the spell, as you look over the final equation, is if done properly, it is a permanent alteration of the target's body from one known humanoid race to another. Well. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, we need clay. I don't have any. I don't have any. No, you don't have that much clay, do you? I have a yard. 
I've got a shovel. I'm not there. Oh shit, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're so into it. A yard, a yard, he said? That's clay is just... Dirt. Mm. A special kind. Do you... He, Caleb just pulls the goblin and the elfin for just a huge hug, <laughs> and then pulls us all out again. Do you want to do this now, or do you want to think about it? Uh, maybe I'll just give it a day, or an hour, or a day. Whatever you need. This is amazing, thank you so much. Maybe I'll just give it a day, though. Just to, just to figure out. Yeah, just a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We can do this tomorrow. Just deliberate on it. For yeah. A bit. You know, the others are probably wondering. Um, yes, there's been some time. My apologies. They're probably having like a threesome. What do you mean? I got the books! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Run! You think they're sick of and, and, and Caleb? Or what? I mean, they could just be, you know, having a real good time up there. I assume they are having a really good time up there. So you probably think they're having a threesome? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're churning butter. That'd be good because I, I really it. like to make another round of these of these crackers. I feel like I feel like we can improve on this. Yeah, they need more sugar. A little bit more sugar. I not what I did. Let's all forget what I did yesterday. But we could we could. Uh, I'm gonna go take a look at the kitchen. Let's see what we got. We work well together. We should explore other things. Other things. I have some ideas. And our favor is old still. Anyway, let's get back to the rest of your Yes, yes. they're probably fucking down there or something. <laughs> I'm only having a five, so. <laughs> Gather up the notes, Quintess. the finalization of the spell. Hands it to you, and you guys return. You hear the door upstairs. You go towards where, where you think a kitchen might be, and the door's locked. Wow. This is half the problem right here. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking doors. You hear the familiar footsteps of Caleb and not. Caleb has not, like, backpack style with a real spring and a step coming okay. downstairs. Hey! Hey, sorry to keep you. guys have so much fun. We did. It's a the lovely. Most. Lovely lab. Do you feel relaxed and carefree? Energized. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit, he right. is intelligent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He knows mm-hmm. his way around. And he can float. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, saying. He's right over there. You oh, like hi. He's heading down after the two of them. You seem like you're in a very good mood. I mean, knowledge. Knowledge can do that to you, right? Everything go okay? Everything Everything work out? Where where are we at? We I've learned things that I did not know even an hour ago. (laughs) Yeah. You'll be happy to know we didn't uh, uh, explore too far. We did go upstairs and look at your sort of uh, bookshelves and your glass cases, and Mm -hmm. and we tried to wander further, but it's locked. They did. We stayed here. We're very polite. Yeah, we own that shit. Trying to find the kitchen. Curious. I don't care what you keep in your home, so. Well, I appreciate all of that mostly. <sighs> but uh, quite a discovery made by uh, these two. What? Mm-hmm. What discovery? Uh, we, may, we may have a way to, uh, to fix me. <gasps> yeah. Really? Yeah. How do you feel about that? You know, excited. Yeah? The permanent fix you've been looking for this whole time. So it seems, yeah. Back to your original form? Uh Uh-huh. I think that's incredible. Don't look at me, I was merely a a final catalyst. This is work they had already continued from. You are are both downplaying your contribution. Well, if we're going to be honest, the biggest contribution here is a mage long before our time. Oh, a loss. Standing on the shoulders of giants, indeed. Very hard to very. All right. <laughs> Something we'll put into practice. I'm gonna send time. a message to Essex. <laughs> Qu- 
question. If we needed to teleport somewhere, would you be able to do it? Because you love us now? Or is it still like not cool? It's hard to Ish. My ADD goes crazy. Well, <laughs> that depends on where you're going. If it is a place I don't know, there is significant risk. But possible. Um, you're greeted by Essek, who leads you back into the interior. Well, I was not expecting you to return to Rosanna so soon. I take it your journey was successful? Yeah. We believe so, yes. Should we try the spell again before we go? I mean, I haven't even really meditated about it yet. Oh, you're right. Okay. Well, you said you needed to travel somewhere, so. Yes, is that okay? Yes, it's it's okay. I, <laughs> you know, it prevents me from some of my capabilities throughout the day, each time I do this. So <laughs> while I'm here in my home and things are not requiring me to be elsewhere rapidly, thankfully this is a moment in time in which uh, I am more useful here in the city. It's but, greatly appreciated. I'm sure we'll find a way to balance the scale sometime. Is there any news on your end? What I know is many of the, many of the elements of the military on both sides are holding hard lines at the exterior of previous battlefields. There has been some small scale negotiation and discussion as far as preparation for this gathering. Ships have already set out with the prisoner from one of our outposts. It is quite a long trek from our side of Wanandir. I believe the same is begun, traveling from the uh, Dwendorian Empire to eventually find its way towards the Menagerie Coast. Are, are we going to miss the negotiation? It takes weeks. The negotiation is about three, three and a half weeks from now, I believe. Okay. So okay. as long as you can ensure your return by then, otherwise it'll just have to continue without you. Wow, okay. Is it that, and then travel, it's that, and then travel yeah, yeah. like days later? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's pretty rapidly after. We'll like, be close. That's less than a week after the, where the negotiation is set is when traveler cost probably gonna happen. Yeah, so. the is out in the water, so. So where would you like me to take you? Caduceus? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to, uh, Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a vast space, yeah, so some are more specific. Can you describe exactly where we're going? No, I've never been there. Oh. Mm. Didn't you say it was near the forest that we have been to? No. It's uh, Do you not uh, know what I'm supposed to be taking you? That is Where's the that is impossible. The, the, uh, no, we know. We the know where we're going. I know the name it of the, it. It was the, the forest down way. That's the wrong, That's the wrong map. Wrong map. Is it this one? No. We need your help. We have so many maps. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. Get out the map! Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's over here. It's over, over here. here. Uh, White Dawn Lagoon, if I recall. Is that where we're? White Dawn Lagoon, right. Okay. I've not been there, but I know of its existence. That puts us in a possible chance of arriving. Are we, are we gambling with fate by going Should to this Should I place? scry on the White Dawn Lagoon? Can I scry? I can't scry on the location. I always forget this. I don't have it prepared anyway. I don't have it prepared either, so I could not. It would be helpful to me to do so, which means we could either go now and chance it, or we could try tomorrow. Let's chance, chance it. it! Chance it! What's life without a little bridge? So much can go wrong with this. Of course, but so much can go wrong with all sorts of That's so true. elements of magic. Exciting, though, as we've experienced together once before, sometimes painful. Mm -hmm. But if you insist, let us all take hands if you are ready. Oh boy. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to uh, make a prayer for everything to go well. Oh. Nope. <laughs> 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 
I'm so gonna, while Mother is silent. I'm going to <laughs> put my hands on Essex's shoulder, and I'm going to say, the traveler is with you, my child. Thank you, Jester. Yeah. <laughs> come, come, and he kind of glides over into the center of his main, oh, his, his, his main uh, chamber. These watches, he kind of moves that way, the furniture <laughs> kind of, you know, scoots on, on its own to the sides and leaves the open space, puts his hands out. You all clasp hands, and he goes, Wait on Lagoon. Fingers crossed. And as he begins to, to finish his incantation, you can hear the voice echoes growing louder and louder. You can see along the ground between your feet these little kind of light gray lines begin to sh- 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 connect you all in the center mm-hmm. as it glows brighter, brighter, and then foof, you feel that familiar scent of you all oh sh- being pulled into <gasps> nothingness. I need somebody to roll a d100 for me. Dallas, Dallas. 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 yeah. That's um, 99. Whoa, it is? Is that good or yeah, bad? That's 99. I don't know. Hold I'm on. I'm trying to have it's a hard to read divine that. inspiration. That would have been amazing. Yeah. That I rolled been. that last time. That would have been crazy. Mercer's early phase journey is interesting. I think yeah. that's. I think like 11. Yeah. Super bad. Not good. Not good. That's not good. No, actually, it's really good. Okay, that's really good. <laughs> that is on target. Oh, that's like oh, s- wow. super duper on target, right? It's yeah. One way or the other. <laughs> you had a twenty-five percent chance of this succeeding. Oh, oh wow! Because wow. this is only based on a description. He's not even viewed it before. Oh, jeez, Louise. Oh, wow. There's a forty-three percent chance for a mishap on that one. But you rolled a ninety-nine. I rolled it. Look at that. That's, yeah, that's really, really pretty. Really oh, nice. dice you got. Sir. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That is good dice. Good. This is real good. So, you all suddenly go from the cold night to the bright midday sun of a bluer sky above. You can see most of the clouds that you're used to seeing in the Dunalian Empire not there, aside from a few small plumes of white across the horizon. You are partially looking out to what looks to be a, uh, a green, kind of grassy stretch of hill that then vanishes before you see ocean to the south. The glittering waters of the Lucidian Ocean. You kind of look to your right and behind you and you can see the elements of a mountain range that vanish to the north. Broken gray rocks and it uh, looks like a deep ravine that begins to carve its way southward or northward from where you stand. It's a number of miles away. It's barely visible on the horizon. But immediately before you, you can see this vast jungle, this dense tropical forest that seems to wrap around and encompass a large portion of this shoreside cliff expanse. You assume that you're probably pretty close to or right at the area known as the White Dawn Lagoon. Essek immediately goes, Ah, I think this was a success. This this looks about right. When was the last time you saw the sun? Ah, it's been a number of, uh, I think probably since the last time I took you somewhere, Miss Bright. Uh, Does it hurt you? It's not comfortable, but it is uh, tolerable. (laughs) Is this what you were seeking? Does Does this mountain range look familiar from my vision? Uh, I mean, the mountain range itself isn't familiar to you, mm. but the visions you've had definitely, uh, your visions specifically are of a, a, an oasis in the middle of a jungle. Sure. You don't know which one or where. And so none of this is familiar to you, but you soon have been brought to where you requested. I get down on the All ground right. and paint a parasol and pop it out and go <laughs> 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 Thank you, Chester. She's so cute. I'm going to. He's Mary Poppins, yo! <laughs> but there on the deck, you see three figures in the mid- middle of a conversation. Um, you see Ludinus de Leth, the uh, older elven figure there, in the middle of a conversation with two other individuals. You see a human male 
um, in maybe his late 40s or so, um, in this long black robe with silver and blue detailing on it. He has this kind of salt and pepper hair that's a little long, and it's, it's got this kind of curl to it, pushed to one side. You can see he's very much a mage who wants to put together a good impression in a social space. Um, can we make a history check, both Beauregard and Caleb, for me? 16. 19. Ooh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Caleb, you know this from your studies, and you as well would know from reading about it in some couple of, especially this individual. Uh, this is Lord uh, Athesius Uludan. Yeah. Who is the Archmage of Diplomatic Union. It is the member of the Cerberus Assembly that largely goes out as the ambassador of the Assembly to foreign powers and foreign interests and noble circles that are beyond the Empire, even within the Empire that needs some smoothing over. Um, you could already see in the way that he's talking to uh, the Martinet, there's like a half-cocked grin to his expression and very much a practiced, uh, very smooth, tailored persona to a, a social, uh, charismatic, and persuasive interaction. The third individual you see looks to be another male uh, elf, though younger, uh, kind of pale skin and silver and teal robes. The hair is kind of a, a faint, dirty blonde and very short, kind of coming to a point in the front. Um, you, neither of you recognize this figure, but this figure seems to be engaged in conversation as they're all talking. The Martin Head notices you as you step aboard and goes, oh, hello. So, uh, Glad you could make it. Um, you were it? expecting us to be here, were you not? Well, you, you discussed the possibility of joining, uh, so welcome. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my manners. Uh, this is Lord Ethesius Uludan, who bows and goes, uh, It is a pleasure to meet all of you. What is your name? Huh. Uh, we're the Mighty Nine. We're the, Mighty Nine? We're a band of heroes who has has set out to save the world, and we're Don Tootin' nearly done. <laughs> well, that is mighty impressive. I am extremely humbled by your presence. I think we've heard of you, actually. Really? <laughs> I did not know that my name got around in the Goblin Circles. This is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, we, we talk. Well, whoever cares tells them that I say hello. Uh, we are less familiar with your friend over here. Oh, this is uh, Lord uh, Desran Thane. He points over and the, uh, the other figure, the elven figure, so goes, my apologies for not introducing myself. Uh, I am just one of the lords of here, Nick Dranas, um, and I'm meeting with some friends in preparation for the journey ahead. Would I recognize him then? I'll make a history check. Has he been to your mom's house? <laughs> <laughs> Has he done a lot of fucking? Uh, just five. Oh. <laughs> uh, you, you do not recognize this I person at all. Um, it's been a couple of years, you know, so. Has it been? I don't know how long it's been. <laughs> <laughs> it's been years. <laughs> yeah, it's been. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Caduceus and Caleb. Yeah. This uh, elven figure does seem a bit nervous in your presence. Yeah, upon is he meeting. bullshitting us? You don't know. You just the person immediately seems to be like, like that. Like when you approach, the expression was like, what the. Um, but nevertheless, it is it is a pleasure to meet you, mighty nine. Um, I apologize. I must be off. And uh, the are you says, going to be uh, joining us for the for the voyage, or, or uh... no? I I will be staying here with my homie Nicodranets. But I wish you all luck on the journey. Um, have a good a good day. How and... do you get your hair so pointy? <laughs> <laughs> and as Cass press the digitation, you watch the hair continue to find a majestic <laughs> spire, seemingly almost pointing southward. Um, While Yasha does that and he's distracted, can I case him a little bit? Can I do like a once-over? Uh, okay, what are, you, what are you trying to discern? I want to discern... How firm his buttocks are? 
I want to see if he's hiding anything on his belt, if he looks like he has any papers or anything. Sure. A weapon ahead. or something like then that. Then go make a perception check for me. I'm going to look at his butt while she's doing that. Make a perception check for me. <laughs> Roll better. False. Roll better. Balls oh. eater. Roll better. Eight. 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 Oh. Eight. <laughs> you both find the butt. <laughs> Just kind of look at Jester and. Mm. It's not a bad butt, but that's that's about all you discern. Yeah. Um, the Martinet goes, of course, uh, Desran. Uh, we will uh, we will see you tomorrow. Uh, when is the actual event happening? If you don't mind me request. And the uh, Lord of ACS goes, oh yes. Uh, actually, if you're interested in coming at all, there is uh, an event, a party, that is to happen. Um, uh, this is in two, two nights from now, before we head out, if you're interested. We'd love to have such esteemed individuals who are saving the world around here, and uh, Martinet has spoken of you, I believe, previously. So if you'd like to come, um, the actual information regarding this is uh, at the Marquis Zaif's uh, domain, which you know, the, that's the Marquis of Nicodranus. Whoa. Um, his domain is this like small palace in the Opal Archways. Yeah, yeah. It's not That's not far like from where really your mother works. It's like a super really fancy, fancy house. And it's where largely all the major diplomatic events and parties happen within Nicodranus, and where a lot of the the uh, political business between the Empire and the Concord tend to happen at Zaif's yeah, home. Yeah, I think, I think Mama got asked to perform there one time at a party, but she didn't end up accepting. Why not? Why not? Just... You know, she didn't want to. But who, who is your mother, then? Um, the ruby of the sea? Insight check, what was that look? <laughs> Make an insight check. Uh, 23. Ooh. That is a look of immediate recognition, and then a person immediately falling into a series of fond memories. Okay. Ooh. Oh. I am quite familiar with your mother. <laughs> she is a brilliant performer, and I am... I, she was never, I believe, denied an invitation. Oh, no, no, she was asked to go. She just was unable to attend. Well, I apologize that our personage does not meet her standards. Not at all, no. She, Beyond she myself, was very ill, and <laughs> so she wasn't able to leave at that well, time. if she would like to come and perform, perhaps, uh, for this event that my cousin is holding, that would be wonderful. No, and Jester's just being nice. It's about the standards. No, it's not. No. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. No, my mama. She's she oh, I'm not go. offended. My cousin <laughs> is a dead dog. But, uh, I mean, I've been by oh, the oh. Uh, chateau myself a number of times. She is a wonderful woman. It is a pleasure to meet you. You too. Gives you a kiss on the finger. Hmm. How far are we from uh, the docks where we are? Oh, you guys are like out on the the uh, the uh, the wharf docks themselves, oh. and you are on the ship as it's kind of set there in the harbor. Are we closish the from where we are to the docks? Uh, you're, I'd say, walking on the docks. You're probably a good eighty or so to hundred feet away from the shore itself. Away from the shore. Uh, 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 but where, are we on board the boat, or yeah. are we? You're on the boat. Uh, you're on the deck of the. Okay. Boat. Would I be able to summon uh, Frumkin the monkey uh, on the docks, not on the boat? Uh, maybe behind some schmutz there? Uh, sure. As you begin, I assume there's somatic components to this as uh, well. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, summoning him for the first time, but I don't know about bringing him in and out. Just an action? Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd, sorry, yeah, because if you just stamp the mountain, and I'd say, I'd say you're fine. Okay. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Okay, so he is uh, sitting behind a crate or some other sort of shipping stuff. On the dock. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Ludinus looks towards uh, Desrin and goes, Actually, Desrin, uh, if we could have a conversation before you leave, that would be uh, wonderful. Um, and if you will attend, I think that would be a, a, a glorious event to introduce you to some of the more important figures that are going to be part of this negotiation, as well as the local. Uh, society here in Nicodranus. That is an excellent idea. We want to become more familiar with each other before we set out. Of course. We are going to be working together. It is going to be wonderful. What is uh, your means of transportation? 
I apologize, there is not room for more passengers. Oh, we've got our own ship. It's really, really fancy. Don't you worry about us. All right. Uh, if I might have the name of the ship to ensure that there is <laughs> we approval by, from the wharfmaster. We travel by ball. Um, Captain, would you, you, you can introduce your ship. I know it's a place of great pride You're the captain for you. of the ship? Oh, so you've traveled the, uh, the city and ocean quite a bit, I see. Impressive. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Grand vessel by the name of Nibali. All three of them look at each other. I'm terribly sorry, I did not catch that. What was the name of it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, it was the Bali. <laughs> I'm afraid you're sneezing mid-sentence. I'm not catching the The final. Ball Eater! <laughs> The silence hangs <laughs> as a gentle ocean wind kind of <laughs> blows through. It's a, w a wind of eons, maybe? Just <laughs> <blows through. laughs> Martinet, right. there is no man alive who knows more about the sea and ships specifically than this man before you. <laughs> Then you should, you should quiz him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the sailing terms that he knows is really uh, spectacular. Oh, you know what? I, I think I ate something that disagreed with me. I'm going to just, if you don't, uh, pardon me, and I walk off the ship. <laughs> <laughs> right. Lord, um, uh, no, Theseus <laughs> follows you and goes, uh, do not worry, friend, but uh, please do come. It would be a pleasure to have you and to introduce you to the delights of Nicodranas. I would love to go to a party. Two Wonderful. nights Two nights from now, then? Yes, oh. tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow night? night? Oh, that would be my. Two nights from now. Oh, oh. Like tonight, oh, yeah, 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 tomorrow. Yeah, 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 tonight, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Really. Do we just show up, or are we on the list? Do we need to bring an invite, or uh, what? How does... I'll go ahead and ensure that the, uh, the doorman is aware of your arrival and what to look for. Okay. Dress nicely, please. Now is probably a good time to um, state that uh, the Bright Queen, who we are here on behalf of, has requested that we inspect the artifact in question before setting sail to make sure that it is intact. That can certainly be arranged. Caduceus, you notice that uh, Deseran eyes kind of dart back and forth a bit. Uh, certainly, uh, immediately, uh, before, we, before the end of the voyage, we'll be happy to, to allow you a moment to inspect the artifact. Oh, I was hoping to look at it maybe before the party. Perhaps tomorrow midday, then. Very well. I Why can't we look at it now? It's not currently on the ship, and it's in the process of being prepared for the journey. Before we set sail, at the very least. Not to worry. It'll be provided. I promise. All right. All right. Well, good luck. Enjoy uh, your preparation. And safe voyage to all of you. Can I insight check him based on what he said about preparing it, not being on the ship, and all that shit? Sure. Go ahead and make an insight check. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get it, girl. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, that's five. Okay. Tw 13. Hmm. 13. 2013. 2013. What? Much better year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, long for the simpler case. Um, so, yes. Uh, you, he seems upfront and honest as best as you can tell. He's hard to read in general, but he is, there's no signs of any sort of deviousness or deception. Okay. Um, but uh, enjoy, and if you require anything, I believe you can just let me know. And looks towards you, Jester. Toodles. Most gracious. Hi. Desmond. And uh, the two of them leave below deck. What would you guys like to do? Where did Thane go? Thane went below deck with the Martinet. All right. Um, uh, while we're standing there, I uh, telepathically tell Franken to keep an eye on the boat and keep an eye out for Thane and to follow Thane around town. Um, does this boat have, like, porthole windows or anything like that? 
Uh, it looks like there are a, a few wooden uh, kind of window elements for a gun deck. Though you're unsure if it's outfitted, they are currently closed, but the, um, they are currently designed to be opened. Are we, I don't want to be in earshot. So as we step away, I don't want to be by guards. Okay, so you move a bit past the guards and you're now back onto the dock, uh, probably a good 40, 50 feet from where they were standing. Caleb. Yeah? I want to know that conversation. I want to know what's being said. You think you can get Frumpkin in there? Or at least over on these cannon docks over there? You see what I'm, here, look, look at my eye line. Look down, you see that? And you see how there might be like a little opening that maybe Frumpkin can get in? Yeah, my cat could probably climb over there and open it up with his little cat He's monkey little monkey paws. Hands. Yeah. I want to know what's being said, man. Is it a cat or a monkey? It's a cat. He's just in the shape of a monkey. He's a frumkey. What? <laughs> Can you do it? <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's... <laughs> let's get away from the boat, yeah? All right. Hey, Kayla! I step away from the rest of the group and whisper to Caleb, you know what you could do? What? You could let not eat Frumpkin tonight. <laughs> That's a lot to process. <laughs> Just because, you know, you can bring him back really easy and not would really appreciate getting to eat a monkey. I mean, just from a, a flavor and, and culinary angle, I am not sure he tastes the way uh, not as accustomed cat to tasting. Well, I remember you saying that not used to try to eat from all the time. Yeah, but she was never satisfied. Oh. Yeah, and also there's not much to eat, right? I mean, Frumpkin doesn't have that much health. You just take a bite and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, Fort. My cat <laughs> is as healthy as any fucking cat <laughs> in the Empire or Nicodronus or anywhere. You want to test that? Well, he's not a Tarrasque, but for cats, he's pretty good. What Can you get your monkey cat into the cannon? He's already this... going. Okay. So I have told Frumpkin to try to um, monkey along underneath the gangplank and try to uh, find his way over to the porthole. Can we be walking away at the same time uh -huh, as these uh -huh. shenanigans? Yeah. Yeah. We're not like staring at the boat as it's happening. Like, yeah, <laughs> maybe completely could... in inconspicuously slow walking away. Yeah, um, just just to tie your shoe about oh, 90 feet away from the side of the boat. Okay. Okay. Tell me when. Is no. this 90 feet? Nah. Okay. <laughs> Is anybody watching us or following us? Or are we being? Are we being? Uh, no. The the guard. I mean, the, the guards are watching you leave, but they're not like intensely casing you. Anybody, even just following us. Mm -hmm. Just I want to keep an eye out for a tail. Okay. The next so hour. Keeping an eye out. No worries. Okay. Um, if you could, go ahead and roll a stealth check for Frumpkin. Oh, as a monkey. come on. Come on. Frumpkin always fucks it up. Ooh, good. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, I've got a baboon prepped for Frumpkin. Hold on. The stealthiest of creatures. 18. Hey. That's a good, right? Good. That's okay. He's actually a baboon. I thought he was I like a teeny tiny I just searched 5e like monkey, monkey on Google. That's what they taught me at Soltris Academy. <laughs> <laughs> That's huge, Caleb. A baboon is really big. Well, he's using the stats that bad. Well, I uh, rolled 16. Okay. All right. And baboon says plus two, so just go with it, okay? <laughs> uh, the righteous brand unaware, you can sense Frumpkin complete the journey beneath the gangplank onto the edge of the ship yeah. and then grasping onto the rougher edges of the outside of the actual ship hull itself make his way to the edge of one of the gunship portholes slowly open it and slip barely inside I put my arm on Beauregard's shoulder and say just look at the ocean it is so beautiful what a beautiful sight to behold <laughs> Yeah. So gorgeous. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so 
so blue. <laughs> Just take it all in. What's he saying? Can he hear anything? Okay, so as you... Don't forget that okay. I... Okay, so... Can't hear anything, so if you try to talk to me, I can't be, hear this you. This will be oh, interesting. Fuck. Focusing through Frumpkin's eyes, you look into the interior of this <laughs> darkened uh, gun deck of the ship. There are two cannons within there, as opposed, it looks like it was built from multiple, multiple cannons, but there's only two in there, a very beautiful make. Um, and immediately, just at a glance, you can see these are not standard cannonball-based cannons. These are arcane in nature, and who knows what they're capable of when fired. Um, it is very dark and you watch two figures kind of waltz in with haste. Um, you hear one voice, Ludinus, say, I couldn't help but gauge your discomfort with the conversation. And the other figure goes, uh, well, I just wasn't expecting to see them. And Ludinus goes, shh, hold on. Does some hand motions, and as he releases what looks to be a simple spell, there's this faint shockwave. That dissipates within a radius of them. Uncertain what it does, though you gather in the moment that it's probably some sort of a radial dispel to lock down or destroy any localized magic. Um, however, the illusion around Lord Desrin Thane vanishes. <gasps> and there standing uh, in his place is a gently floating male drow oh! with short hair. So blue, so beautiful. Look at it, the waves are so beautiful. To which the revealed Essex responds. <laughs> but he don't! Of course I am uncomfortable with this. I did not know they were going to be coming directly here. And you can see, like, there's conflict in his eyes. And Ludness goes, I understand. But it's extremely important how we enforce and oversee the control and the exchange of the prisoners and the delivery of the beacon. As it kind of thinks for a second. I agree. Ludness goes, we each have what we want. And when this business is behind us, we need not interact ever again. The Assembly will share its research for the deal and beyond, and we never have to speak. And Essex sits and thinks for a second and goes, I look forward to never seeing your face again. But we're too far in at this point. It's taken a lot of effort to ensure the tracks have been covered. And no one undeserving was hurt. But I want no further part in this once this is done. Ludinus kind of steps forward and goes, I'm surprised to see such affection from such a previously cold individual. And Essek kind of turns his glance away and goes, well, I'm surprised myself. Maybe you should try friends sometime. It's gonna feel real bad when we kill him. <laughs> Ludinus goes, hold it together for the time being. We cannot have you mysteriously disappearing with that poor attempt at hiding your discomfort earlier. Do your part. All right, Nessa can announce. <sighs> I hate parties. 
and turns around and you watch as the illusion takes over once more as his feet touch the ground and heads back out to the deck of the ship. Man, look at the seagulls. <laughs> Just a pinnacle of beauty they are. You know what you're saying is actually worse than if you were just commenting on the ocean. <laughs> making it more suspicious. <clears throat> These are genuine comments. <laughs> <laughs> so if Frumpkin peeks back out of the uh, pothole that he crawled into, is this um, friend of ours leaving the ship? Yes. I send Frumpkin to follow him at a distance. All right. As you guys are kind of walking away from the docks, you hear the footfalls quickly approaching of the Lord Desran Thane, who uh, kind of gives a nod. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, oh, hey again. Hey. Have a, a good day. And, See you uh, at the party. See you tomorrow night. Yeah. Yes, indeed. See you then. Hmm. Pleasure meeting okay. you. You as well. <clears throat> and continues on past you with a hurried pace. If you feel like visiting, the Lava Chateau, you can go there and see my mama perform. No response. <laughs> While this is happening, you are under the table. Um, Desren is saying nothing. Desren is backed up against the table you're hiding under, invisible, and is like barely even drinking the drink that he has, and is just kind of like looking about nervously. I'm gonna go up to Desren. Ah, uh, uh -huh. Uh, you are, you are one of the, uh... Mighty Nine, I met you Mighty yesterday! Mighty Nine, yes, introduced. Yeah. You're yesterday. a lord here? What, what, what? You're a lord here in town? Yes, 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 I am. Where do you live? Around. <laughs> Around here? Yes. The Marquis? Well, not here specifically, but I'm, I move after I travel, it gets boring. I'm oh. so sorry, I'm not feeling well. I should probably Oh, get do you going. have stomach issues? Oh, terribly, yes. Oh no, but you can't leave. Ah, but I must. But, but my I... mama's about to perform. Have you ever been to the Lava Chateau? N no. She is one of the most famous performers ever. You know, I can help heal you if you have stomach issues. I'm a cleric. That way you don't have to go anywhere, you know? I will happily stay for the performance. Oh, um, wonderful. Can I link my arm in his? Uh, Does it feel like like his clothes feel different than what I'm touching? Does it's everything feel It's hard to tell it's material. Okay. You know, it's not so much he's wearing a whole different dimension of an outfit. It's just the coloration's mostly different. What dimensions would be slightly different don't really show through the illusion. It's meant to be close to what he's actually presenting. Okay. I think she's performing over here. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you live here and you've never come uh, to see her. She's amazing. I am, I am uh, what you would refer to as an introvert. <gasps> she is too. It's surprising, I know, because she's like so outgoing and everything, but she likes to stay at home. Do you? Oh, uh... Yes, and begins to drink the wine. <laughs> At which point, um, as you're following and listening in, uh, there is an announcement. Everyone gives a round of claps, and the music begins as some of the performers, their violins begin to kick in, and Marion descends the curved stairway that spirals around uh, the interior. As she approaches and focus is pulled, I'm going to very subtly and stealthily try to drop a vial of liquid into Essex drink. Many months ago, we recovered a vial of paralysis from a monster. I don't remember what the monster was, but we got some paralyzing <laughs> stuff. Make a sudden hand check with advantage. All 30. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All this shit coming back to bite me in the ass. All right. Okay. Uh, Marion's voice begins to carry beautifully throughout the night air, s singing entirely 
a song in Zemnian, though she does not know the language, she has learned this song as a way to uh, present and bring in all the different uh, dignitaries of the Dalian Empire that are here visiting before they set out to sea. It is gorgeous. And you've seen her perform a number of times, but each time is a fresh, entrancing experience as her voice seems to carry with this clarity and this, this, this sense of almost, almost magical melody behind it that you know why she's once again established herself as one of the foremost performers on the Menagerie Coast. The people are entranced and watching. Essek drinks of his drink. Lord Thane, do you speak Zemnian? I, I, I do not, uh, myself, um, as I have not visited the Empire. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, you've never been to the Empire? No. <laughs> but we always travel to the Empire. I mean, it's so common. Not, I don't go out very often. Oh, right. What's the DC on it? Oh boy, I didn't write that down. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll say... I forget what monster it was, but... We'll say it's a 12. Okay. Constitution save. Great. That's a six. <laughs> you really should get out more. I mean, I know it's hard a lot of times. <laughs> Lord Dane, are you okay? What's going on? Lord Dane? Is your stomach? Did I see not? Do no, I, no, not invisible in all the 30. Nobody could have seen not. <laughs> Beyond the eyes of the gods behind the divine gate. <laughs> they're watching now going, oh shit, how that happened. Oh god. Oh god, are you okay? <laughs> I'm gonna float near near there just to keep an eye on on, on Jess. I'm gonna rub his belly. <laughs> Is it your stomach? Is it your stomach? Other people are kind of looking over. I mean, okay. I'm going to keep it down. I'm going to keep... Do you, do, pay attention to the song she's performing. God, stop looking at me. <laughs> I'm going to try to pull him uh, out of the room. Okay. Well, Weir weirdly enough, just kind of glides. <laughs> <laughs> It's like when you're playing an MMO and suddenly you get a lag spike and your character just kind of just moves across the floor. <laughs> I'm going to trail. Yeah, I'm going to trail as this. well. All right. The music is getting louder and people are enthralled. And, and as you guys are keeping an eye on this, you can see Jester slowly dragging a very, like, mannequin still uh, Desrin. <laughs> uh, I'm going to follow out. I'm staying in. Mm -hmm. No, good. Okay. I'm gonna go with Jester behind her. Okay. Who else is going with Jester? Okay. All right. So everybody, but you two, stay behind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All righty. What, uh, what, uh, what? 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 What are we doing here? This is not exactly the plan that we talked about. What I don't know. I don't know. What I did you do to him? I didn't do anything. I was just talking to him. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. He can. Uh -huh. He can hear us. I know, it's just Lord Dane has okay? all of a sudden turned. Oh, that's very this weird. gentleman has had some sort of a seizure of some sort. Oh, oh no. God. We should do our best to. Uh, should I cast like greater restoration well, on I, him? Maybe, or something? but let's try some other things first. As you guys are dragging him out of the party, his body. The Why is he floating? The muscles now come loose once more as the paralysis Are you okay? Is... Oh my gosh, you had me so worried. I have to go. Uh, uh, I'm hold on a minute. Arm uh, I don't think so. Click. I put the manacles of stasis on his wrists. Sixth level. Go ahead and make an athletics check for me, if you don't mind. Oh, boy. This should go well. Fifteen? It's a natural five. <laughs> the 
they clack onto his wrists. And immediately, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Do I need to roll to see if he falls asleep? He falls asleep? That's what the manacles of stasis from back in Lorenzo's they make basement you f- do. Oh, these aren't the... Manacles? That's the right. Of stasis. That's right. Six level, which means 15d8 against his HP. So yes, you do. You have to roll 15d8. Okay. Oh. What is happening? Oh, I have my. to go look up his HP now. Hold on a second. <laughs> what happened to What happened to just messaging Essek and fucking prank calling him? Welcome to the Mighty Nine, Travis. <laughs> I was just talking to him. I didn't do anything. Something happened in that bedroom, didn't it, Beth? <laughs> Something became unhinged. This Everything feels Wait. different. That's a lot of numbers. That's That's it. That's it? That's 73. It's not enough. It's okay. Sorry. Do they still, like, hold his wrists? Yeah, the the manacles clap onto his wrists, and you watch him kind of like... Almost stumble for a second. The eyes kind of lulling before it writes himself. Caleb, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you talking about? I was just talking to Lord Thane here. He vanishes from the handcuffs and appears 30 feet away on the outside of the gate of the establishment. 30 feet away? Yes. I, I'm just going to say, stop. I'm going to try command. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. It's a party now. <laughs> All right, you say, and then their guards are there, and as you say, stop, stop, they turn towards you as you shout and point. Stop. All right, you Very make chill. a wisdom saving throw. 17. 15. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so it works? Yeah. It so it doesn't work for a long time. No, it lasts for a run. So, so when it comes back to his next turn, he's just going to not do anything. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to head on over there. <laughs> All right. The guards kind of look confused. Are you guys following Caduceus? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's fine. We just have to finish the conversation. Sorry, uh, friends. Yeah, have too much. Just have drink. a quick conversation. All right. Make a deception check. Oh Jesus. I mean, I'm not. Make lying. a deception check. Sixteen. All the while, my mother is singing. Twenty. I'm not lying. It's less about the lying and more the intent of what's going on. Trying to keep keep the keep it from sounding like there's conflict going on, which you seem to do. Yeah. As the guards just kind of nod and open the gate for you as you step by. uh, As as Lord Desmond's just kind of standing there, going, "You really do want to talk to us? I think it's very important." You do. A lot at stake here. A lot. Fine, then show me where. Let's find a place to talk that's quiet. The rest of you, as you carefully escort Lord Desren Thane across the restless wharf, eventually across the gangplank to the deck and below the deck of the Ball Eater. You find your way to a comfortable space, away from prying eyes, and as the figure, shoulders slumped, turns around, the illusion fades. (gasps) Yasha, please guard the door. Oh my gosh, it's Essek, what the what? Like I said, never trust floaty hot boys. (laughs) What are you doing? Yes, friend, what are you doing? I'm sorry. 
You all weren't part of the plan. Well, you know, we have a limited amount of time, and I would love for you to see the sunrise, so... If there is a reasonable explanation, we would love to hear it. It's complicated to express. Figured that much. Do you sit down? For this, yes. We have all night. It may take as much. And he like moves his hand this way and one of the crates kind of scoots and he sits upon it. Still cool, still fucking cool. <laughs> I... I have a lot I want to accomplish. And only one person who understood and believed in that idea. And that's me. I've done terrible things in my life. As I know many of you have as well, things you regret. Things you think you're doing for the right reasons. I cannot say I regret what I've done. I just regret how things have changed since I made that decision. You weren't part of the plan. Well, number one, what did you want to accomplish? Number two, just fucking explain the plan. Because we've been guessing and it's, I don't know, if we're right, it's... He doesn't want to say it out loud. You want to write it down? You want to draw it? You want... No. You want to play charades? No, he... First word, <clears throat> world domination. <laughs> if he says it out loud, then he's going to have to hear what it is. And he's not going to like who he is when he hears it. I know you're a good... You're a good man. You're... <laughs> You are, we know you, Essek. And I am but a humble, selfish creature. But avarice and fear can often disguise themselves in a good man as strength and righteousness until he's forced to unveil them in front of people that he trusts. Just say it. We're here. I'm sorry. Sorry that you've all been pulled into this web of lies. When I first saw you arrive with the beacon, one of the two that I gave, I knew I had to be near you to protect what we had done. I had to make sure that you did not Get too close to the truth. Backfired. <laughs> if 
if I could control the direction of your meanderings near this endeavor, perhaps it would have been safer. What I didn't account for was liking you all. And there's nothing worse than betraying those you come to care about before you even came to care about them. At least not in my experience, and regret is a very new sensation. <laughs> the pain is somewhat comforting, because I am my own punishment. Do you still want what you started out wanting? I've spent my life working towards it. I think things got a little out of hand. What do you want? I've already told you. There are so many mysteries around these beacons, around Dunamis, what it's capable of. My entire life I've been propped up to be perhaps worthy of being one to break those boundaries, to find applications for it that could change everything. And if I don't do it, <laughs> the first person who does, I don't trust them. I drop down onto my knees in front of him and turn his face to mine. You listen to me. I know what you are talking about. I know. And the difference between you and I is thinner than a razor. I know what it means to have other people complicate your desires and wishes. And I was like you. Was. I know what a fool I have been for years. And I'm looking at him as if I am looking in a mirror. You didn't account for us good. That is life. Shit hits you sideways in life and no one is prepared. No one is ready. These people changed me. change you. You were not born with venom in your veins. You learned it. You learned it. You have a rare opportunity here, Thales. One chance to save yourself. And we are offering it. And I am. I place a hand on his shoulder, pleading with you to find your better self. He is still there. Very 
There is no path to redemption for me. If... If what has been done comes to light, if what you are seemingly looking to correct is known, then I am a dead man. I lean in and kiss him right here. And say, maybe you and I are both damned. But we can choose to do something and leave it better than it was before. the plan and now you're all in terrible danger for the things that you know so be it I've not cared for anyone but myself for the century I've been alive I hold his hand who are you today not then Right now. It's all that matters. It can be disorienting having friends get under your skin. (laughs) I cannot be here. to know what's coming we have to we need to know what you paid what you've set in motion we we, we're gonna have to take care of it if I tell you will you let me go I don't know but well I, I won't let you leave until you do You can certainly try. (laughs) We are returning the right beacon. The one that I gave. And they are keeping the one that they found. Their research is to continue. And we are to correspond as the research progresses. There is intent to end this war. It has run its purpose. They have what they want. I'll have what I want. And everyone out there will have what they want. An end to this conflict. So what's the bad stuff? The bad stuff is if you tell anyone, or try to stop it. This beacon, it goes back to the Bright Queen. And it's totally fine, it's unsafe. So you guys have come back now. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Quietly crept in behind for the tail end. (laughs) Acid! What? (laughs) Whoa! Too much. <laughs> there is no great plan. There is no espionage. There is no anything. We're just putting all the pieces back and hope that nobody notices. Then why is it bad? Why would we tell anyone? You're stopping the war. You're getting what you want. 
then you won't. Well, I can't say I have a lot of faith in the Empire's intentions. Can I situation. insight check Essek to see if yes, he feels like he was... <coughs> easy roll, easy roll. Can I... Ooh, do I still have... Perse- oh, is it, do I still have endurance, what? the thingy? I would say it's on the cusp of probably fading at this point. Sure, why not? <laughs> In the final moments. Yeah. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, that's a 22. Okay. He seems to be bearing it all. Okay. I mean, this, this doesn't really change our plans. This doesn't change what we really, what we knew before. We just, you know, want to make sure that the beacon that's going back isn't going to try to explode everyone. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. We were coming along to ensure that outside interests that may wish to see the war continue are kept at bay. Who all knows of your plans? Oh. (laughs) Myself and a few select members of the assembly. The Martinet. The Martinet. What about Icky? I believe Trent is also aware. That guy's a fuckhole. You're not wrong. What do you want with the prisoners? What's with the prisoner exchange? Who are all the prisoners? Is it the ones we know of, or are there secret prisoners? There are only two prisoners as part of this agreement that will be passed over. You didn't kill them, did you? No, part of the agreement was to not have our prisoner killed and not theirs, so yeah. Vence is being passed over to us. Yeah. And the prisoner, which we've already spoken to, is to be passed over to the Empire. You said we were in danger because of what we know. Who knows what we know? Just you, right? Just myself, the Martinet, and Trent. Well, there was one more, though I have not met her. Met her? Astrid? No. Was her name Astrid? She's another member of the assembly. Bestra. Best. Derogna. Derogna. That's the name. She was commanding a period of experimentation with it. As far as I know, those are the only ones. But we hold a tense, mutually assured self-destruction. So you lot started this war, and now you're going to finish it. Yes. And we're just supposed to turn the other way and pretend like you're not all a bunch of traitors. Yes. I mean, I like you, but the other ones, we're just going to let them get away with it? Well, they always have. Thousands have died, Isaac. Thousands of innocents. And I know for a fact that one of the people you have been negotiating with would throw you, me, any one of us, any member of the country he helps govern into the fire. Anyone. I think your intentions are good, but I think perhaps your vision has been clouded. My intentions were never good. They were important. You're gonna have to make a lot of babies. <laughs> um, not sure that's how. Uh, well, There's so many, it just. I was... <sighs> so. Let's talk about what we are going to do next. Obviously, this plan needs to move forward. Yes. Optimally, yes. Yeah. You're not going to betray us again, I said. You're not going to, like, leave here and tell everyone that we know and then get us killed. 
Well, that depends. You show me a kindness. We've done nothing but show you kindness. Yeah, that's wrong. We're gonna need a certain amount of honesty going forward. Rebuild some trust. Otherwise, well, uh, Yasha, I mean, she's better at that part. I'm not going gonna... <laughs> to... You have been spilling secrets to people on the assembly. Now you can spill secrets to us. And we will move forward with this plan. And I am telling you, there is a very high likelihood that the people that you are dancing with mean to cut your throat and leave you in the dust with many others. Then perhaps it is best that I surround myself with friends to protect me. For the enemy of my friend is my enemy indeed, yes? Is this charade at sea what it really appears to be? No tricks, no double crosses, no twists or turns. No tampering with the artifact. Not from us. We have nothing to gain by it going awry. Well, I, you have a plan in place and you think that will end this conflict. I don't know that we agree. However, we move forward. Can we count on you when the deal sours? I have far more allegiance to you than I do any empire or dynasty, for I've not had any for either. You are a broken person <laughs> who had ill intentions and wandered aimlessly into a path that you had no intention or no idea how to complete, and yet somehow along the way you found a heart you sound like all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Mighty Nine. As I get this point, kind of looks up to you, Beth, and kind of. So I'm, I'm the goblin from before. Right. No, I. Then, as soon as it, it worked, then, yes? Yeah, we uh, removed uh, the impediment. I um, we discussed with you, yeah. Yeah, we broke my mom's tab doing. Mama. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I run out of the room. Okay. Wait. Very well. Wait. Uh, that is I'll go on chase after her. All right. Is this is the thing we're doing, or right? no, no, no? Oh, okay. This is important. Sure we should stay here. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate what you are saying. I am thankful that you have a modicum of faith in me, and deserving as I may be. Um, it is in that interest that I just want to warn you about getting too close. I am tied to a lot of dangerous individuals and teeter in the shadows at the crux of all of this conflict, intentional as it may not have been. I would never want to put you in a situation, or put myself in a situation where I would have to choose between myself and the rest of you. Why don't you talk us through the next few days and weeks. Well, uh, I currently exist in a delicate balance with the Cerberus Assembly, for either could reveal the charade to the detriment of the other. There is respect, at least I believe, on an intellectual level, but I am but one working across from many. I think my utility with the Assembly continuing to cover up this endeavor from the inside of the dynasty, as well as my insights into their 
to nomadic interests make me too valuable at the moment to be buried. But that doesn't mean that I can stop being paranoid. Nor can I assume that my presence to you doesn't put you in continuous danger either. So, um, in time, I hope this will pass. But for now, we will. I will continue to escort a handful of assembly members to this negotiation. And if you are indeed coming with your ship as well, you will be nearby. You will oversee the transference of the beacon to the dynasty, as well as the trade of the prisoners. Some discussions and agreements will hopefully come to bear and to bring the outer conflict, the public conflict to an end. After which, we stay quiet. I go back to the dynasty. The assembly returns to their research and we continue as if none of this had happened. Well, I, uh, it's hard to, <clears throat> hard to forecast out past the next few days, but I mean, let's not kid ourselves that at some point, someone is going to have to pay for some of the damage that has been done. I admire your sense of heroism, but history is full of people who have not paid for their sins. Full with a lot of people who have. Or people Some. who've paid for others. And while we feel a kinship towards you, and apparently you towards us, unless you're lying about that, there's nothing necessarily stopping us from enacting justice on other folks who have been involved in this scheme. I am not going to get in the way of any perceived vengeances, just to know that it is safest that I not involve myself in particular course, with such endeavors. It might help us, though, if we knew if there were any members of the Cerberus Assembly or anyone that you are particularly beholden to or allied with that we should steer clear of or be especially mindful of? The Martinet is extremely intelligent and very resourceful. So the less that can be revealed to him, the safest we all are. Uh, Lady Vesterugna is clever in her own way. And I am curious to what her involvement is to the Biting North in particular. That may or may not be involved in this, but I trust her less than most, I think. Are you prepared for all of this to go sideways on you? Always. You I have been for easy. the three years since we began this plot. I uh, feel conflicted about this, but would like to see even a temporary end to conflict. Well, <laughs> outwardly. Why do you keep saying that? What does that mean? I would hope that in your studies within the Cobalt Soul, you understand that conflict is perpetual. I do. I'm just curious what your brand is. Well, he has acknowledged that they are keeping uh, one of these artifacts in the Empire, and they are not doing it for posterity's sake. I mean, there has been a shadow war between the Dynasty and the Empire for decades. This is just the first time that it's brimmed out of the control of those that waged it. When the Dynasty finds out that there's another artifact. They cannot. When they find out. I mean, let's hope we are far away and well protected. 
when it happens. So if it takes a very long time, or that it make its way home without anyone ever having to admit it was gone in the first place. Doesn't seem like you have a choice here. <laughs> you seem fairly well painted into a corner. So it would seem. But I've gotten this far by leaning into my resources. I know I can protect myself. I don't think I can protect all of you. And that is why I'm worried. Well, I would just hope that if things go pear-shaped on us, counter to how you hope and believe things will go, if your life is in danger and our lives as well, that you are willing to work with your friends to survive it. To survive it, yes. Make no mistake. We do not trust you. Good. That'll help you survive. Doesn't mean we don't hope for you. Tricky balance, Essek. Isn't everything? <sighs> Even if this is successful and the war is declared over, that doesn't mean everything goes back to normal. The tangled espionage between both sides of this has gone on for long and will continue to go. The organ trust is deeply ingrained, as is the lens. We just have to be careful who we tell anything to. My recommendation is nothing to anyone. Well, if there's anything that we are adept at, it's being careful and keeping information close to the vest. <laughs> oh, we are in so much trouble. Serious. <laughs> and there's no one else. No one else has your ear in this way. No. Please try and keep us informed. Of course. The best of my ability. Of course. Once again, for whatever it's worth, I am sorry. Apology accepted, at least from here. He doesn't speak for all of us. I definitely do not. Why don't you get some rest, Essek? You do the same. Night is still young, I would hate for you to waste such a polished presentation. He sits up off his crate and kind of glides back to his faint hover. Good night. And his illusion <clears throat> once more transitions to the blonde elven figure that he's been masquerading as since his arrival in Nicodranas. He waits tensely to make sure that he can leave. If you truly hope for a second chance, truly, step very carefully with us. Glide. And he just leaves. Um, weirdly enough, a figure steps up from below your deck. You see a, uh, oh, it looks to be an elven figure with blonde hair. This is Lord Deseran. This is Ooh. Essek in oh. his illusory form. Ah, approaches. Is us? Yeah, steps up from below hey. your deck. Why did you get here? I arrived but a few moments ago. Keep bamfing onto our ship without permission. Well, we do that a lot to other You're people. You're not wrong, it's fair. It's good to see you. You as well. It is best that I'm nowhere near these negotiations. Mm. Um, 
the Martinet has the beacon's transference handled. I am just here to be watchful. Will they know it's you? Like, will the people on the the other side? There are many wards placed around the proximity of this negotiation, I'm certain, so I would not wish to put myself in a precarious situation. I figured this was the safest place to be, if yeah. you don't mind. Or that spyglass for a little bit. Oof. I'm going to keep an eye. I want to slowly pan through the other ships, not the two main ones, and I just want to look for anything unusual or anybody. Okay. Well, just, the just check for me. Just in general. Uh, 21. 21, okay. Looking around, you can see there are all forms of uh, deck side ballista that are armed but not aimed yet. Mm. Um, you can see at the front of some ships, there are figures that appear to be at least uh, magic practitioners on display. Um, everyone is fully armored and just kind of at the ready. Right. You do not see any sort of funny business at the moment. No funny business, all right. Um, but everyone is, is tense as you'd expect, given the circumstances. Mm. May I? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to see who is uh, standing and representing for the Empire on their ship. Okay. You see the Dust Captain mm -hmm. is uh, the primary conversant. Um, the two figures to the right and left of her, you do not recognize. Uh, yeah. But they are uh, they are both drow. And they're conversing back and forth. You can now see at this point, soldiers are bringing up from two opposite sides, uh, looks like large metallic boards. And then you realize they're mirrors. Oh. A mirror placed on one ship, and a mirror on the other. Yeah. Upon this center space between the two, where this kind of heavy gangplank has been assembled slowly over a period of an hour or so, there is now a an open walkway, like a, a 20 by 20 foot portion of solid deck between these two ships. And the mirrors are placed there, along with chairs, and this is where the discussion is to happen. Caleb, what form is Frumpkin in right now? That's a At this distance, you can begin to see now the mirrors begin to shimmer. And from the perspective that you have, you cannot quite see the, the one that's facing away from your ship, but the one that's facing this direction, you gather with a couple of glances in the angle that you're at, you can see the Bright Queen, her visage appearing on the other mirror. Oh, man. I feel like we should be there. I know. Do a few of us need to get closer? We've got water breathing. I don't know if we should. You've got lots of warts, you know? If we get, yeah, and if we get, if we even rattle that, the whole thing falls apart. Let's just see if it grows on its own. Do not think you are the only ship keeping a very close eye on every other ship on this armada. Plus it's 500 feet, you'd be trapped in the middle. It'd take you too long to get there, and if something happened, you'd be stuck. Yeah, yeah, you will walk. I can just walk over there. Yeah, that that would go well. The I can only, be invisible. The only part we're really not they looking at. Words. They would know that it was not really, you know. Mm -hmm. okay. Like they would be able to see you. They'd probably be able to see. You would. I yeah, think the only thing that's much. not being watched is beneath us. That's it. But I don't know how to remedy that. I think we're here for the show. By the way, Captain, Yasha reminded me what pack the good powder means, and oh, we're all set. You reminded Yasha? No, what the, Yasha oh. reminded me. Oh, okay. So we're all good. Is the good powder packed, Master Gunner? Did good you? Powder is, is packed. Co Monkey, the, um, Co -monkey reports a fine packing of the good powder. Of the good powder. Uh, they they have the been. Each of the 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 wads have been prepped. Wow. Yeah. What what the fuck, Veth? She's a natural. Yeah. She's a killing machine over there. Yeah. Yasha, do you have extensive experience on the water? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I, I, I do not. She didn't have harp experience either. She's, she's just good. She's just good. She's a fast packing. learner. She picks things up, you know? Yeah, I do, yeah, I have experience packing. You do pack. Sure. I've seen you, you're mm-hmm. very good Definitely at packing. Definitely packing, yeah. She learned how to knit while we've been sailing in the last three days. Oh, <laughs> any other languages? <laughs> Not yet, but we'll see. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> pig, pig common. <laughs> pig common. About what time yeah, do you is it? At this point, it's well, it's hard to tell. Um, it is perpetual oh, midnight where right. you currently Fuck. stand. But if um, I remember every hour of the day leading up to this moment. Correct. You're keeping right. tabs on. At this yeah. point, I'd say as time progresses into the afternoon, these negotiation talks go on for a few hours. Uh, lanterns are lit across the decks of the ships to give this kind of still slightly swaying with the waves, almost firefly light type look across both armadas as they meet on that edge. Just for color, if a sun was in the sky and the dynasty fleet came forward, does the sun appear in the night sky but just without light or does it disappear? Um, Currently looking up, uh, you can see the outline of where the sun would be. But it, but it appears to look like a very dull moon. Wow. That's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. I wish I had that. Hey, Essek. I mean, sorry, should I not call you that? Uh, in mixed company, it would not be preferred. Yes, please. Hey. Um, <laughs> can you scry on them? Uh, I would probably say I would prefer not to. Would they know that you're scrying? They would know they are being scried upon um. if uh, they have the right wards, which I have to assume they have every sort of ward present on this mm-hmm. for that reason. Well, how do we hear? We don't. don't. We trust. It's really boring <clears throat> without knowing what they're saying. Jester, oh. welcome to politics. Oh, we hate politics. Jester, boring is good. Also, not boring is with this many people, probably not. That's actually a really good point. The hours progress into what would probably be early evening, and then at a point, people leave their chairs, the mirrors are taken, and it looks like the negotiations for the day have ended. For the day. There's no signs of completion. There's no movement of any There's ships. There's been no handoff of beacons or oh, prisoners. We could be here. Not yet. And no one said this was a one-day thing. Uh, There's only so much. How food long until really TravelerCon? Um, you have somewhere from this point in time, I'd say. Uh, my details here. Roughly two weeks. Okay, 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 we got it. And how like far a little over two weeks away. From Rumble Cusp? Uh, from your current meeting here, you're about a six to nine day journey if you go above the Ink Claw Reef, or about an eight to ten day journey on the southern side of the Ink Claw Reef. Okay. Six to nine or eight to ten? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So you've got over two weeks before it happens. You have, you have time. We got we'll we'll get a week for this to conclude. Yeah. Until this runs into that time. But yeah. What? Oof. How would you like to send a message to the Bright Queen? Oh my god, I was thinking about doing that. But she's in the middle of a negotiation! No, she just finished, she's not talking! What should I ask her? Be like, how's it going? How's it going is the first thing to ask, yeah. Does she feel it's going well? Does she trust that it is going to reach completion smoothly? Just an update. Yeah, I'm sure she's... Totally wants to talk to you. No, she does not. But I'm going to send a message to her. Okay. Sure. <laughs> oh, we took a long rest. Mm-hmm. You did the night before. You. Oh, we yeah. took a long oh, rest. Oh, we took mm-hmm. a long rest. Okay. You're right. I'm going to send a message to the bright queen. <laughs> oh my gosh! I could see you in the mirror. You look so beautiful. What were you guys saying? Did it go well? Are you happy? I am in the middle of a discussion, <laughs> but I will respond that things are progressing as expected. Not poorly yet. She thinks they're going decent. Not poorly yet, she says. Okay. Don't, I do not think she wants me to send another message. To her. <laughs> what does Orly have to do with this? that's what you're going to. <clears throat> I don't think she We won't push, push it. Okay. 
maybe one day at a time. Should I send a message to King Dwendal and find out what he oh thinks? Oh my god. <laughs> How did negotiations fall uh. apart? <laughs> we didn't have as good a relationship, I feel. That's true. With King Dwendal. What about Martinet? Yeah. I'm going to send a message to the Martinet. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hey, so you were there? Oh my gosh, what happened? What did they say? I'm, we're just so curious. I really want to know. How? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it seems things are open to progression in the morrow. The ice has been broken. Nobody's killed each other. I call that a win. He used a good amount of words in the response, and he says it was going really good. Where's uh, not Essek? Is he still on the boat with us? He's still with you guys. He's kind of nervously watching and kind of checking in for your responses and oh my stuff. Gosh, not Essek, are you going to stay on the boat with us tonight? Because you can't go any closer, huh? Are you going to sleep here? Are you going to sleep on our boat? I can probably uh, handle myself, do not worry. Where are you going to sleep? I could return to my tower. Oh, and then just come here tomorrow? Yes. I mean, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Technically speaking, nobody's sleeping in the captain's quarters. Well, we have our four decoy. That's fair. There is a dummy in there. Oh, yeah. No, Very never strange, mind. But okay. I think. Ooh, should I tell it? What? Never mind. He Go doesn't to the even tower know about that pay. yet. It's one problem at a time. We have a lot of irons in the fire. I can only imagine. Hey, when you come here tomorrow, will you bring some, like, pastries? Because you'll be. You'll, like, something good. Will you bring us a present? Make a persuasion check. <laughs> <Something good. laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! It looks so good. It looks like an eight, but you like me. I said, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Just top it off. Things are a bit tense for me to head to the bakery, but should all things go well, maybe another time. Okay. Nonetheless, uh, I will take my leave for the night. Thank you for uh, not throwing me into the water. Are you keeping it together? As well as expected. Okay. You're going to bamf in tomorrow? I feel safer being closer to the information. Mm. Just not close enough. Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> anyway. Spell. And he's gone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually you works. <laughs> That'd be really funny. Um, <laughs> but he is gone. <laughs> we won. Yeah. Good job. Doesn't really feel that way, though, does it? I really expect it. Then to fight? Yeah. Something to go wrong at the last minute, with our luck. Well, yeah. sometimes, no matter how hard everybody tries, everything quiets down for a while. Outwardly, at least. For a moment, people won't think, get hurt. Do you think it'll really end? Nothing like this ends, it just calms down. I think this will help pull eyes away from whatever next tense endeavor both sides is attempting to beat the other towards. The war may have come to a close, but their business continues on. It has for a long time. Where will you go now? Well, I have to take care of a few loose ends and ensure that 
all of this can be laid to rest. What are their names? It's not their names. They're not people. And they should have some business to tend to. And then? Maybe I could take a breath for the first time in months. And if you're interested, we could still do good things together. Very interested. Yeah. Just, you know, send a message. Yeah, I think we need to let this settle. That we do. Just hope everyone travels home safe. Well, we're heading to a volcano. So. What does that mean? What did that mean? Insight check. Insight check. Mm. Make an insight check. Go for it. He's made of chairs. <laughs> <laughs> chairs all the way through. <laughs> oh, shit. Burn. Oh, ben. Eighteen. Eighteen. Oh, eighteen whisper. It's like a half whisper. It's a half burp. He's made of chairs. <laughs> God, it's not your hands. Oh, oh yeah, hands as chairs. often as you can. Yeah. Remember to cover your mouth if you sneeze. I've been so bad about that. Cover this. your nose so if you sneeze. Trying to avoid With your hand shaking and hugging. Yep. Gotta do the elbows. Or sneeze. any personal contact that's unneeded or necessary. Don't enjoy each other's company. Oh. No fun. If you have a wife or a loved one or a husband or. Don't kiss them or touch them in any way. That's what they Keep recommend. Red. <laughs> you can cut them out if you want. Don't do any of that. Whenever you finish what you're doing, just let me know. We can talk in a more safe environment about the entangled web that all of these people have built. These people. Seems like you've spun out a thread or two yourself, Vasek. Yep, the oh. little humdinger you did. Yeah. I do not exclude myself from these statements. Well, we have our peace, so happy days. Hmm. Happy days. Hmm. <laughs> Until then. Send cupcakes. She doesn't count as well. Leave it. Fuck. Nope. Essek? Oh, right. I will send a message to Essek. <coughs> well. What are we going to say? We only have one thing that we can say to him, right? One word. No, 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 God, right? But like, what is the one piece of information he could give us in 25 words that would help us the most? Honestly, I don't know. It's not like he can send a, a coordinate. I guess he could. Is he aware of any dynasty, heavy dynasty activity in Foren or Aeor? And he might have known about that group that just got slaughtered. Maybe you just say, we're headed to Aeor. What do we need to know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and we need help. Okay. The Nanagon is here. The Nanagon is here. We're looking for threshold crests. So okay. Hence, the, uh, oh, hiding anything. Okay, okay, that's a lot, a lot, okay. <clears throat> and you poop. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> We are headed to Aeor. The Nonagon is here. Can you help us? We are looking for threshold crests. Do you have any knowledge? <laughs> That's the worst message I've ever sent. No, it's not. Really? No, it's really? not. There was four really? ideas no. in there. You got, there. got a lot really in there. Really it was concise. You got a lot in there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not but a moment later, you get a response from Essek. Jester, it has been a bit. That was a lot. 
But Eor. Interesting. I'm at a Vermis outpost to its east. Wait, what? Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh. He's at the what outpost? Vermis outpost. A Vermis? He's, a Vermis? He's not done. He's not done. That's all you've had at the moment. Oh. A Vermis? No, Vermis. A four is to the east. Dagon, Dagon, do you know where a Vermis outpost is? He's asleep, he's asleep. He's we gotta go wake him up. Oh, yeah. shit. We can find out in the morning. In the morning. Okay, 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 okay. How far away? Is it? Wait, 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 wait. Where's, where's, where's you your map? Sneaky map? bastard. Where's your map? I knew it. Is are you mad or are you digging? Before we ran into the people we know. It's like going to the mall on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to run into wow. your aunt. Your Why are all my spells gone? No. Oh my they god, can't send any messages. What's it like in Kentucky, Kentucky Mall? <laughs> <laughs> Very different. Won't leave yeah. games. I don't see it on the map. Before he gets to us. Yeah, if he's in the eastern part. Well, I don't know what to tell him. We, as tell we, him as we get we closer are. to the flow shift, we can we can decide if we yeah, it's still a few days out, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Essek, <clears throat> do you want to meet us? Things are dangerous. <laughs> it's important. Tell him where we are. I don't know how to tell him where we are. Oh, that, tell him where we know. just left. Oh. We just left. South of the. We just left. A five, whatever that means. Meet Mo you by the flow change. Moving north. Moving north. <laughs> that one did not go as well. I don't think. You need to step up your game. Stop! Stop trying to tell me what to say when I'm. Don't ask me questions when I'm sending messages. I'm so sorry. I'm so them. sorry, but you stopped halfway through the message and it looked like your nose was bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Essek responds. Mm -hmm. It is fortuitous that it seems our paths unite. He says with the question. I currently oversee this outpost and cannot leave. Mm -hmm. But feel free to visit. Send a message to Essek. Okay, we're on the route. We're in the middle of a bunch of spires? What should we be looking for? How do we find you? <laughs> you could wrap it up early. No. Gee whiz. <laughs> you are great. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Glad Glad we we not way better. <laughs> That was perfect. You get a response. <laughs> well, thank you for your uh, kind words. Good. Um, look for the larger spired clusters. Be mindful. No weapons out. Oh. 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 That's Good it. to know. And the one that's kind of towards you, August. <laughs> Follow me. And they all still kind of keep a circle around you, but they're just, it's less aggressive and guarding and more just traveling with you. As you begin to make your way, you can see on the side of one of these spires, a door opens. And from the inside, you can see this kind of warm, constructed interior. And immediately you begin to, to suss out that these spires are some sort of illusory construct that there is actually a small outpost here that is completely masqueraded with magic. Oh, cool. That is so awesome. But as the door opens, you see a figure kind of drift out. <gasps> you see the familiar uh, white, short hair, uh, odd grin, um, and, and now a heavy white fur collared, kind of long purple black cloak uh, as the Shadowhand Essek Thalys drifts towards you. I run over and hug him. It's so good to see you. Uh, and everyone kind of stops and kind of gives a curious head turn. Um, oh, sorry. It's, it's good to see you as well, Jester. Yes. Mighty Nine, 
I'm happy to see that you traveled safely across these lands. Mm -hmm. um, well, do come in. We have much to discuss, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, in private, hopefully. And kind of glances about and puts a hand up to the rest of everybody, and they begin to scatter and go about their business. Uh, you hear a couple of whistles go, like this kind of odd metallic whistle, kind of <whistles> around, and as it does, some of the doors begin to open and people begin going about their business. And in an instant, this quiet, desolate space, you begin to see other doors open, and this becomes a bustling outpost again, wow. where about a dozen to 14 or so people begin carrying materials back and forth. You can see people are in the process of building weapons, and uh, there's a hidden forge beneath an overhang that you, can, you couldn't see from the outside, but once you come around the opposite edge, you could see it's just a camouflaged tent top. And on the inside, you can see they're starting to, to get the bellows going and the flames starting to rise once more. Um, but Essek leads you into the chambers where he emerged, and as you step inside, uh, it is thankfully much warmer upon your approach uh, relatively well lit. You can see a number of tables set out, uh, heavy crates kind of piled up with materials and uh, supplies of some kind, a number of other Aurora's Watch soldiers surrounding you, chairs and other individuals that kind of look over and give a nod as you enter, accompanied by Essek. You all step inside the door. It's closed by one of the soldiers who kind of just keeps post there, arms crossed. Uh, Essek spins around at the central table and then glides down onto one of the nearby stools. Before looking you all over, his cloak kind of throws back over his shoulders a bit, revealing his mantle. So, friends, what brings you to Aeor? <laughs> Anything uh, that sea invisibility would pick up in this room that is not as it appears? Uh, actually, yeah. Make a perception check for me. <laughs> See if you, if you catch anything. Uh, 16. 16. You do see two soldiers that are currently cloaked through some sort of magic that have heavy crossbows that are in two different corners of the chamber. They're not up and ready, but they're just keeping watch. Okay. Uh, we have quite a bit to explain. Do we want to do this privately or privately, privately? Uh, there's a lot that's been happening. This is, we are in, Desperate need of help. You see, he kind of gives a glance throughout the room and says, anything you can say to me, you can say to our friends in this chamber. And I'm assuming this chamber is pretty well protected from spies, scrying magic, anything they can see hope in. So. Do you have anything like hot cocoa or an espresso with absinthe in it? Hot or waters, like we anything at all? Still have hot cocoa. <gasps> Do you have hot water, Essek? We can make cocoa. That can be procured, yes. Uh, and he goes and looks over. One of the other soldiers has already left. Um, and at the, at the mention of hot cocoa being present, you can see a number of the soldiers kind of <laughs> head turned to you. <laughs> <laughs> You've suddenly the become the prettiest belt of the ball. Got any extras? Yeah, we good. I, I've got enough to make a couple pots. So. Great. Sorry, um, great. Make an insight check for me. Oh, disadvantage. Yep. Hit it all. 13. <laughs> okay. Not, that's not right. horrible. <laughs> no. Okay. Um you you can't Do you have magic that would let you uh like see a picture in somebody's mind like if I had seen something and wanted to show you but couldn't draw very well and just wanted you to just kind of see it is there a thing I that... can draw really well. I would be able to on the morrow, but at the moment I do not have the capability. My apologies. The thing, the the thing we saw. Which which what one? Thing? The city. The city. Oh wow! Oh, We're going yeah. way back for this story. I I feel like we need to impress the gravity of the situation. What you know, if he story? already knows? That's what I was just saying. Are you, uh, yeah. First, our, our story is very complicated. <laughs> Why don't you catch us up on what you're doing here? How you're doing? Very well, actually. Mm. Um. Walk with me, if you would, then. If you don't. Walk and talk. And he gives a nod. Isn't there one piece of information we should share, though, before we sort of <laughs> catch up on them the leisurely? Yeah, so good. good. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. just in case they try to identify people instead of going, like, if you see these people, fuck them up as fast as you can. Yeah, there's a group. We're being pursued. Yeah. By whom? A group of five. Called the Tomb Takers. Have you heard of them? Did Essek ever meet Molly? Mo no. no. I don't think no. so. No. I cannot say I'm familiar with this group. Have you heard of the Nonagon? 
No. Have you heard of the uh, so Somnovum? Somnovum? I do not believe so. Inside check. Inside check. Yeah. Inside check. Yeah. <laughs> okay. May <laughs> okay. Freeze frame. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. 17. <clears throat> 25. 20 oh, total. Oh, shit. Well, everyone just goes in on that. <laughs> Swords out. <laughs> and, are you rolling? I rolled a one. I'm shut All right, fair enough. 25, 25. Um, he seems to be on the level. He seems to be. His curiosity has certainly peaked as to what dragged you out in the middle of here, but he did not seem to react in some odd or guarded way when you mentioned the phrase. Well, we are He's learned. Good. Yeah, what He's are you good. doing out here, Essex? Don't you know all the horrible exactly. things that happened yeah. here? If, 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 and if anybody sees them, though, they should report it before they okay. even engage. Yeah. They're led by a guy who's purple and he's covered in eyeballs and he's got horns like mine, okay? And then there's like uh, four other people with him. One's a uh, cat, one's a halfling, one's a big guy, one's, I don't know, an elf. I'll cast Silent Image and just sort of make right. make these see, people sort of morph into each see, other. See, Essek kind of raises a finger and, and points towards one of the soldiers who approaches and begins to listen intently. They are really dangerous. They can destroy magic. They almost killed all of us. We you fought can... a dragon, and the dragon was an easier fight than these people. It you was see, a lot. The soldier that Essek called over is not quite as armored as some of the other ones, and mm -hmm. has kind of a longer robe, and you can see they begin to create, a match an allusion to the one that's being created here. Mm. Um, and the, the, the descriptions that you're giving is they see crafting visuals of this, and Essek gives him a nod and says, tell the others. And he leaves, and you get the sense that he's going to inform the rest of the guard at the outpost. We relay the people. ability to dispel magic, all the... All yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. And, and there's enough cocoa that it, as long as the one cup gets around to each of these when you're done boiling it, whatever's left, feel free to spread around. There should be at least 12 <laughs> cups. Thank you. Thank you. To be rationed. Well, thank you for, for the heads up on that. Um, Eric, come walk with me for a bit. We can catch up a bit. I'm, I'm sorry you're on being pursued by these individuals. Um, we shall keep an eye out. I promise you that. I will show you on the outpost. And he rises and begins to head towards the door. The door opens on its own. And do you guys follow? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. You head out into the central, what would be a thoroughfare. Now that you can see this is an outpost, and now you're in the middle of it, you can see the spires are arranged to create kind of a central roadway that passes, this kind of curved cluster where the, the main kind of back and forth between these, these buildings, essentially, can be relatively easy and kept. Um, and you know, now that you're closer to you can see more of the soldiers that have the heavy white cloaks and hoods up that are on top of these spires at different platforms that have heavy ballista-like bolts and defensive position weapons that are uh, affixed to it that you could not see from a distance and are very well hidden, but are definitely capable of taking some, some very dangerous things down should they wander too close to this location. As, it kind of, as you guys kind of get close and there aren't anybody around, he goes, Apologies, just if we're going to talk a bit, perhaps we should be a little more private. Um, so, uh, come, I will show you where uh, my chambers are, and uh, not far from that, perhaps where you might wish to stay for the night. Oh, wonderful. Um, and as he approaches, kind of on the far northern end, a door opens, and you can see there's a guard out there that kind of nods, and you're all escorted in. This room is small, but comfortable. Um, Looking at it, you can see that it seems newer, or at least fresher. The the accoutrement, the, the decorations of it don't have that that look of being weathered for a long period of time. And as the door closes, you see as it kind of gives a glance and measures his fingers a bit in a direction and looks to you all. All right, the door is silent. No one can hear us through here. Just a moment. I'll look around the room. And did I see any other invisible sentries as we were making our way through all of that? Just to get an idea of how many people might be cloaked or hidden throughout this entire... Right. You did not see any other invisible sentries. The only ones that you saw were in that central chamber. Got it. Um, and you can see there was a lot of things being guarded in there from what you could tell. So you're not quite certain if there are other ones around. You didn't see any. A lot of them are still cloaked in the sense of like just keeping visually camouflaged to the environment. Okay. And the room is clear, no orbs. Make no perception room. check. We're in Essex chambers now? You are. <laughs> Ah, uh, great. 19. Looking around? You don't see anything. Okay. Cool. <sighs> My apologies for that. I... Uh, not... 
not deception, but um, you see, he's looking a bit, a bit nervous. He goes, "You asked me what I'm doing here. Um, I requested this outpost. I needed to be as far away from any sort of central politics after the negotiation." Why? Well, the guilt. Uh, well, partially, but more so the fact that if I am a dangling thread of communication to the Empire that triggered all of this, what purpose do I serve to be kept alive by the Assembly? That makes sense. I can guarantee you there are at least a dozen assassins out looking for me on their From our regard. sides, probably. Hmm? From our side. I can only assume so. Does anyone from yours suspect? Not yet. But who knows? <laughs> it's possible. Regardless, I was granted this post, and for the time being, I am enjoying the change of pace, <laughs> strangely. Uh -huh. So you really don't know very much about Aeor, then? I'm learning as we go, but I just asked to be sent f far away, and from what I'd heard, there was quite a bit of competitive acquisition of relics, and if I'm to be honest, that is an intriguing thing. I mean, I'm a man of arcane study, and if there are things here that can continue to progress my, well, my personal studies, then that would be, that would be perfect. But it also has the benefit of preventing the assembly in some subtle ways of getting these secrets before we did and keeping me uh, far away from where perhaps I'm being sought after for the time being. So you don't have a specific mission or timetable here? It's just to guard, protect, and acquire arcane materials? For the time being. We have a mission for you. Mm. Save the world. I fear your day today might be a little more interesting than you had bargained for soon. Um, one question before we dive into, there is so much. Um, we, uh, in a recent past, have tried to send something away from this region. I tried to send something out uh, uh, of the frozen north. Um, we don't know if it reached its destination. Mm. Be a translocation. Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, Do you have any experience doing such here? I have. I've been to and from elements of the dynasty a, a couple of times since I've been here. It's challenging. Um, what were your means of sending this object? Well, I had a, a physical article from the location I was trying to send our But it item. was not via circle. Yeah, more powerful. Not via circle. <laughs> Not via circle. Circles are the best? The magics around here are very strange. Especially at the proximity to these ruins. Any sort of magical incantation has an opportunity to um, create unexpected consequences. Um, but one of the elements that is most affected, especially uh, in Isocross, is translocation, teleportation. What I've learned is the use of a circle, having a specific anchor rune and the personal transition to, so the, the moving away from Eeyore, seems to be largely unaffected, or at least the safest route. Anything beyond that has an increased chance of going awry. So if we were to step away via circle, everything is fine, but trying to step back. As far as I know, yes. I make no extreme guarantees, but I've not seen a problem, and for those I know who have come before me, that seems to be the, the universal knowledge. How did you get back? You said you went home a few times? Mm -hmm. How did you return? The same way I've brought you around Exandria. It doesn't always work out the best. Um, to put it bluntly, it either sent me a little ways off of my intended destination, 
and I had to um, <laughs> keep safe and to find another way back, <laughs> or try again the next day. Or it did eventually get me there, but in the time, the process, I uh, underwent some physical stress. Did it, like, rearrange your body parts and put your butt on your front or something? <laughs> uh, it might have had it completed its attempts, maybe. Oh, shit. But um, oh, let's just say it can be quite painful if it goes very wrong. But it is possible. And if it be an emergency and a timetable of challenge, it could outweigh the dangerous journey here. Good to know, though, if we need to beat a hasty retreat, mm. we can do so. Potentially. Coming back is what? more difficult. But it is a dangerous place for anyone of uh, intense magical practitioning. The proximity of these ruins just makes things difficult to prepare for. Is that true of even the most basic magics, or is it? Basic magics can seem to get past whatever strange field or weave is here, but um, anything beyond even the most rudimentary spells tends to shift like through a prism. Wow. Oh boy. Cool, cool. Okay, understood. Through a prism. Well, that allays our most immediate concern. Can I get a, like a, Eat on Essek on if he's like a little twitchy, a little nervous. He mentioned the assassin thing, but can I sense if like there is something he's not letting on to? Make an inside check. <clears throat> Go, wisdom. That's really good. That is really good. 28 total. 28? Jesus. Yeah, I rolled a natural 19. He seems definitely nervous. Um, his nerves both, you can see him, he's instinctually kind of just looking over his shoulder around him, in a way a person who is constantly expecting anything to jump out of them is. But on top of that, there's also an, an additional layer. Would that roll? I have no other better way to say it. There is shame. He's having a hard time making direct eye contact with any of you for too long. Wow. He kept us in the dark a lot. Huh? The, the dynasty became aware of the Empire suddenly sending more and more individuals and interests to Isocross uh, a ways back, especially when Balin Post was incited here. And so Vermus was sent northward, which is a mobile, ocean-based city, if you will. A collection of ships that can link up together to form a small city at sea. Oh, wow. Um, it is a bit to the west here off the coast. That is, um, Maui originally approached Isocross, as to come here blind without experience via teleportation is a serious folly. Um, scouts from that outpost uh, first set up this region here, and uh, for a time being we're holding up. But there are dynasty missionary efforts out this way, and uh, meeting with Empire usually ends in bloodshed, so we have to keep careful, hence the, the guard around. And there have been instances in which some of our delving crews have also encountered Empire interests within the ruins themselves, or whatever else lives beneath. And there are many things, both that have taken up home within the ruins below, or things that still strangely survive from this time a millennia ago that stalk the lightless tunnels beneath. We, we, we killed a giant baby. <laughs> Lots of arms. It's not just so the many. baby. It was a bit more than that. It was yes, giant. It, it was, and also other things besides the baby. It had no butt. Mostly baby. <laughs> and to, as your question earlier was asked, yeah, yes, I am interested here. How would I not be? Uh, there have been, in some of the early excavations, I don't know if you've encountered these as well, but there has been some iconography and some 
recovered notations of the Aeorin society that resemble a Luxon beacon. Things that resemble toying with Dunamis before we were even established. <gasps> so think Wait, of what? the possibilities of if Aeor at the time was unlocking the possibilities of Dunamensi before we even began to develop it ourselves, that would be an immense boon to the dynasty. What? Yeah. I mean, we've, we've seen some of the ruins, um, and it seems like a, a, a very alien sort of society. Did we see any evidence of, of, Lux, of Luxon or, or, or fate stuff? We don't know Luxon well enough, I don't think. You didn't encounter anything that caught your eye in that way. What evidence did you see, Essek? Um, similar symbols of, and you see he kind of rolls his fingers and you see the, he sends a very simple minor illusion of the uh, dodecahedron, the beacon. Counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not very sportsmanlike. <laughs> of the, the beacon there. It says that it, there has been some writing that we've uncovered that is of a beacon's design as well as discussions of magic in similar realms of what we, I myself, study. The beacon's design, as in these things were made by by man? I thought they were gifted by a I god or something. I do not believe that they are made by anyone but the Luxon. They are of the Luxon, but they've been around since the Luxon's been in Exandria, which is the beginning. So it is possible that there may be one or more beacons that they uncovered long before we did. And if that's the case, that brings the dynasty that much closer to bringing the Luxon together. So this is very much important. And these are only recent findings. Oh, Essek. <laughs> we have so much to catch you up on. Where to even begin? Does it start with we were fucking about on a volcano, or? It's also like, where does it potentially connect and where does it not? Yeah. I guess we as a group have to decide, are we just gonna spill uh, Give it all, all the beans? beans? Well, something... We love this guy, right? He's great. Even though he's done shitty things, just, just like, like He's done some real shitty things. Pretend pretend we like have you're not too, it's okay. <laughs> There's no one here who hasn't. There's no one here who isn't a little embarrassed by something. Yeah. Regardless, War crimes, meh. Regardless, something is going to happen here. Potentially, soon, something large. Your sabbatical is over. <laughs> so, long time ago, before the city crashed, <laughs> there was this group called the Somnovam. And they were, like, they thought they were smarter than everyone else, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they figured out what was happening, and they decided to save their section of the city. They said they were going to send it away to make it safe. The Cognos Award. I have, yes. I've read of such a place. In... So they succeeded, but what they ended up doing was sending that portion of the city to the Astral Sea, I think. Mm -hmm. And this city has been there for a thousand years, becoming something completely different. It's alive, it's, it's tortured, it's, it's just pure hatred and evil and has no desire but to devour everything. We have seen it, all of us, in vision. We've seen us. This whole time, I am deeply staring at every twitch that happens in his face. Not very subtly. <laughs> 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 Make an insight check. As we progress. That's an 18, so uh, 27. Okay. Ooh. He's listening intently still. There's a group of people, the Tomb Takers, mm. who desire to bring this portion of the city back to Exandria. For what purpose? They've been driven mad. They want to join. And they want to bring the madness. It's just madness. Power? Uh, it's got a hold The voices of... 
the voices can reach you. I don't know as well as Bo and Caleb what that is like, but... Are we going to put everything on the table? Not that part. <clears throat> Our understanding of this is rudimentary at best, but these tomb takers, this purple one we have mentioned, um, believes that he can achieve all his dreams. If he brings this city of dreamers back into the world, we think. Anyway, we have been uh, at odds with them for the past few weeks here in Isocross running around. Uh, They're seeking large crests. That's one of the things we sent away. These large gems that we believe were part of the construction of the city of Aeor. Threshold crests, you yes. mean? Yes. Our best guess is that uh, they will be used to somehow bring the city open back. Open a door, yeah. Do you, did, have you heard anything about the Nine Eyes? I do not, but from what you say, this, this city of dreams is a, a malevolent force, and they seek to bring it back, that is, that is a, a dire warning. So you're reading him on this. He's intently listening, and seems to be genuinely disturbed by the information that he's received. Okay. He's taking it in. He's very controlled, like he's used to listening and, and kind of, you know, his demeanor since you met him has been very constructed. It is very much an element that he instinctually puts forward, but even in that space, you could see him being very contemplative and trying to just take it all in and nod. We wouldn't have brought this to you if we didn't have to, and not for a lack of trust. You are a friend, but we understand how these sorts of problems weigh on you particularly, and... He puts his hand up. I've spent so much of my life focused on myself, my climb, all of my selfish needs. I've never really been trusted, and so I did not trust, and I never let anyone close. I have been clouded in my judgment many times through a lot of my life. When I, when you gave me trust, it gave me a perspective that was so agonizingly striking. It's so easy to see that I, I, I refuse to acknowledge it at first, even. I would be lying if I said that our paths crossing hasn't shaken me to the core. And I am appreciative. I'll inside check that. Go for it. <laughs> Hard to read. And I'm thankful for this perspective. But you do not owe me trust for what I've done. No, we we definitely don't. And we still don't really Good. trust you. Good. But maybe. Jester does. We have a chance for you to do something good for your home. Instead of hurt it. Something is going to happen here. We don't know what. Something almost definitely bad. Do you want to aid us here with these people coming to do what they're going to do? Whether or not I help you, there is a reckoning that will find me soon enough. I know that I know that I exist on borrowed time. My show's sightedness has had a far-reaching impacts that my selfishness prevented me from seeing. The 
so whatever I can do with the time that I do have, I will try. I am responsible for the people at this outpost, but I also wish to help in whatever way I can. If we succeed and we all, um, you know, destroy the Tomb Takers and Essek helps us and the world is saved, maybe we can take Essek with us and use that spell that you used on Veth and then we can change Essek into something else so that the assassins can find him and he'll live safely wherever he goes. That won't really help with the inside. You see him kind of smile and he's, since you've been here, Essek still, while challenged to hold eye contact with most of you, cannot make eye contact with Caleb. But as Caleb says that, the head sinks a bit with a nod. I appreciate the, uh, the insinuation. Anyway. Um, what can I do to help? Who did, who else knows this? What, what? what? You. You. you know this. Some members within the Cobalt Soul, but not enough. We were, uh, we had, we originally came here in the company of, well, oh boy. Oh, has Dagon arrived? Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god! Hey, you should tell your guards, if he hasn't already arrived, if a man comes on in on wheels, don't kill him. Very well. I, at that point, you start hearing some loud whistles outside. <gasps> And all of a sudden, you hear some other shouts. <laughs> Ow! Hey, we just killed a guy on a wheel! <laughs> As it kind of it lean, leans forward, and the door opens on its own, and he kind of rushes out. Oh no. And you see him glide out into the open space. Uh, we're hey, going right going after on? him. Hey, Woods! Are you going to. Bo! Yeah. I'm going to quickly finish my hot cocoa. You hope it's Dagon. <laughs> Let's we go. We haven't gotten our hot cocoa yet. I don't know. Oh, okay, good. Yet. No. You all dart no. out, and in the middle of the street, you can see there's a number of guards that have their weapons up, and there off to the side, you see Dagon there, cloak up, an Aurora Watch soldier in his lap with his arm around the back of the shoulder, <laughs> nice. and he's just holding up this letter and saying, I told you I was sent here by a friend. <laughs> don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot, he's with us. Sorry, sorry, communication. Essek puts his hands up well and yep. says, let the man go. It's all right. One of those soldiers goes, a lot of strange figures coming in today. <laughs> and Dagon lets go of the guard and kind of like gives him a shove off to the side. He stumbles a bit and writes himself and goes, all right, y'all need to tighten up the outside here because uh, it wasn't hard for me to get in here. It's not going to be hard for others. And you see some of the other, or our watch get a little like frustrated at the connotation. Essek. Not wrong. I don't expect yeah, this to happen, through. but if a Yeti named Gastoff shows up, also let him through. Just throwing that out there, too. <laughs> Four or five of the guards turn their heads at once, and Essie goes, Be mindful of the Yetis as well, but <laughs> any Yeti is probably okay. Okay. Do not listen. <laughs> <laughs> that goes, Well, uh, I came here to deliver a letter, but it seems you beat me here. Things got. Difficult. SB. Glad to see you alive. Fair enough. You as well. You as yeah. well. I take it you're the individual. Dagon under Thorn. We've only been through here a few times, but I don't think we have met. Some of the soldiers kind of look around and ask, he goes, Well, pleasure to make your acquaintance. Mutual friends makes us friends for now. Dagon, because you were behind us, um, did you manage to keep an eye on, I don't know, the five members of the party that was in hot pursuit? I went on the path you told me. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. Bit of a snowstorm, I had to keep my nose to the grindstone to get out here in time. Mm. So no, sorry. Essek, as a bit of warning, um, the northwestern corner of Aeor, this group that we've told you was on their way, they're meaning to exploit a hidden entrance into the city. Northwestern corner. I we don't know where it is, but if you have a scouting party or a perimeter guard that might stock up or see about that area, it 
could be a benefit. Yeah, yeah. I'll task a crew to go ahead and look for it. I do not recall, at least within my knowledge of such a place, but I'm certain there are many hidden entrances to the ruins all over the place. I'll do my best. We should have a week by our estimates, but we've been wrong before. They are very creative. And do you have detailed maps that we could take a look a look at about, you know, once you get down into Aeor, where what's the ruins... down there? Huh? Yeah, that... Yeah. We don't know what's down there. Oh, there's quite a bit down there. Um, I've only been in myself a bit, but we can go over that. I take it this individual is indeed a friend, or at least under your employ. Yes. Oh, Dagon? So. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And you are to be staying how long? And Dagon goes, oh, well, I was just here to relay a message. Um, I can head back. You know who we're expecting, so if you want to stay and help with that, we would be. You know, Essex. Yeah, if you're paying enough. He's a fantastic hand. He is, however, quite expensive, but I assure you, for the dynasty, it would be an investment well spent. <laughs> Make a persuasion check. I'm good at those. Come on, come on. Face 19. Yeah. yeah. Total of 19, or you're rolling Total of 19. Yeah. Total of 19. Essex kind of scratches his chin, looks over to one of the more well armored individuals. Speak with this individual, this uh, uh, Mr. Underthorn, and uh, test his skills a bit. See if perhaps there is use for another um, mercenary on the payroll. I take it you are not affiliated with any specific political interests? And it kind of gives a really tight, intense look onto Dagon and Dagnos. Look, friend, I roll wherever they pay me. <laughs> Awesome. He's the best. Very well. Kind of, you see, watch the other kind of more. Uh, you can already tell this is kind of one of the local captains or somebody of some authority here that ends up taking Dagon off, and they begin discussing. As it turns back to you, the rest of you. So, yes, there is a matter of looking into these ruins. You say you have some some time before these individuals come and chase you down? Hopefully. I think they're probably going to go to another ruin first. We can share what we know. Your brain will be of extreme use in this situation. Extreme. Very well. Can we uh, Tell get you back? About... You go ahead, Borgard. Just wanted to get out of the thoroughfare, get yeah. back into a quiet spot. Indeed, follow me. <clears throat> Thank you. You all head back into his chambers. The door closes. Caleb. Yes? I'll also say there's no. Caleb, you should, you should get naked. What to do? For, you should show for... him. Oh. Oh. You're talking about. We the, know about your diary, the... by the way. His dick. Do we know that you? You all. This is a very small room. Um. We've all seen it. <laughs> it's above average. Um. What are we talking about? <laughs> I'm losing track. What, <laughs> what are we talking about? It's entirely, well. Let's reset. This is important. Let's reset. Potion. Potion show us too. Let's return well, to, uh, let's oh, return to some notes. Let's the, the purple one. Reset. Okay. So, uh, this individual goes by the name of Lucian. We traveled with him in the past. He was a different person at that time. Hard to explain. Um, it's almost like it's almost like the beacons, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> one soul can jump from one body to another. Yeah. There's always been a striking, striking resemblance, but something bastardized about it. Hmm. Doesn't feel as charming or as warm or as welcoming. <clears throat> this individual. There are so many things to talk about. One, he makes all things magical wilt like a flower in flame. You need to be very careful. You need to stay spaced out when you are dealing with uh, he and his uh, cohorts if you run into them. Do not clump up. Um, he can see through illusions. He can, can see, see just distance. about anything. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep! Um. He drained the life force out of me. He says he dreams while he's awake. <clears throat> He can be blinded, many of us. So, uh, yeah. we've been 
Oh, go ahead. Yeah, we, we relay all the effects. Yeah, the damage, damage, right, right. Damage, yeah. Et cetera. He, he's getting notice, noticeably more and more anxious with each progressive element you stack onto the description of this dangerous entity. Telepathically communicated. Yeah. Giving a description. And this yeah. individual. He had like a John Deere hat and a <laughs> uh, red Ford, red Ford pickup. All right, Sorry, Ducky. <laughs> and yeah. and this, this Lucian, this Lucian is just a pawn in, in releasing this, this Aorin called, Somnovum. He calls himself the Nonagon. Connected to the Somnovum somehow, yeah. Yeah. empowered by them, and also um, granted powers by the knowledge of them that manifest in, in eyes tattooed across his body that have... And you feel confident that this is not beyond you. Oh. Or us. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no, it's beyond us. That's yeah. why we're here. We, we need your help. No idea. Unless I do not know if I could offer enough so help that you need. I so powerful. No, to be clear, you are f as fucked as we are. Let's let's be clear. Numbers help. Preparation helps. Distance yes. helps. And the element of uh, we're on defense now, right? If we get into Aeor, yes. possibly even find their secret entrance, Correct. we could set up some sort of um, perimeter or, or, or defensive. Uh, Do you know where they're going within yeah. the ruins? I'm assuming no. they're going to where, what was it called? The city area? Oh, well, that area is gone. Yeah, but generally, where, would it would, yeah. would have been the the um, Cognosa the Cognosa Ward. Ward? Yeah, they needed two lodestones, two of which we've recovered from previous arche archaeological sites. We got rid of one, so they're going to receive a second now from another on a map. I could show you. They took ours. They took a lot of our stuff. They stole our bags. We're assuming they need at least the two, possibly a third, located here or more to. Summon this living city. You have well, two. The, hmm. Threshold crests are. There, there is a, a ritualistic binding of such objects to a location. Um, they are rare, and they are generally relics from long ago. Uh, those that exist still have largely been broken and separated across Exandria, but to have ones that. Uh, were originally within Aeor, were meant to translocate the city throughout Exandria. Um, oh boy. But they must be bound to something to bring it through. It is not used to open a portal or a doorway of some kind. You're saying it was a physical structure or look. Meaning if they are going to use these to bring the city back, they have to bring these stones to the city first. Okay. And that means if they are trying to bring these stones to the city, they're looking for something within these ruins that'll bring them to it. It could be where this, where this other district is no longer, or it could be something else in the ruins that is just a powerful means of traversing to the astral plane, like you say. If we do not have this information, we're shooting in the dark. Do you have anyone on, on the... Um on your side that has it done extensive explorations of the ruins? Extensive means but a portion. I'm telling you, there are miles and miles and miles of ruins below us, and only but a small percentage has been even remotely charted. I got what you said the first time. I just want to make sure Veth has it. You're saying that <laughs> it sounds as if they are trying to take themselves to the city rather than bringing the city here. Correct. They want well, to carry a couple of to, stones. To there. take the stones to it, to then use the stones to bring it back. If that is yeah. their ultimate purpose, the stones cannot open a doorway. They can just anchor something and pull it through. Such cities as like Singorn in Taldore use this to traverse the plains. In a similar way, this would have to take the stones to the city to bring it back. And you don't know. The city. How the fuck do you get to the Astral Sea? Well, we. We've it. done it on purpose. Kind we got yeah, sent, we no, sent we things through there a mouth purpose. and got there. Yeah, accidentally. We, we, we banished a, a we banished a creature to the yeah. astral sea. But Lucian, yeah. I have, randomly, I have the ability to yeah. to shift to another plane. And I'm certain there are a number of locations within these ruins that, at least at one point, did the same purpose. It's just finding one or numerous 
of these specific locations within the ruins that are still capable of doing this. Which means we can either dig around here till we find one, or you can bring us to a random location in a very random place. Well, that we'll seems move. very bad. I... I feel like we need more information or we need more help. More knowledgeable individuals. Who would know something the... about it? You know who would know <gasps> something about it? I cannot go back to the what? dynasty who? and I, I respectfully for the time being can say that there are I am worried that my influence is limited. Sure. You're getting boxed out by the Bright Queen? Well, there are rumors within the dynasty that someone has been working with the Empire from within and tensions are high between the houses. And to be honest, my involvement with all of you and some previous studies and connections has me on the list of possible inquiries. And of all those on that list, the only one I know to truly be the one they're seeking for is myself, so. Well, if we do this right, you might get in better standing. Hero. That's a little consolation, I'm sorry. You no. have a shit situation. <laughs> I put myself here. There is no one to blame but myself. But I appreciate that. What were you going to say? Good oh, thing. I was oh. going to say we could ask Vess, but <laughs> she's got taken. Yes, but, but there might be someone else uh, on the... Taldori counts. <laughs> on the Empire side that we're not thinking of, or, or I, I don't think Vess confided in anyone, but- Where did we put Halas's body? Is he also in the bag of holding? No. Halas is in the, is in the folding halls. Yeah. In Correct. the yeah. prison. I, I accidentally forgot that part and we briefly role-played incinerating the body, but uh, going back into the actual lore elements, the body was left in the halls. We dumped him in we the prison him. there. Yeah. Yes. And we left him there, right? But like, where, 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 where yeah. not died. We have the, briefly. Right. We have That's the Cobalt right. Soul, we have Allura. If, have... if these Luxon beacons are somehow related to the, the city, to the Somnovum, then it stands to reason that the folks in the Empire who have done the most study of, of the Luxon beacons oh, no. might know something about this place and where to find them here. I'm talking about like Trent. 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 Yeah. You want us to go to the worst people? No, I want us to go to the people who know him closest. Yep. Eudwulf and Astrid. There is a very visceral reaction when you mention Trent in Essex's face. Kind of a. We know. Yeah, he's the worst. Isn't he's, he? I mean, unless you were, are you friends with him or something? Your dealings you? with him. We have had dealings, yes. Like they like it back was channels, Trent. back channels. It was Trent. I mean, I figured it out, but for Ford's benefit, can you just explain your relationship to Trent? <clears throat> Briefly, <laughs> Ludinus was my main contact in the delivery of the beacon and the sharing of information. But at times in which Ludinus was not available, Trent was sent as his. Envoy. And um, if you think I'm not worth trusting, do not trust yeah, we any that. one of the assembly, but definitely not Ichthon. Oh, oh yeah, we're, we're with you on that one. Ludinus is Isn't still alive, correct? Yeah. yeah. Trent is still alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is anyone not alive? I mean. <laughs> Oh, should I have not told him? No, well, we need to. That's that's important. I think it's okay because mm -hmm. Ludinus and Vess hated each other. What happened to Vesterogna? Vesterogna was killed by Lucian by himself, sort with of barely lifting watch. a finger while we slept. Yeah, it happened he real fast. He snuck into her room while we were. Happened. See him getting real nervous now. 
Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Shit's bad. So <laughs> we had her body until so, we stole it. We're here now, so you you can't get I, out of this. They're I for you I apologize like, for my like six my nerves. So um, yeah. is that Coco done? <laughs> Hmm? Oh. It feels like a long time for the Could cocoa. I please, do you have any cocoa? <laughs> do I have a cocoa? It's been a you while. You want some whiskey in that cocoa? Certainly. Okay. Actually, I has take the cocoa out. been delivered yet? Uh, <laughs> you can go and check outside. I'll go find. Oh, yeah. You, Somebody's you, knocking on the silent. Right. Door, we'll we'll say for the sake of that point, someone's like, Coco? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Put out here for 20 minutes. And Jessica goes, So, um. Oh. So, you were traveling with a member of the assembly who was then killed in your presence, whose body you lost, who was last known to be in your proximity. For a while. Mm -hmm. And you've then come to me. Mm -hmm. We're aware. But, but we left a real good note that said she was, um... <clears throat> He starts looking around the room real nervously, like glancing out. You see him like put his hand across the way, his eyes flash for a second, he's just glancing around so, the chamber. Do you see any little orbs? Because Lucian spies on us a lot. I've done that already, we're okay. <laughs> We've been doing it since She was payment. part of the cult. He just chugs the whiskey chocolate. <laughs> she was also part of the Nonagon cult. And she, she is was, with she Lucian now. I mean, Essek already said that you are nervous that threads are going to lead back to you, in for a penny, in for a pound. Oh. <gasps> Essek, do you have, do you have any knowledge with the beacons? Is there any way to pull a soul out of the body that's been sent into it? In what, in what way? You, you know how the beacon keeps the souls and then when the people are born, it gets sent into someone else, right? Yes. Is there a way to pull that soul back out? Uh, I mean, only through, uh, such magic is very powerful resurrection types. Mm. I, far from my understanding. Why? Well, Lucian said that he became the Nonagon. He, he read a book and it opened up this, this pathway in his mind and the Nonagon overtook him, right? He was killed and born again as our friend, Molly, who, who, who was with us for a while. Molly died and then Lucian's fellow tomb takers found him and brought him back to life. I know it's very complicated, but they, they brought the soul back into, into the body. If we can get it back out, then he'll lose his power, then they'll have to find someone else to be the Nonagon. I don't know. So you're asking if it's possible to pull this soul out of Lucian? Yes. Not in any way that I know beyond the old-fashioned way. Mm -hmm. Or... The new family. Pulling the soul out of just the form, if it's still somewhere dormant inside of Lucian. Not him, but someone else. It's possible. What if when we kill Lucian, we have to have a beacon right by it so the soul gets sucked into the beacon and then he'll be trapped in there? Well, the beacon only pulls souls that have been consecuted. Oh. We don't know. Could have been. It could have been. We don't know. I wonder. We have been, been around a long time. We have been talking a long time about these, uh, <clears throat> all of these people in the city, these voices, millions of voices, and... Yeah. And as we traverse these ruins, we have also seen um, many people frozen in some sort of stasis, almost like oh. Vess in my little ball of ember. And there, there are many similarities between the architecture and structures that we have seen and the geometric, the mathematical um, uh, qualities of your artifacts. I wonder if if these beacons are, are some sort of device that either saved the people of Eor in that terrible moment, and they are now living in consecuted people today, or these millions of voices crying out in the Astral Sea. Uh-huh. Have homes that they're coming to. 
They're going to bring the city back, if, alive and mad. If these beacons are of an earlier time, and they are very advanced, obviously, far more advanced than we are from all that time ago. Maybe there was some sort of fail-safe for the people. And then they were dug up. And the dynasty rose. Huh. It is an interesting idea, though I would caution to keep it close to the chest. Such conversations might be considered sacrilege in some circles of the dynasty. So just... What do you think? I think there are a great many mysteries still with these beacons in their beginning. Um, there is too much, too much showing the Luxon's presence for me to deny any sort of connotation or connection, though I do not necessarily buy into the ideas of its divinity, or at least the religious constructs around it. I would... <laughs> But I do know that there are many powerful sites within these ruins. And I'd be curious to see what a beacon could accomplish in these spaces. And he, for the first time, really was making eye contact with you and says, if such an object were to be found and channeled and unlocked in ways that we have not even possibly considered, Think of the possibilities of how we could manipulate the fabric of time. Not just forwards. What was that last bit? Not just forwards. The ability to perhaps undo mistakes. But regardless, you likely have the eyes of the assembly upon you, and whether or not you meant to have brought them uncomfortably close to myself. Is it possible to put some distance between us for just a time? How much time? As much time as you need to prepare for whatever it is you're doing, and for myself to prepare for what I could possibly help with. You want us to go somewhere, or? Or I could leave. Are you talking about this outpost, or just a different section of it? I don't know. Um, you can have your space, if that's what you need. I understand. I We're going to have to make some very uncomfortable. Leave. I just, if we are going to go into these ruins, I feel like we should not be close together until we're ready to delve. Because any time we spend between in proximity means that either one of us is drawing danger to the other. How dangerous would it be to make our home out here? Well, uh, I can't make that home Okay, today. But maybe we um, access some provisions, restock our supplies, and Can we at least depart our ways. Is that what you would prefer? I should not leave this outpost. I have responsibilities here and people that rely on me. <sighs> can we stay for the night? Uh, yes, of course, of course you can stay for the night. I apologize. I'm just... And he looks genuinely mournful. He's like, I apologize. I am genuinely happy to see you. I wouldn't be. <laughs> Woof. I just, I worry we bring a lot of, a lot of danger upon each other. So I have no reservations with helping you. And I'm happy to 
to go into these ruins at your side. But until we cross that threshold, we are both targets. Well, it's fine. We've been living in a constant state of fear and death for, I don't know, as long as I can remember. Before you leave, though, um, on your side in the dynasty, if it's not the Bright Queen, I would ask one or two contacts that perhaps you do trust or do have some credit with. It would be nice to be able to answer some of these questions. I think we'll be making a list of people that we'll be checking in with before we delve, as you say. I fear my brother is stationed in Bazazan. It's too far from Rosona. Brother? Did we know you had a brother? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we did? <laughs> so? We do know. But I don't know if much help he would be in. He's too far from such places. And if they're not immediately available, at least as someone that we can use as a resourceful. Star-guide Uriah. Uriah Hythinos, perhaps. A goblin friend of mine, I believe they spoke to you when I was unable to reach out that day. Oh, yes. Um, they have returned to Rosona uh, to deliver reports. Mm. Asking around, they would be somebody I trust, one of the few. Okay. <sighs> this is good, Coco, thank you. Mm. <laughs> it's poisoned. <laughs> I sprinkled the dust of deliciousness into the <laughs> <laughs> And I put sovereign glue in it. Uh, and absinthe. <laughs> and yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, I know. Um, especially all in one sitting. But uh, look at it this way. It'll take your mind off things for a bit. One terrible danger totally replaced by another eminent one. You're, um. You certainly carve a unique destiny, don't you? <sighs> I apologize. My mind is a complicated swim these days. I'm sorry for a lot. A lot. I mean, do as, do as you will. I cannot tell you what to do. But we'll give some distance. But when you're ready, come find me. I'll be here. Maybe... Gather what resources you can. Other friends, perhaps. If we're going to... trek into the heart of these ruins, in hopes of waylaying or stopping this nonagon from bringing this nightmare over. I'm gonna need all the help we can get. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you. Let's, let's head out and figure our next move. Okay. Well, that has been a pleasurable experience. Thank you so much for coming by. The door opens up and the guard on the other side kind of turns. But yes, please take of our provisions, rest for the night, and continue your journey as necessary. Oh, okay. Should you need anything else, uh, you know where to find me. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, the door closes behind you. No, nope, I catch him by the forearm, oh. last one out, and say, <clears throat> just breathe. <sighs> just breathe that fresh air, mindful of the people about. Time. Time. <laughs> not weeks, not years. It takes time. Indeed. <coughs> God, you're a pro. I love watching your work. Wow. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
push up some of my pecs. My nips are just above. Okay, the okay. <laughs> this is good. Can you, for every word, like flex your pecs? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, Whoa. that's how it counts. Always wanted to do. That. Okay. I lost everything. <laughs> I know, man. They, they shake you out, well, don't they? They oh, shake it. That. Let's be fair. We were all hypnotized. I mean, let's be yeah. real. Okay, okay, okay. The rising sun. Everything I want to, to say has a lot of extra words, and I don't know it. Okay. Dad bod be damned. Right. <laughs> You may be under scrutiny. <laughs> Why are you so angry? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does tone translate? <laughs> 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 Why is she so mad at me? Let her shut. Iki Tong <laughs> could know about our involvement with you. He could be coming. <laughs> Maybe he can help. Though, where are you now? <laughs> I like to imagine he dropped his coffee as soon as that hit. <laughs> 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 oh. You are under scrutiny. <laughs> <laughs> the response comes rapidly. Oh, you down. This is. Challenging tidings. Um, then I cannot stay here long. I am at the outpost. If you still need my help, we should leave soon. Soon. And that's all you get. So we're like less than a day away. We'll be there pretty soon. How are you holding up? Don't freak out. Are you preparing for our big battle, though? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I have increased the guard, awaiting for your arrival. We have a lot to discuss. But the sight of you will be welcome. Hurry and be safe. You are led to the familiar exterior of Essex Chambers. And as you approach, the door kind of opens on its own. You step inside and you can see there, pacing back and forth, or would be pacing if he wasn't floating, <laughs> gliding back and forth. Essex turns. <sighs> Friends, please enter. I've got it from here. Thank you. As you all enter, the door closes behind as he kind of curls his hand towards him. And uh, with his other hand, he drifts out a chair, scooches forward, and he drifts down into the chair, kind of one leg crossed of the other. I'm glad you have traveled here safely. It is, uh, it is good to see your faces. So, what is the word? Are we in the chamber that had the, the <clears throat> invisible guards, or are we in his private chambers? No, you were in the chamber that has the invisible guards. I'm going to walk up and just place a hand on his shoulder. It's good to see you uh, as well. Mm. Is his shoulder his? Mm. Uh, it is. May we speak freely here? Mm -hmm. Is there something that should not be shared? <clears throat> Any of you speak under common? Yep. You hear Essex say, give me 10 minutes, please. Yep. Oh, right, not to us. <laughs> and you watch as two perched guards step out of the shadows nearby, descend and exit the chamber. It closes, he kind of waits a moment. Now we can speak freely. Well, things are considerably more complicated than when we left you, I'm afraid. This is my uh, look of surprise. Well, please explain these complications to me. So. 
oh, yes, oh, oh, we have an extra. Oh, I'm gonna pull out the extra necklace. Put it on. This will keep you from being scryed on. His eyes kind of flash in a familiar way that you've seen whenever Caleb has looked over any sort of magical item. And... Ah. Wonderful, thank you. And he goes and kind of places it over his neck and tucks it within his mantle. I'll get to that in a bit. Um, what else? Now, that may be useful in the days ahead of us. However, some damage may already have been done. Uh, in an effort to hide ourselves from the prying eyes of our uh, adversary here in Isocross, we traveled back to some of our homeland and uh, acquired quite a few of those for us. Mm. We wanted to take ourselves off the grid. Uh, however, we had run-ins with my folk, uh, Ikathon and his protégés. So we risked, risked much to get these, uh, but in doing so, there was uh, a confrontation. And I am fairly certain, because of his past dealings with you and my use of things I have learned with you and from my own noodling that he has put two and two together and um, I'm sorry, Isaac, I think that he may have got wise to you, so there is a very real chance that he has been. On that note, summon the sword, cast sea invisibility. Watching you already. Make perception check for me. 19. 19. Looking throughout the chamber, you feel pretty safe at the moment. Those prying eyes are at least not here at the moment. <clears throat> not at the moment. So what does that mean? That means we are still on a ticking clock. We still need to keep moving. We would still be very grateful for your aid if you wish to give it to us. But we have to assume that Trent and his, his closest, they could be showing up soon. And we had the prickler idea since we are facing something so uh, large and potentially beyond all of us even you that in these circumstances perhaps we should be negotiating an alliance a temporary one you know it does solve a couple problems. If he's involved, then it's not just you working with him, it's him working with you. It muddies the water for any information he feels the need to steal, spill. And uh, do we have those crystals? I do wish it was yes, that simple. I mean, I've been expecting my choices to catch up to me. Maybe not as soon as I had hoped, but as this is. Regardless, it is not safe for me to remain in this outpost. My presence here puts everyone else in danger, let alone myself. As this is not a, an unknown location, at least its existence. It would be safe for me to travel with you into this ruin, which I was preparing for. I do not trust working with that man. No. I understand if you need to, but I do not think that I could be part of that. I can find a place to go. I am capable of being separate when I need to be. And I understand if 
you find the capabilities of a member of the Assembly more useful given the dangers you face. And the choice is yours. Essek. We don't trust him either. The question is, one, do you trust us? And two, what we are talking about could potentially leave your home and mine in ashes. You have committed sins in your home. So have I. You talked about wanting to uh, make up for them. If the appropriate amount of ability and skill is not wrought against this enemy, it could spread across every inch of the world we know. I understand this is unpalatable. My question to you is do you want to protect your home? He leans back. I do, but I do not. I do not think you seek the right kind of aid. Not with this man. You mentioned that one of the assembly already fell under the spell of whatever this thing is, right? This Cognosa. True. Then why should someone as entrenched, as selfish, as dubious, as Ikathon, not wait to the right moment and take it for himself? He may very well do so. And we are prepared to deal with that. Are you? Yeah. And your judgment of him. Yes, he's corrupt. You and I know. Temptation is very real. And uh, your estimation of us is very good, but it is not as perfect as you think it is, and I pull off my coat and pull clothes down and show him the eye on my right shoulder. His eyes narrow as he looks and peers towards it with a, a curiosity and a worry. His brow furrows immediately. I want to check one thing. Is there even a hint of recognition? Let me make a perception check. Or sorry, an insight check. Good question. Fucking insight. Uh, no, I'm good. 24. 24. Recognition I wouldn't be what I'd say. Just unexpected processing. Okay. <clears throat> Forward. We're still good in here. Anything new? Good. I propose a side venture. In the middle of all of this, is to rid this world of that man. As circumstance provides. So this alliance you promote is intended to be a trap for him. It's a perk. If we fail in the coming days, none of this even matters, this conversation we're having. If we succeed, both our Homes still have their struggles with each other, their faults, their flaws. 
And here's a floor from our home. Make a persuasion check. Pick one. That mm. dice! That dice! Meteorite, meteorite. It failed you, it oh, failed no. you in a vital moment. It's super betrayed. Where? Where? Wow. 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 Shit. It is real. Wow. Essek thinks it over for a minute in quiet That's silence. Wow. Good squeeze. Burn it. I understand what you are proposing, and I see the logic in it. I do. But if I am to be honest, I am jealous of the bravery and confidence you have in such things. I am still a coward. Coward? You have dared much. I have done everything for myself. And when any of it came to bear, I have done everything I can to hide and flee. I am more than happy to go and put my life on the line for this cause. But there is something about that man and what he could bring upon me and those he... He may very well be coming anyway. But if you want to work with him, I may have to work independently. Maybe follow. I fear I would make this messier than you need to make it work. Does that make sense? I just... I'm not saying I leave you alone, but... You would have to work separately. Yes, of course. Of course it makes sense. There's no good answer to any of this. Absolutely not. We don't want you to be uneasy or unsettled. There'll be plenty of that to come. You must understand that we are trying to gather every able hand and... Of course, I, 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 I see the importance of that. I just know that I've also survived this long, weaving the intricacies of deceit like I have by knowing how best to keep myself out of the complications as best as I can. If you wish to work with him directly, I will not stop you, and I will help where I can, but it may be at a distance. Maybe he's got a point. Maybe Trent is more complicated than what it's worth well, across the board. Choice to make. Yes. Because Trent brings power and probably numbers, but of course he is untrustworthy. We all know that. Is there a way to find out if he actually has is following us here? If he knows where where we are? If we can find out if he's coming anyway. That certainly changes the territory. I could send a message to Astrid. <clears throat> Tell her to cough if they're following us. Oh, also I have a strange request. Mm. Would you mind terribly taking off your shirt? Mm. Excuse me? Well, what's the word? Uh, <laughs> gotten a bit paranoid, and I'd like to make sure that there's the correct number of eyeballs in this room, if you know what I mean. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> That's your strong suit. <laughs> Uh, I'll persuasion? give him advantage and say, Essek, if you take your shirt off, all of us will. 21. So you feel so safe and comfortable. I'll help that by taking off my glove, showing the back of my hand. I've already taken off my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no! Essek is very like... No! 
<laughs> if it puts you at ease and you watch as he kind of unsnaps some of the fasteners for his mantle and He's got just like a Ripley stripper outfit that's just like Dudamancy! Sparkling stars! Jamie's got a gun! <laughs> Giant chest hat. Full on kill a kills it, I love it. Yeah. Um, no, he, he he takes his mantle off and kind of pulls the sides of the robe away, and you can see he has like an undershirt. It's like a little sleeveless undershirt, or like a, like a like a darker gray silk, um, and he begins to show like his arms and reveal. He's, he's like he's being modest with it, you know, kind of doing it in places, so he's not just like full on uh, bearing it all here. But he's giving a fairly thorough kind of back, glance. Back and head is a is a is a big one too. He kind of drops it in the back a bit and. Shows the, his hair's pretty short in the back, so it's pretty easy to see. I, I appreciate that. We're, of course, I understand. We all appreciate that, that's it. This is a thing we're learning to do every day. <laughs> Fastens the mantle back on. Well, we should prepare to at least explore the ruins shortly. We do have a decision to make on yeah. our end. Of course. Do what you need to do to feel certain in your choices. Let me know one way or the other. I will aid you however I can, regardless. It will just inform how close. If we forego trying to negotiate with him, can you come with us? Of course, I was preparing to. Okay. And uh, is is Dagon still around? <laughs> or uh, he? <laughs> Dagon, along with a number of guards, have been sent to watch the outskirts of the entrance you had mentioned. Thank you. That's so. how, that's how girls do it, right? <laughs> You just, they just roll it. <laughs> <laughs> just make a song. All right. I think that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, however, ask some semblance of haste because these circumstances do put a time limit beyond just. The individual you are racing, but the knowledge that Master Rikithan has. Um, I'll be here if you need me. I'm going to begin to prepare for a journey either way. Spend some time Spend with a little time, yeah, with the... Uh... Yes, I will do that as well. That'll Thank you. Thank you. Can we stay here for a little bit? Just finish our conversation? Certainly. Of course. And <laughs> he drifts out of his chair and kind of glides around and through the door and leaves you to your devices in the room. Right now. Essek know that. Oh. Uh, who is it? Yeah, hello. It's Essek. Oh, oh. Come hey, in. come in. Come, in. come into your Wait, room. Wait, we're naked. <laughs> the door opens, stops, and slowly opens. <laughs> <clears throat> the door opens the rest of its way on its own. You see he's wearing like his heavy cloak with like the kind of like heavy fur trim around the side for the cold weather. Dope. He has a, a pouch that's kind of over his shoulder tucked underneath. Shoulder. He has a uh, uh, an orb that's kind of affixed to his side that he kind of just lifts up and it drifts above his hand. And you watch as it kind of warms up a bit and kind of creates this radius of warmth around. Ooh. Goes, I have what I need. Are you all ready to go? I think so. As ready as we're going to be, yeah. All right. Have you decided? Yes, Isaac, we are going to stick with you. We feel we can trust you more than my old teacher. Also, that guy, he can't float. You're not wrong. You see, like, when you say the word trust, it's simultaneously like seeing a, like a small hit to the heart and whatever icy bit that cracked kind of melts away for a minute. Like there's a moment of him hearing the word and letting it wash over him almost. I'm thankful for the trust you put in me and I hope to make this up to you. Anyway, I'm <clears throat> but it's such discussions, shall we? Yeah. Essek, do you still have men stationed at that entrance that we told you about before we left? I do. I have seven men and uh, that's Dagon. Oh, cool. 
Perfect. Can, can they, do they have the ability to communicate with you telepathically or send a message? No, but I can send them a message. When was the last time you checked in with them? Uh, that would be this morning. Oh, great. Everything okay? So far, so good, yes. But they're, if, they're growing a bit bored up there, but, you know, that's part of the job. If, if there's any danger, there's no way of them reaching out to you, though. Um, unfortunately, no. Okay. These men, um, <laughs> are they fighters? Do they have arcane abilities as well? Uh, they are not. Based on specifically what you told me, they are trained rangers, combatants, um, individuals that are now ready to use the environment to their advantage. They're good at hiding? Yeah. They are extremely good at hiding. Okay, that's Have they good. been hiding while they patrol this, or have they been openly standing guard? I would assume they have been hiding. That is what their specialty is. And hiding by physical means, <laughs> blending into their environment, not yes. using. Good. That might Probably help. Probably will be enough. We're yeah. dealing with I don't somebody think he has very good at seeing. Um, they do have a means of communicating in an emergency. That would be, <clears throat> yes, a... Okay. Uh, a flare stone, but since they are not practitioners of magic, they do not have that cool. capability. Oh, that's, fine. No, that's good. How uh, how far away is the entrance? Uh, it's um, that's a part of a day's travel from here. Oh, okay. Uh, we m see how the weather holds up, but we hope to, if we march on, a heavy march, we will arrive by or just past sundown. Otherwise, we will make camp and then arrive first thing in the morning. Okay. Let's go then. Yes. I'll need one more rest before anything happens, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Ninety-nine. You're almost fulfilling your number. <laughs> and he drifts out into the cold, open air of the day. Dagon makes nine, bitch. Yeah, he does. Mm. We'll follow. All right. As you step out, you can see the guard that has been stationed within this outpost has been doubled since your arrival, likely placed at the knowledge of Trent's possible arrival. But they all see you off, giving a respectful chest and hand bow towards Essek and you as you make your way beyond the outpost and back onto the familiar white, snow-covered, icy plains of the valley cresting into the bowl that is the ruin of Aeor. Oh my god. Travel. And even just a short distance out into it, Essek looks back and glancing at the horizon towards the space you're headed. We are kind of um, out in the open in a very clear day against the white of the snow. If there is some way we could be a little more um, not a beacon for dangerous creatures to find us. Uh, I could try and give us a, a form like the rangers of the outpost with white cloaks to maybe blend in a bit, unless you have some other things to help An Alpine with. look? I mean, I'm already wearing white, but Fair enough. I understand if you want to make everyone else do the same. I, yeah. I'm all right with it. Just wearing a lot of yeah. black against the white can be a yes, bit. Yes, uh, I, I stand you. out quite a bit. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I would take one. Winter mode, activate. Ching! Oh. You, you're the one activating it. I, 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 I can't. I just made sounds, didn't we? You did, all of them. Oh. And pose, hit a pose. Cool. It takes a moment for me to cast the spells. Uh, so. Okay, they'll okay. Get just oh. say a little like. And right as you finish that, he finishes <laughs> casting the spell. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Try and jump into your pose in time. But each of you then take on the, the, the attire. While still yourselves, the attire of the uh, outpost rangers of the Kryn, you could see the kind of light gray uh, leather armor and the white heavy furred cloaks and hoods over you that drop behind and for the most part allow you visually an easier way to blend in the environment as you move forward. Asik, can you make mine look like it has just a little bee, like one teeny little bee, <laughs> like right here? The spell is already sent, I can't oh. make calculations, I am sorry. Okay. Can you burn another spell slot to redo it? I certainly can. No, no, no. 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 Don't, don't, don't do that, Essek. I don't want you to waste the spell. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> Just don't. 
jester could be life or death. Don't do we don't it. need don't to do reverse it. psychology our ally. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> 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 It's not very good. Uh, 13! No. <laughs> uh, but he does mark that spell off there. All right. <clears throat> Where are we going? Oh, we were going to the entrance, yeah? The, yeah, the yeah, this real and the main entrance? Or the secret entrance, the one that Lucian knows about. Speaking of Lucian! Hmm. Oh, my thing? Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... <laughs> forgot about the mark that he put on my chest. Mm. What? Wild. Yes, this is <laughs> this is my fault. <laughs> I say that now. You Ford or Travis? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, we fought with Lucian, and when he struck me, uh, there was a, a blood like brand sigil that seared itself onto my chest, mm. and um. I have a feeling that it allows him to, you know, might be able to see where I am, or at least know my location. Uh, I should probably try and get it removed. We tried! We tried, Essek. But to no avail. But you're so powerful. You don't have to burn another spell slot or anything. You don't have to. I don't, <laughs> I don't want you to have to. Make a persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Can I give him advantage? <laughs> you cannot. Not with the last one. <laughs> 20. Oh! <laughs> He goes, I would assume that perhaps these devices that you acquired would be enough, but I do not also understand the ins and outs of strange blood magic like you say that they utilize. Hemocraft is something a bit beyond my realm of expertise, um, but I can certainly give it a shot. Can we pretend, I mean, if we try to remove our clothes, does it still look like we're wearing, could I be completely naked and still look like I'm wearing clothes? Be very I, it, with the spell you just gave us, you could. Why would you want to? No, I'm just saying. Can you even see? Can can we show Essek the brand? Or what do you mean this? <laughs> yeah, but it still looks like you're wearing a vest now. <laughs> well, it thing. does. I can see vaguely through the illusion, knowing that it is an illusion. Oh, okay, cool. So I would not recommend you disrobing. All right. <laughs> I no. put my clothes back on. <laughs> don't, don't disrobe. Don't. Don't. Don't do it. Man, I saw Christ got weird. Um, he kind of, as you're all walking, as this conversation's happening, uh, he drifts over in your direction and kind of glancing just past the bear of the illusion, can see ever so faintly the dull orange glow of the, the sigil that's burned into your chest. He's going to attempt to dispel magic it. Oh, can, um, oh. It's that easy? Nope. I can't like guidance him or anything, can I? Uh, for that, you could. Can I say? Because I was going to say, and then I was like, does that work on this? It so might. Was, I'm going to try to guidance you. Okay, well, the first one failed. Okay. And he goes, he watches, he waves his hands, and there's a little bit of that, that soft impact, like a warm wind just kind of taps your chest. And he goes, Okay, he's going to attempt it again. What'd you add? I mean, it's a it, uh, it's a D four. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm rolling it. That didn't help. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh no, I see. <laughs> he goes. I could continue to try. No, no, no. You've been most gracious. I'm sure, I'm sure it's no big deal. Besides, we need you at semi-full strength now for anything that may show up. If for some reason we encounter no sort of trouble or danger tonight, perhaps before we all rest and maybe we can try again. I understand. I'm just, if, if we are certain that this uh, seal of Hemocraft is protected by this magic, then there is no need to worry. But if our whole idea is to... Uh, sneak? To sneak from this individual and not be... Well... What kind of magic are you doing to try to break it? I'm attempting to dispel it. And it is receptive, but I... Maybe it is indeed my lack of experience with Hemocraft, but I'm not... I could attempt Does a more powerful... Try it? I could try it again. I'm going to try it again. Guide yourself. I can't guide myself. I can guide you. Thank you. Okay, you're attempting to? 
Should I try it? I, I wish... Can I ask Essek how powerful his dispel is? <laughs> what are you trying it at? <laughs> like, were you doing it at third level? I was doing it to the basic level. Okay, okay, Certainly I'm gonna it's... try one level up then. <laughs> All right. See if that works. So right. fourth level. Fourth level with dispel. Deep. With guidance. Mm -hmm. DC plus... T okay. All right. Roll good. I'm trying! It's only my life. <laughs> it's all of our lives, Lord. Yeah, but mostly mine. But mostly yours. Oh! No, 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 19! Plus a d4. That doesn't, that... Four! 23 plus whatever my modifier is. Oh, your modifier would be your wisdom modifier. Oh, I mean, wait, plus... DC, no, what am I doing? You're rolling a d20, you're adding your wisdom modifier. Yes. And the, whatever you rolled in the d4. So plus five. So 24 plus five is 29. Whoa. 23 plus five. 23 plus five, yeah. I was, 20. 23 plus five is 28. There we go. Um, you feel that same impact like you did with Essex, but it's heavier and actually kind of almost briefly wins you as you feel that same burning, searing sensation that you originally felt when it burned into your flesh. You you hear just so faintly around him this this like sizzling sound, and you instinctually kind of uh, you know feel your breath catch in your mouth as it almost hurts. You you're ready to make a pained sound, but it doesn't really hurt. You just kind of sensory recall the experience, then it fades and the light is gone and you can sense whatever anchor that brand held in your body dissipate. Mage hey. hand, slap him in the tip. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold out here. Right. It's even worse. Thank can you see, you. is it gone? Yeah. Are you sure? Can you see your dress? I can't see it. Uh, it's, it's gone. You did well. Yeah. Thank you. Lumbering beast over there, walking parallel to us. Doesn't I don't think they seem presence. to notice our presence yet. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> Should be good. Is it just walking parallel Should. to us in a different yeah. direction? Yeah, it doesn't Caduceus. seem the other direction. Uh, Show me your uh, best okay. snowman. Hmm? Show me your best snowman impression. <laughs> I've only seen, like, a few. I've only seen the ones you made, anyway. But it's good. I think we'll be all right. You. Huh? Hey, well, no, their faces looked better than that. I'm trying to... It, it's got Smile! The, there you go. <laughs> 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 All right, we can go. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You look like me. Uh, <laughs> traveling with you is not quite what I was expecting. We get that a lot. We try to keep it light. We've been on dark, the road yeah. for a long time. Uh, yeah. Speaking of dumb, I, we are real dumb. I, I'm appreciating the levity. <laughs> on we go. So. Continuing onward, you do not draw the attention of the what you recognize as you begin to make the distance. You can see more of the shape as the rest of the snow bank that was between the two of you begins to kind of no longer separate your vision from the body. It's a mammoth, in fact, a group of mammoths that were heading southward, um, which you know from well, you've taken the form a few times. Ah! Um, <laughs> and eventually, as we push forward. Caduceus, you see some of the exposed, broken stone structures that are pushing up. You can see a small cliff-like drop-off that begins to reveal itself a little ways ahead from the raised impact outer lip of this giant circular structure, and you start having that sense memory. You begin to recognize some of the terrain, and you gather that you're not too far from the location that the Wild Mother showed you, not but a week or so beforehand. We're very close. This is almost it. Are there tracks on the ground? Anything that's been here before? You can make a perception check or a survival check. I will make, just because I never... Oh, sorry, sorry, perception or investigation. I will definitely take perception. My god. <sighs> Fifteen. Can't really tell. I mean, there was recent snowfall across a lot of this region, so if there were any, they wouldn't be too recent. Anything that would be more than the previous night would likely have been covered by the fresh snow. Um, but so nothing catches your attention. Mm, all right. <coughs> we have any way of contacting the guards to let them know that we're almost here? I can reach out to them if you'd like. 
the ones back at, at home base? No, the ones at that are, the, uh, are about to run into. They gone. Dagon. Dagon. <laughs> Dagon. <laughs> I can, would you like me to reach out to my ranger contact or to Dagon or show you? Oh, um, I can do it. Oh, mm, you can do it. <laughs> Very well. He closes his eyes for a second. You watch as he brings his hands together and seems to pluck from the central place. And as he does, this long thread of slightly waving, kind of black purple energy comes out into a thin line. And as he holds it there, he says, My friends, the Mighty Nine and myself are quickly arriving upon the entrance. Please make yourselves known shortly. And as he speaks, you can see the line kind of wiggling, like it's actually picking up a wave Ooh, cool. of his voice and transitioning it through his sending spell. This is how he does it. Before he releases the tethers in the sides and they fade away like a spider thread on the wind. I'll watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Ours is like the mud road drifter version. <laughs> got a bit of copper wire here. Hey, I got some natty lights, I'm headed your way. <laughs> natty light. <laughs> 30 keys. Tr you... Trucker Mage is my favorite archetype of D&D character. <laughs> Pretty good. But you were doing sending. You weren't Arcane doing, catheter. You weren't doing message, you were doing sending. That was sending. Okay. Oh boy. I can't believe I caught that. Mm -hmm. oh. Very well. Keep your eyes peeled. There should be a notification. At that moment, you see Caduceus, uh, Beauregard, and Caleb. What looks to be some sort of projectile kind of fly up into the air in the direction you guys were traveling. It arcs upward and behind it, you can see this almost like red ribbon that's wiggling behind it. A, a audioless, quick visual flare like cue. Yeah. You all kind of turn over and look that direction as it goes, ah, I believe these are our uh, compatriots. You do notice that the arrow was thrown quite a ways past where this cliff face descends downward. As you all kind of creep up to the edge, you can see it's almost like whatever impacted here to create this valley-like crater that is the ruin of Eor, as the city crashed in, the stone on the outskirts of it splintered upward, and that's where the edge of this cliff drops off. And as you kind of glance towards the edge and see the rugged exterior of it, it's a it's a miniature mountain range created from that impact that comes to an abrupt and scraggly end. Probably about a good 85 to 100 feet to the closest base of it there. We going, are we, are we, we going to go down? down to get there? I would assume so. I mean, you're the one who knows where the entrance is. Do we have to go down to get there? Yes, you do. Yeah, we have to go down. <laughs> you're saying you're saying an 80-ish foot drop from the lip of this. Cliff. Correct. As as you walk to the very edge, it's kind of lifting up almost, and then you peer over the edge and see the drop up before it hits like some sheer. snow and ice. Yeah, it's 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 mostly sheer, but elements of it do stick out. But there's no other really platform-like places to stop. Where are the stairs? Make a perception check. Yep. No, I'm not going to. Okay. <clears throat> Do you think there's stairs? No. I'm gonna look for stairs. Make perception check. Assist. Okay. If if she can't find stairs, should we come up with a different uh, option? We could also look for an elevator. Uh huh. Sure. Sure. Sixteen. A dumb waiter. A dumb waiter. Sure. Sixteen. Uh, there are no stairs. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. fair. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, should we climb down or feather fall down? Or we can just. <laughs> <laughs> You push Bo off the edge. Well, she'll be fine. Like, I know. She can go see. Yeah. <laughs> Double guns. <laughs> Double guns. How many people can we feather? I got this from years of training. Yeah. <laughs> uh, between Caleb and I, we could feather fall all of us down. That takes a small spell. Yeah, or we could. Small. I can we only could get me and one other. I mean, or we can transform and get a few people down. That's a bigger spell, though. That's a bigger spell. Yeah. yeah. Hold on to that. We have our means of drifting carefully. Or we could try to climb. Well, you could try to climb. I'll be fine. Why don't you educate us? Oh yeah, you can drift. I right? can. Can, can you, you drift us? us? By the same means you were discussing, yes. Oh, with a feather fall yes. thing, yes, yes. Well, we could try to climb and save spells, and if then if we fall, then we'll use oh, feather good fall. Job. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's do that. That's yeah, good warm up. Save yeah. Get the blood yeah. moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go over and start to hang out the side and try to start climbing. All okay. right. 
but do we want to? Okay, yeah, split, in, split into two groups here. I'm already going down. Okay, <laughs> that's one group. But if if so, if someone in group one falls, all of group one has to fall. Yeah, who's in group one? So that I can use feather fall on all of us, because otherwise. I would just use it on the one who's falling, but and then the rest would have to keep climbing. So if someone falls, miss. everybody just drops. Yeah. So what's the what is the <laughs> the okay. code word is important? What's the word that is yeah. yelled that says "let go"? Let go. <laughs> yeah. I think scream. Uh, Those all are two different code. things: let go or scream. Yeah. We'll scream say we'll too. say the word scream. Okay. Scream. Okay. Scream. Okay. Won't you know, like, if we're um, not on the wall anymore? This is really Did steep, you, you guys. I start climbing down too. Okay. But... Well, Essek, you're with us. Do? Come for ease what? of use. The four of us. Yeah, I'll go. I'm. I'm going to climb as well. All of us are going. So, are there, are there two groups, or is it? I guess yeah. we're just going to kind of freeball it. <laughs> okay. No, no, this is a group. This is a group. <laughs> I'm taking care of you three. Uh, you've got us. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Probably could have dropped a rope to make this easier. Yeah, yeah, but ah, yeah. too late for that. That would have been a good idea. Yeah. We'll we'll be fine. Fine. All right. We would lose the rope. We can't get it from the. Oh, what well, you could. Okay, it's I fine. So if I could have yeah. the three of you make athletics checks for me, please. <laughs> okay. It should go well. Ding, 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 ding. 16. 23. 14. The three of you actually managed to find some decent hand and footholds as you continue down. Um, some areas are a bit slick and the rock tends to crumble a little bit in others, but you still manage to confidently find your way down. Partway in your descent, you have this shadow drift by as, as it just kind of drifts over the edge and just glides down past you like an elevator. And he just kind of looks over at you each as he <laughs> slowly descends to the bottom. Support wouldn't hurt. Not going to lie, that is pretty cool. As it, can I jump on your back? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Indy car. Yeah. Yeah. Full full Doppler effect on the way down. I'm sorry that would not work. Um, but you guys managed to come down safely. Uh, the rest of you, if you're following thereafter, yes. athletics checks, please. I'm just gonna do my cool, uh, dope monk shit and do what I did before. Take the back of my gauntlet, slam it in, and just kind of glide down the wall. Slow fall. Okay, so you're just taking the slow fall of it? Don't smile at us. Get out of here with that mess. <laughs> <laughs> Look how beautiful she looks when she's falling. <laughs> so graceful. Oh. Such ease. Right into the feather bed. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Derelict. <laughs> <laughs> what would be 28 points of bludgeoning damage? How much do you ignore? What, far more than that. <laughs> God, you don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Five he... times 14. Five times 14? Five times 14. Good to know. Five times. <laughs> I just have to make a bigger mountain next time. <laughs> Worked last campaign. Um, Not much. Roughly 45, 50 points. I mean, but still. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Yeah. You, th you, you, you grind down your gauntlet to the side before eventually kicking off and then landing poof, into the snow below. The rest of you rolled. 15. 25. 14. <laughs> this whole character was just to make up for the fish, wasn't it? 100%. I will jump off every cliff safely yeah. every time I get an opportunity. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> Respect that. Uh, okay. You all find yourselves at the base hey, of this cliff. We did safely. Good. We did good. Um, and you gather, glancing around, that it's maybe another 10 minute or so walk up along this crest line before you will come to the fold in the ice where the entrance you recall seeing <laughs> would be. It's about this time that you see a handful of figures begin to poke up over this little soft ridge, and you see one hand go up and go, Hey! <gasps> oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dragon! Not another NPC. Yay, yay, yay! At this oh, point, nice. the illusion that Essek had placed upon you dissipates amongst the group, revealing your true self, as you've made the journey past the white open expanse. And as, as it begins to glide in that direction, uh, the rest of the rangers that are immediately present, which is only four at the moment, begin to emerge to meet you partway. Do you come along with? Yeah. 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 All right. As you approach, they all begin to gather, kind of, you see them all keeping their eyes on the line uh, behind them, and Dag comes forward. 
Well, it's real good to see you. Everything going all right? No problems? Uh, all of the problems. No I mean, problems at all. You? I can't imagine. You managed to stay out of trouble and not drag any sort of ire or attention, so well done. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Stiff stock sarcasm went so cold. Look, I've only been with you for a few weeks, and you're already the most rambunctious pieces of shit I ever traveled with. It's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Rambunctious. Well, until We're these ones. Mm -hmm. He kind of points to the other guard, and they kind of laugh and go like, "He's," and I said, "Goes shh. He's a new hire. Be respectful." Oh, that, that goes. That's right. I'm a new hire. Be respectful. Hmm? Sorry, I forgot. I brought you these natty lights. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. <laughs> That's real stupid. <laughs> no, canon. Yeah, Not it's a, it's uncommon that. magical item. <laughs> uh, sorry. Have you found magical. the entrance? <laughs> well, and you see the, uh, the, the head ranger of this troop begins to speak up. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been, and Dagon kind of comes right and says, like, there hasn't really been uh, much of a signing beyond, and they both kind of stop and look at each other, and you can already see like there's a bit of competitive tension between these two mm -hmm. figures in the group. Or Dagon kind of grumbles and crosses his arms, and the first figure gives a nod. We've kept eyes around the space and have seen nothing out of the ordinary beyond the the normal and expected denizens of this uh, Aeorian expense in Isocross. Uh, we've looked for the individuals, but nothing as of yet, at least. Uh, unless they slipped our sight, which I highly doubt. And did you venture into the uh, space? No. You would not do that. You would not? I would have, but. But yeah. seeing the entrance. Inside check. You can inside check, yeah. <laughs> 13. 13. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Person in charge knows what he's talking about. He seems like he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good character. Yeah. character. Campaign three. Campaign three, <laughs> man. <laughs> Lord Kermit. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the ranger kind of addressed that question. He goes, um, our instructions were to keep a perimeter widely around the entrance that you had mentioned, but uh, to actually traverse them, we are not specialized in such dangerous arcana. <laughs> Dag knows, are a bunch of wusses! <laughs> Does that mean you want to come in with us, Dagon? Hell no! I'm not paid enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to keep a lookout while we go inside and scope things out? That's what I'm good at. Good. I hunt things, I keep an eye out, and get paid well for it. You've been here a while. Do you see, um, I don't know, ample opportunity for an ambush up here topside? Kind of looks around. I see an ample opportunity for an ambush anywhere I go. I like his optimism. Is it a flat area? I mean, other than the cliff that's nearby. Well, I mean, there's the, uh, what I think is the entrance you were talking about. Yeah. That's that's up against the cliff. It's oh, like the base okay. of it. So. Okay, that's and some something. You have a keen eye. We are expecting this place to be undiscovered country as of yet. Does what you've seen bear that out? The, uh, the head ranger goes, we were unaware of its location until it was given to us. Uh, so, to that extent, undiscovered, but you have discovered it, so thus, by the nature of its <laughs> definition, it is now discovered. Well, okay. Okay. Correct. Is this like that a star, so if we discover it, we give it a name? We, yes. This entrance? We yes. certainly do, that's how that, ha that's how that works. Sure. Yeah, that's right, Dagon's door. <laughs> That's what it is. I, I've actually got no problem to be. It's kind of nice. Renato's back door. Maybe. Ooh, well. um, we'll have to find that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the exit strategy. Oh, <laughs> there we go. That's that's not our passage to enter. Saw it on its way, and you just yeah. you cut me off. We should we should scope out the entrance because yeah. we're just guessing until we see what the lay of the land is like. And if we go up there, will you guys be able to, the gods to stay outside, will you guys be able to, like, cover our tracks and make it look like we haven't gone inside and nobody's been here? The head ranger goes, I think we can, and then Dan goes like, all right, now we get it. You, yeah, okay. No more. And will you be able to make contact with us should someone arrive, uh, you know, as a lookout does? 
He looks over towards the uh, the head range. Says, um, "We have quiet means of doing so. We've already shown that upon your arrival." Well, yeah, but how are you going to send an arrow into the entrance? Uh, what she means is, if we're, uh, we're underground and you're topside, can you communicate via arcane means to let us know that someone might be coming? And they kind of look at each other back and forth. Um, and they look at Essek, and Essek kind of goes. <laughs> And he leans over, and you watch as he puts his hands out. A small chest <laughs> apparates on the ground, semi-translucent, like it's made of shimmering glass. And he kind of plucks a finger up, and you see it open. And as he pulls inside, and pulls two stones from within, oh. and hands one over towards the head ranger, and goes, "Take care of this," and hands it to Dagon. Oh. Oh. It's like someone just got promoted. Oh, oh boy! Oh, in front of the whole team! Oh, oh shit! It's hot! It's hot. The other head ranger just kind of quietly bites his tongue. We will let you know as soon as anything catches our eye. Thank you. All right, now for Essex go. Every turn counts. <laughs> Essex seeing this go very poorly very quickly, kind of glancing about and sees you holding out the holy sword and just goes, I suppose you're the one to light them up. He's going to go ahead and bring his hands forward, and as he begins to to put his hands outward, you see this like image of a clock, almost made of ethereal energy, and on the face of it, you see this almost metallic image of you on it. And as he grabs it, he spins it and cranks it like a wheel. And as it does, you feel your body suddenly begin to surge with energy. Time begins to almost slow down Ooh, around you. Yeah. You are hasted. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Taste at the barbarian. Yeah. Dope. That's how it's done. I'll buy a ticket to that show. Uh huh. And uh, <clears throat> with that, he is going to move. And he's like, oh, ah. he does yeah. that and looks over and sees the guy and goes, like, well, um. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of drifts into the corner with his fists up, looking over towards uh, you, Caleb, and and kind of caduces around the corner. He's like, "Trust." <laughs> oh. All right. It's it's three undead giants and two librarians in the corner. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> All right. Add her into a pile of rotted bones as you withdraw and land next to it. <laughs> Destroyed. Caleb is pulling his coat off and walking up to the sloth and just sort of keeping it from walking away. Hey, fuck up that sloth! Hey. Not that fast. Don't touch the sloth. That's a good animal to choose. It's slow as shit. It's really good. Uh, Especially in heavy snow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should we just like chuck it? No. 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 Uh, Essex, can we um, can we call in some of your people and have them run it? Oh, I don't know. Twenty-five minutes away and leave it at the bottom of a, of another crevice. I think that can be arranged. He pulls into One his hour. pocket and pulls out the yeah. stone, and see, you hear him like mutter underneath it. It's an hour. It's polymorph. Oh, right, I do it all the time. Yeah. I would know. <laughs> okay, you're frozen. <laughs> Was that you? So Caleb, <laughs> while this is happening, Essek is next to you with the sending center in his hand, just going, all right. Interesting folk. <laughs> <laughs> kind of glancing past the hell of this thing happening over there. <laughs> We'll be here shortly. Okay. Which Essek heard you say about cold. Did you mention that? Mm, yes, I did, out loud. Um, Essek goes, <laughs> thankfully one of the uh, one of the cantrips he has is Ray of Frost. Oh, well. He goes, Shh, and he watches, he extends his finger, almost like a laser beam of bright blue, just kind of shh, carves across, and as it does, you watch as the mold grays and turns to dust where the blade hits. Well, that's one way to do it, I suppose. Own mold on our path ahead of us. Do we need um, Essek to? Or just kind of avoid it in ten foot. Yeah, he, he himself has kind of gathered his breath. He goes, "I, I am willing to uh, carve anything we see. Just point it out to me, and I have it at my disposal. This is a very rudimentary spell. You can, you can no. say cantrip. We understand magic. Yeah, cantrip." <laughs> 
escape the walks over and palms Essex like almost entire torso. Ah. Okay. He looks over Caduceus. I'm I'm aware. I'm just waiting for a moment like where you're back to normal, and it's just easier for me to do everybody. If you don't, holds out the jester. Yes, I understand. Put him down, Caleb. And if pats the finger and goes like, "You can put me down, Caleb, please." Well, that works too. Ah, he's like clutching it. He doesn't think clearly when he's an animal. Uh, evidently. You look really cool up there, though. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's a good look. Giant ape. This is great. Yeah. Right off. Okay. Yeah. All right. So as this is happening, Essek kind of walks into the tower and looks around. Yeah. Is that? This is quite impressive. Is this of your dawn design? Uh, yeah, I uh, spent uh, several months uh, tinkering on it. It's for for these chuckleheads. Look, though, this is uh, your influence pointing at the stained glass window <laughs> to Dunamancy. I'm happy to contribute to otherwise um, prominent Zemnian influence, but truth be told, the better elements of Zemnian architecture. Well, in the best of uh, all choices, uh, there would be less less walls between us in general. Hmm. Yeah. Someday, some century, maybe. Maybe. Thank you for coming with us this far. Yeah. We could all very well die tomorrow. Well, isn't that the truth of every day, though? Hmm. All right, well. Asik, what's your favorite food? Me? Yeah. Um, I don't believe anyone's ever asked me that question. You seem like a crepe person. Ooh. Mm. Interestingly enough, I'm... And I hope this does not sound strange. I'm a fan of simple soups. I would Stews. Yeah. Really? Stews. Okay. Like... Beef stew? A robust inclusion of all sorts of flavors and herbs, yes. Okay, sure. That sounds Doesn't fun. really go with the cakes and the waffles, Soup but cake? sure. Yeah, stew. Cake it's on going my way. To be a stew in <laughs> in bread bowls. Oh hell yeah! Mm. Stews for everyone. Oh, nice deep red wines so to go like with the stew. Pop, that sounds pop. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, now we know where to get them for Christmas. Nice mm. crispy bun. So continuing this path, it would not be long until you are creating Wait, your own yeah, permanent okay. demi-plane. Do you, do you fuck with that at all? <laughs> do you fuck with I, that? I would like to eventually uh, fuck with demi-planes, yes, but I'm still expanding my research. Yeah. Uh, we are pressed for time, so let me show you uh, one room in particular that you would appreciate. Hmm. Uh, Thanks, be uh, You don't have to say up, you just think it. It is fun to say, though. It's true. Up. Up. <laughs> uh, so we'll just continue to spiral up and, and pass by library, bedchambers, more bedchambers. This is where we eat. There's lots of pies. Uh, this area is complicated, and then, uh, I will mutter my few words of, uh, Zemnian to the entrance to the ninth floor and float him up into, uh, the chamber full of stars and possibility and illusion. Ah, indeed, I see the inspiration for this chamber is strongly worn on your sleeve. Already a quick student of Dunamancy, are you? I have taken your lessons to heart. You spoke once of intent. A lot of fortunes have changed since. What is your goal? Ultimately. Uh, uh, 
I think my priorities have mostly shifted since we uh, last spoke about things like this. I think what's going on right now is more important than my petty earthly grievances. Um, still very much uh, fascinated with and attracted to ability and uh, skill and it, it's not fashionable to say, but to power. Who doesn't feel the tug? Such a thing. But, uh, yeah, I said it knowing your reaction was going to be. I see you outside. <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter, though. There, there are bigger things than you and I. I think that's the key. The pursuit of magic, in the ways that we know it, in the ways that we've been disparately, but in some ways similarly raised and studied, at a certain point, it becomes about the self. It becomes about what I can do. It's impressive that you've deviated at your skill level. I just hope it holds. That's the key, isn't it? Because if you were to put the very thing that I have wondered about for so many years in front of me, I'm really not sure what my reaction would be. You're still very young. You've been around a while longer. A bit. I know what pursuits of the mysteries of magic can bring, good and bad. The fact that you can acknowledge this path gives me hope, but, well. The one thing that has stayed uh, true, though, uh, is that I, Well, I carry a lot of sins, hmm. like you do. Not anywhere like I do. Don't be so sure. Kind of looks down to catch your attention. I'm pretty sure, young man. Well, I'll take you at your word. Everything that I worked for for so many years was to atone. And I still want that. I'm just questioning if there is only one path to that atonement. I don't fool myself into thinking that I will uh, absolve myself of those things, but I think, I think that if I do enough, I can at least carry it more easily. You know what I mean? I think I do. Well. You know what a bunch of wizards in one place is? Fucking trouble. <laughs> or if nature and history has taught us anything, eventually, it's just one left. Come on, let's go down. <laughs> Food's ready! <laughs> <laughs> Fourth hour goes by without issue. I need to ask the group a thing. The door is shut, right? I thought it was open. The door should the be door, shut. The door is shut, yeah. Because I'm the you one drop opening it, it after the, if yeah. it's not. Do you need to 
rest though? Can you rest while washing? No, no. He doesn't get. I'm not going to be. This is the gamble. I'm not going to be at full at all. But everybody else has to be in the tower. But in fact, I'm not even at full hit points. Essek does get a full rest because, as an elf, he only needs four hours for a full night's sleep. Seriously? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Campaign. We, we all have to be elves. <laughs> <laughs> That's universally how elves are. Yeah, that's, mm, mm, that's, mm, why. Mm, that's why. So, so the door is shut. Sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. As you were. And the rest of you are in there, resting. Sleeping. Okay, so that's why you're counting the hours, because as it got full night sleep, and then we're gonna wake up at six hours and not get full night sleep. <laughs> But at hour five, <laughs> yeah, Essek, who's kind of like walking or not even walking, kind of drifting through the tower, pulls the stone out and kind of looks about the quiet space as the rest of you are sleeping. Um, all right, who, is anybody still up? Everyone else is sleeping? I mean, I, I imagine Ford and I probably fell asleep by the door and are nodding on and off right. and in and out. Essek drifts over <laughs> to you, Ford. Um, Ford. The rangers have had a sighting. A troop of five approaching. They're asking if they are to engage. Yes. What? <gasps> Engage. Oh no. He puts the stone away and gives you a very stoic nod. You cold hearted snake. Snake him away. If they are what you say they are, there is no way that that ranger troop is going to make a dent. No. So we know they're coming. Should we wake the others and prepare? Yes. Perhaps if they know the entrance is being watched, or was, they'll be more cautious, take more time. So you are intending to let them rest longer? As long as we can. Did Caleb set his alarm? Uh-oh. No. I'd have to go to sleep and wake up. And we gave up on me resting, so there was right. an alarm. It's just then? my cat looking for a Tetsuo explosion. Should we open the door? Let no, us... We... Okay. Because we know they're coming. Be at the ready, then. And he drifts to the left of the door, and kind of close to where you were resting and where you were setting up there, and just kind of crosses his arms. Still silence. You and Essek remain conscious, just kind of locked in eye contact, waiting, occasionally looking out over the rest of the troop. Oh yeah, we tried That's to dispel smart. it before, though, didn't we? We have help now. That's true. Essek might have a better idea of what to do. I'm well, pulling rocks, looking for loose rocks that. All right, so as you guys head back in the tunnel, Essex, like, yeah. well, uh, obviously I was extremely capable of dispelling that thing that was on your chest before. I did that, Essex. I realized that. That's okay. the point. I was being sucked. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. I just wanted to remind you. I appreciate that. But nevertheless, and you see as he starts like putting his hands out in front like this, just almost like he's, he's soft throwing objects forward, you watch his rock start. <laughs> Awesome. Coming out as he's like cool. plucking them as he pulls the gravity from them, kind of aiding you as you guys go along. As you crawl your way through that first batch, as it kind of glides through and then reaches out and pulls out something and kind of clutches it near his face. Uh, it's Dagen. 
Right. Yes, head back and let them know. Thank you. There are some rangers lost, many injured, but there are some survivors. That was their warning call to let us know that the tomb takers were coming. So, there's, they're okay? Some. Dagon seemed a little worse for wear, but he was speaking at least. Well, there's no choice but to go forward. Should we get the rest of them down here to help us? It might just be best for them to head back, relay the message. Okay. Yeah. Shh, Charlie, shh. Oh, this is Bo. Uh, I'm Caduceus. Just go around. I, I, hello, I'm Yasha. Beth. Caleb Woodhawkast. I'm Jester. Uh, Ford. I'm Charlie. Excellent. This is Essek. Essek. And Essek is back because I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> Good. He's smart. <laughs> <laughs> we need someone. Movie. Yeah, let's, yes. go. let's go. Yep. Well, lead on. Yeah, okay. We're head back to the road. <laughs> Jester carrying Charlie on her back, you all quietly begin to make your way to the exit of the amphitheater. Essex staying a safe 15 <laughs> feet behind before kind of brushing up next to you and going, uh, you do know about Teo, right? Uh, a decent amount. What are you alluding to? Well, many things were designed for warfare here, against the gods themselves. Just be careful of trusting anything at face value. I haven't done that in a very long time. You may live yet? Stay close. Caleb. I'll send a message upstairs. Caleb, uh, any progress? You almost done? You can reply well, to this good. message. That was a good chunk of time, right? I'm just wrapping up. So, as you're in there kind of collecting and preparing the spell, Essex kind of leaning against the wall, arms crossed. So, um... Oh. What is everyone's hope through this? Well, as I'm putting down stacks of Dunder Mifflin, almost like it's a pallet, and then also grabbing books that I did not even inspect and plopping them down in for inspection later. What do you mean, in this room, or do you mean down below? Down below. Six feet under the ground. I'm... Two. I just have a general sense of unease. I did not sleep well last night, and... the more I begin to see Beauregard, yourself. Return with these markings. I've only just recently learned to trust. It's hard to begin to mistrust so quickly. So I just need your assurance that you will be forthright should anything begin to change. Well, here's the thing. Stack, stack. I cannot guarantee you. I know what these do, or that I can handle what they might bring. But my friends down below will make sure that there is no harm come of it. I'm not going into this blind. I say it is worth the risk. If whatever is down there returns, your home, my home, is in question, so. Let me ask you this. Hmm? You carry this worry and weight that Master Rikathon gives chase as well, yes? Which is more important to you? That chase or this one? 
this one. Good. If we don't take care of this, we can't take care of that. I have a great many desires for my home. But they are uh, on the back burner, as they say. I understand. I only ask because I've seen great many prospective talents like yours grow unfocused in times of necessity and decisive action. curious about what's around you right now. I'm extremely curious. I'm taking in everything I can, but I also understand that if one is to keep their nose in a home, somebody else needs to be paying attention. I've also been around a lot longer than you have. I know how to curb these curiosities for the sake of what's directly ahead. I can sense a similar discomfort in some of your compatriots. Yes. Some things can wait. We've only touched the beginning of this. I can only assume that there is going to be many more intriguing mysteries played before us, but they are not what our goal is. If we survive all of this, then maybe we'll return, make a trip of it, but I just worry. Psst. Hey, this place is creeping me the fuck out. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that we split up with our party, but we should probably go. Wrapping up. You heard the woman? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Yasha. You're welcome. I'll hold the rope. All right. Please. We should uh, hold the rope from the other end, too, since this is the iffy rope. Oh, yeah. Yasha's got it, but... Yeah. I'll I... hold the other end, just in case he's... Also, Ford, hold on to my waist. Oh. Plant your feet. If somebody goes flying down, you know, it's gonna give us a lot of force. Okay. Oh. All right. Hold, hold a little tighter. Okay. Essek, <laughs> but I, so you hold the rope. Essek just kind of like gingerly places a hand on it, and just Mary Poppins down. Well, oh, shit. For the next bit. Uh, anything cool with the? Oh. More so than even when Essek pointed it out, the space here after that display. You can strongly sense the expended dunamis in this space, and you immediately begin to to tie the reasoning behind this effect and the acceleration of time, localized time. Mm. Oh. Wow! And Essek is like kneeled down at the purple gem and is like, "How are they doing this?" I've got a crazy idea. Uh huh. Oh, the 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 eyes. That would accelerate the eyes. Or, or oh yeah. yeah, it accelerates the rest. It's a long rest. It's not like reset. Darn, unless the green <clears throat> stone makes it go a different direction. I uh, kneel down next to us, like at the gem. It is difficult. There is so much to learn here. Pray there's time afterward. If there's time afterward, is there another? Green stone, or is it just the purple gem? What's the gem on the second tank? They're both purple. Okay. Okay. Right. Cool. Keep an eye out for teal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's, let's, uh... Oh yeah, did we take the armor? We took the armor. We took the what armor. Does it do? I, I, we don't know. We need to identify it. Does the armor seem magical? Do we know? You don't know. It has... You know, runes faint runes on, on edges of yeah. the, the plates, but that's all you know. Maybe we can identify it when we take that break. Yeah, right. I mean, it's 10 minutes, so. Yeah. You have to Let's decide now or later, it can be later. I mean, do we need to take a break if we're standing next to the rejuvenation chamber? We're taking a break to do what? To identify some armor? We're Maybe. taking a break eventually so that we can do the Heroes Feast. Hmm. Let's go a little further oh. then. Yeah, there's that. We'll go a little further. Only if we want to do it. No, that's true. I mean, I think well, it's wait. Good to have. I'm going to do it. Do what? I'm going in that chamber. Why? Do you need to heal? I'm curious to see if it uh, restores. Um... All your spell slots? Correct. Okay. If you want to try it. I guess this will answer that eyeballs long. question. All right. Yeah, okay. 
Maybe he'll get another one. Uh -huh. Ready? I'll try Ario. Well, yeah, I'll try Ario. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Up Two. To you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait, but the second one is is cracked. So, so is it? Yeah. The yeah. One's cracked. One is go cracked. in the first one. Go in the first one. No, no, no go in the second one. Let's slap it out a little. It's gonna race. be good. It's gonna be good. Up to you, fly. No, no, I'll go in the first one. I didn't. I don't remember it being described as cracked. Okay. Well, the first one is currently closed after Ford exited it. Oh. I'm gonna try and take has it a again. cool down time. Okay, so you wave the purple again. It opens again. Okay. Okay. I thought it in there. I'm sorry, I was nervous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. It's pretty rank. <laughs> <laughs> Smell my doo doo mancy! Doo doo mancy! Oh, I stepped in dunamis! <laughs> <laughs> it's coarse and it gets everywhere. Oh, oh god, god. Oh, please. Oh, that's what you're tasting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you step inside, mm -hmm. the door closes, and the gem kind of. Blinks twice and then goes dark. The door opens. I have to try the other one. Might be out of power. Uh, that one looks a little damaged. Might have to recharge. Okay. Well, worth a try. Does it have a fuel cell? Like a pearl or something? I don't know. Advanced technology. Just thinking of that. Uh, the gems seem to be some sort of. Whether it be a focus or is the the element of the rejuvenation, I don't know. It may take time for it to recharge. It might require a specific input. Mm. I don't know how much is the device or just the basis of this gem. I mean, it would stand a reason that if it works with time, then the thing that would charge it would be time. So maybe it just collects yeah, maybe it's time a and then in a fast. It's and then uses yeah. time. Yeah. And, yeah. And then. So it just will hold like. You would think that over the thousand years it would have charged a whole lot then. Well, I mean, you can. <laughs> sometimes you, you fill a bottle only as far as you, you know, can when fill you a bottle. You charge your phone. It's a bitch. <laughs> but yeah, like a like a like a <clears throat> water jug underneath a, a dripping, dripping. As you're having this conversation, oh, you watch as it kind of drift over to the second like damaged one. He gets down, looks closely at the purple gem. Ah. Caleb. Mm. Points at the gem. I can peer over his shoulder, and too. I see what he's referring to. You glance over towards it, and as he touches the back of your head and kind of pushes your head close to it, mm -hmm. and for a second you kind of resist as you glance in. The purple coloration begins to fade to the back, as instead you begin to see elements of space, drifting possibilities. It's almost like a a weaker, smaller replica beacon. of a beacon. Oh shit! Embedded in the device, right there. That's cool. This will do a lot for their religion. <laughs> and this was not. In the other, or it was, and it's gone dark. A similar gem is the other one, but that one's gone dark. Yeah. What do you do with this knowledge? I don't know. Should you take it? Yeah, you want to. Yeah, can you swap a do? Or we just take it. I'm not that badly. We should do it quickly because. We should do that. I'm not that badly. Turn it. You stand up a bit, see Essek puts his hand out and begins to concentrate his eyes, narrowing. As he does, you watch as the smooth, relatively untouched stone base of this glass tube device begin <laughs> to crack and crumble before you see it get pulled away and dragged under the ground behind, scattering the glass, breaking, and as opposed to shattering around you, being shunted off to the back side of the wall, scattering on the ground. He controlled the direction of it all smashing apart. Yeah. And as it all scatters across the way, it's just the base now where it's cracked. And as that all falls away, he turns his hand up. And as he does, it's almost like a an invisible hand digging into clay 
and lifting through as it sifts past the fingers. You see this, the rock lift and then crumble, and there in the center you see this diamond-shaped gem of like faint dark purple coloration that was now, now released. And he kind of lifts it and drifts it over into your hand. Don't you think you should hold on to this? This too, isn't there? I'm just struck by the enormity of what I'm holding in my fingers. Are you going to take the other one, Essek? If we have time. Won't that break the machine? Yeah, it might break the machine. Mm. Is that okay? I guess we're not we're leaving keep the machines. You can keep this one machine and keep that one as we go. Yes, okay. keep one intact. Yeah. You seem to be able to fire it I just it. fine. Actually, as this, I will save. I should have probably would have happened as you guys were all kind of prepping and doing this space. Um, as this was happening, Essek kind of you see him begin to cast something and then condense it into his hand and hand you the small bead. Another Veth. This is like a like a marble. And just goes, follow my lead. Follow your what? <sighs> lead. lead. Aim it when you want. Aim aim it? Oh giving my you a bullet. God. Just hands it to you. <laughs> giving you a dunamis <laughs> bullet. Real, yeah. To put in my thing? What? Just be cool. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just be cool. Be cool. Go with it. Go <laughs> with it. What am I supposed to do Take with it? Take the drug. <laughs> Take it. Aim, swallow it. Yeah. Aim and focus. Aim what? So, yep. top of the round. <laughs> Veth, you're up first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna strafe to my right, uh -huh. run to my right, and aim it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hold it up. <clears throat> Is anything happen? <laughs> Use your action to focus on it. Yeah. As you release, a ah! bolt of black lightning arcs out from it across the way towards the creature. It's a level four lightning bolt. Go ahead and roll oh, 96. Oh, cool. 96! Whoa! Go down. Okay. The, the path just continues, and there is a platform beneath you at. Lord, Lord, hmm. grab my hands. Four, six. You guys just go straight to nine? I zip past I, 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 Essek I, 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 and just showboat just a little bit. <laughs> I think the flyers can probably pull people out so they're falling I'll let them all the way to nine. Yeah, I'll kind of, I'll kind of, Australian <laughs> Shepherd, like. Essek has to fly on himself and begins to showboat as well. <laughs> oh, showboat. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> I go over to Beth and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, <laughs> like the electrons <laughs> of an atom, at you just have Kadu uh, sorry, uh, Caleb, oh, Ford, big. and Essek just kind of vuff, 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 flying around the slowly falling, uncontrolled mass of the rest of the Mighty Nine. <laughs> a little water ballet, don't mind us. Descending down deeper and deeper into the darkness of the remains of the Genesis world. I look, uh, I look to Essek and say, Unbelievable, isn't it? Except I don't say it, I accidentally just think it. He kind of... Like I said, it confirms some of my theories on both sides. If one could change the past. It's, uh... It's interesting. Chance to correct mistakes. It's alluring, regardless of how dangerous. Not enough to go on. Curious. Yes, 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 yes. Curious, Not enough though. to go on. Yes, uh, uh, I agree. I concur. Indeed. Uh, Indeed. How big is that logbook? Uh, from, from what you see, it's maybe about 50 pages. I take it. Okay. Perhaps if we uh, survive this, we can return and... And change the past? Exchange theories. Does that mean what I think it means? Is he coming 
haunt you. I think. What do you think it means? I think it's coming on to you. She hears. It's complicated. <gasps> Finishing Ford's go. That brings us to Essek. <gasps> oh yeah, Essek. Tricks, right? Help. <laughs> yeah. Essek is going to. <laughs> You're saying help? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, I guess it's more important that you keep everyone alive. He's going to go ahead and uh, wrap his hands kind of in an airspace and then put his uh, kind of clenched fingers forward and rush upward like that. And as he does, you feel this gust of wind as these sparkling kind of arcane wings appear on your back Ooh. and you have fly on you. Whoa! Whoa. Unicorn or are they purple unicorn sparkly wings? dunamancy wings? They're, They're purple like, sparkly dunamancy yes. wings. Yes! Um, so Still you do have it. fly cast on you. Oh, oh shit. He goth my little rolls a nine, so he's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he is going to take his movement. Oh, God. 15. <laughs> That's all he can do, because he's like wading through the water, and he's like, don't forget to return the favor! He can't float on the water? Expeditions mm. retreat mm-hmm. the spell that I He can't I float on the water with his like. His little it's it do, it's not like it doesn't quite spell. work like that. It, oh. it it gives him off of solid ground, but it doesn't put him over surfaces. It's got not it, a it, levitate yeah, type like, spell. Just forwards go. We don't want to be famous. There's now Essex. Essex is is you're holding on. It's like Come on. <sighs> don't worry. We've all got tricks up our sleeve. Okay, okay, okay. And he's in a bonus action cast Misty Step. There we go. Oh. Nice. There we go. That's and clutch. Vanish out. And appear right in the yeah. space where Ford was. Just kind of just glan- drifting off the ground, but a bit. Looks over, Jester. Let's make it quick. And then just glides into it and begins, just continues his gliding outward, almost like he just drifted into a fly. Okay. All right, who's investigating which? So you and Essek are investigating. The middle. Right there? The, the one with the bridge, yeah. Okay. Uh, each roll investigation separately. 28. Higher than him. Um, this building has a little more structure to it. Um, as you, you know, begin to peer and you see what Caduceus had kind of glanced in before and seen some of the furniture that is partially present, but kind of, you know, uh, Dolly-esque kind of melting at certain corners. And where it is, you can see the coloration begins to fade from the like hardwoods and you know polished surfaces to a kind of general ruddy skin tone with occasional bits of teeth poking through like it's a like an exposed gum um you can see stairs that progress upward and as you kind of make your way up they are similarly soft under the feet and getting to the second floor uh <laughs> there is a singular person kind of <gasps> sitting on a stool oh, in the center no. like looking at the corner, like in no, Blair Witch? No, currently just looking down Shut kind up. of at the <laughs> knees. Josh, tell us where you are. Uh, um, <clears throat> hello, uh, sorry, is this your, uh, is this your domicile? <laughs> it starts the same high-pitched scream in your direction. Right. And just Holds it. You all hear the scream. We go running. Screams like a bitch. Oh yeah. It's it's just staring at you, oh screaming and 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 Essex like. I, yeah. I. You... <laughs> <laughs> he flings a finger forward, and you watch as a bolt of flame kind of <laughs> hits and it ignites, and the screaming slowly withers as it burns away. And it's gone. And the screaming stops. <sighs> Still arrive in the window. Ha! Uh, is that you? Essek? Essek. Essek. W- was protecting me. From what? A th- another one of his strange denizens here. Um, the ones with the flapping tendrils and teeth? Not yet. We kind of uh, beat it to the punch. Best not to be um, leaving alarms here and there as we go. Yes? Very well. Carry on. Wow. Um, Essek? Essek. Can I give you a quick look-see? 
Because I think you, I think you failed a wisdom saving throw at one point. Okay. As it can. Um. Looks at his hands. I think I'm fine. Okay. Well. <laughs> Want to put on some clothes there, Yasha? Yeah. <laughs> no. He pulls up kind of the sleeves on his arm. Nothing there, and he turns around and kind of uh, pulls back the mantle, and on the right shoulder blade, you see a red eye. <gasps> Oops. If it does go bad, like, what, what does that mean? Yeah, I agree. Like, does that just get rid of this place? Like, would we all just disappear, or just, like, everything? <laughs> Answer that. Yeah. <laughs> Time I agree, I... though. I don't know. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm genuinely. That is I'm the risk genuine. that I'm presenting here. But we will have not have achieved a lot of the great things that we have as people through history, let alone together as friends, if we didn't take risks. Yeah. Uh, this is a short term jump, relatively speaking. Correct. We're not going to go back 500 years and undo all of history. No, I like worry it. about that. I just worry about, like, what if we just, like, end everything? Or end us. I can't really exactly. die. I'm more concerned about the fact that everything here just seems to splinter off into a bajillion different pathways to an infinity. So, I hope we all don't turn into st dust, is all I'm saying. Considering the options currently available, that actually seems like a relatively light way to go. I thought you were a clay. <laughs> I don't know how to put this, but we are currently on what is possibly the universe's largest cadaver. This is what I was born to do, is put this thing fucking down. <laughs> Let's end this shit, bro. <laughs> Thank you. No. Wow, I said a lot of words. I'm hearing a, a curse word. That's the first time I've heard you use it. Me too. <laughs> this place is getting to me. I think it's getting Beth? to all of us. You're the one with the kid. I know, I mean... I are we gonna die? Are we gonna, are we about to die? I don't think we're gonna die. No. I think we're gonna rest. I don't think it would destroy us. It, if things go wrong, it might take things a little strange. Artie will protect us. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, I guess that, that's reassuring. He's been killed several times and not, not die. Why can't I die? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Let's take it. get this thing out. Lose my bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure. Let's let's try to get a super fast rest with science. Yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Right now. <sighs> I swear to God, I like, fuck this up. Well, you wouldn't really be around to do anything after that. No, thing. nope. But it just my my essence will haunt you. True, no, the guidance. And I would deserve it. Like I deserve all the things that haunt me. Oh, that's it. Don't killer. offer me any solace. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're a horrible person. Horrible person. <laughs> and now that we've established it, let's help save the world. Actually, um, I have to do one thing very quickly. Um, uh, can I have one of those uh, um, uh, uh, residual crystals, please? Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. The shards? So, yes. Um, very quickly, I get down on the ground and um, I take off, uh, I don't take it off. I hold uh, the uh, residuum shot in one hand, and I uh, hold it together with the medallion that I'm wearing, and I'm going to cast Fabricate and slowly melt the residuum around the uh, the necklace. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Do. Okay. Let's do this wildly foolish um, risk. Jester, you want guidance on Caleb? And all right. All right. Gather close. For science. Do we hold Who has up? the object? Do we touch each other? What do we do? Oh. Do we want? Is there any? Is there any a practical reason to to surround us in a dome bubble to do this, or are we? Do we think? I think it would be fine if we do it quickly. Okay. Yeah, and so, spell anything. <clears throat> as you all begin to gather up, he pulls out what looks like a piece of dark chalk, and finds a section of the floor where he begins to draw different dunamantic symbols in this patterned array, uh, making you progressively more and more uncomfortable as the, the designs begin to come together. And some of them are a little more intricate for even your understanding, but you begin to pick up the basics of it, kind of using this stone as a focus. Uh, not unlike how Residuum is used as an amplifier device in you know, a number of other laboratories. But as you all kind of gather around, he sits and places the stone in the middle of it, 
and then sits on one side of it and kind of gestures for you to get on the opposite end. Mm. Oregard, you know, if you can't sprinkle, there are nine of us. <laughs> sprinkle, we are the Nanagon. <laughs> TWK, incoming. Total world kill. No. What's your highest currently available spell slot? High, oh, not that high. Uh, fifth. Fifth, okay. It's going to take a roll from you in Essek, and you get to add five to that roll because that is the spell level spent on it. Oh, dang. He's dropping his eighth level spell that he's been saving this whole time. We can't help. Right can't, I mean, we've guided. That's all we can do. Guiding roll credit. Guiding we'll add a four. A okay. D4. Oh, a D4. Is it adding Arcana or anything, or it's just a D20 no. plus. Plus the power of the spell that you are powered with. Got it. With. Plus guidance. So plus. I, I grab just as a rocking. Come on. I'm gonna roll it out front. Rocking. Did very well. Natural twenty. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Plus two. Oh! <laughs> plus eight. So that's a thirty from Essex. Oh dirty, my god. Dirty twenty-four. Dirty twenty-four. Oh, we're not gonna die. No. Uh, combined oh, combined yes. forty was not my today. threshold on that. Oh my oh. god. Combined forty. Forty. Wow. Whoa. Points, Holy oh! shit. Uh, what would have happened if that? That's in this post-campaign conversation. Oh my but for now, oh. you don't know. For now, there's right. that brief moment where you see Essek sweat beginning to form on his forehead as he's concentrating, and as you're kind of focusing your spell energy towards this crystal, you see it begin to glow brighter and brighter and brighter. Not unlike the way that the uh, threshold crest was taking on that filament-like brightness, but this itself has a deep, deep purplish hue, and you see it begin to like psh, flicker. Not unlike the symbol that you were seeing, which makes you extremely uncomfortable. In yeah. a moment, you feel this, this urge just rush in and stop it. But as you do, Essek twitches his arms around it and then draws his fingers in two different directions, and you see this kind of small tear in reality, a break in reality, if you will. Mm. And with that, you can see in a brief moment in this sliver, hundreds of realities just brushing by at an endless speed. He begins to take and fold that tear around, almost like if, if the, the, the tear in space-time became a thread, and wrap it around this stone. And as soon as it begins to close on it, it shatters. Split. Uh, Essek and, and Caleb can split it up. You can split them up? Yeah. Sorry. It makes you ramp. Back that one. Yeah. Should we split up the items? Is it better if you and Essek do it together, or can you do all of them? Uh, sure. I've prepared it for this morning, so. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of time to do it. Um, I'll take the armor and Kree's uh, fun necklace. All right. To start. I'll uh, take a spot back up by the hallway and keep an eye. Yep, got it. Weapon. Isaac, will you look at this weapon? Ah, yes, I'll be happy to. Ice in front of you, Ford. This is our last meal. It Make be. it good. I, you mean our I have hero's to. feast? Yeah. I have not you tried. Pineapple fried rice. I will have some as well. Oh, yes. Excellent. And Perfect. next to that, I have a big bowl of what's your favorite type of soup, Essek? Um, I'm not much of a soup person. I thought you said you loved soup. You said soup was for you, Essek. Stew? Stew? Was it stew? I don't know why I had to say that three times. <laughs> <laughs> Is it stew? Stew? Is it stew? <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna put in front of you, Essek, in addition to pineapple fried rice? <laughs> I think this was actually would be pretty nice together. <laughs> I'm gonna do a really like homemade grilled cheese sandwich, you know, like mm. the kind that mom makes with like craft cheese. Not like any of that gourmet shit. Straight up. Are you Essex? My mother has never made craft cheese. Uh, but I'm telling you this is what it's going to it's be. Nice. And you're He's going like to love soup. it. And He's next like to soup. it He's is an a imposter. Big... Inside check. Make an inside check. <gasps> 19 plus 6! 25! 25. Essek was making a joke. Oh. A big bowl of tomato soup to dip your grilled cheese in. It's the, the most comforting of the comfort foods, Essek, and I think you're really going to like it before we all die. Until the heartburn. I trust your aesthetic. Just I'll actually what? take one of those as well. Was there a little green curry dip? Was there cheese in Rosona? What? Yes, there was cheese. I'm okay. inside check! Go for it. <laughs> Essek is also uh, going to burn three pearls and do tunable. fortune's favor on himself. And who else could use it? 
Oh, I'll go first. Yeah. Wait, yeah. use what? Fortune's it's, favorite. It's, it's what, a, a re-roll sure. one time? It's yeah. essentially, yeah. I'm here for the clerics. Oh. Yeah. Or at Take least one. one of them. Yeah, give it to the... We the protect deal. you, you protect us. Yeah. All right. And he, and he steps forward as you're all finishing. <laughs> it's like has one bit of, uh, of soaked bread in his hand as he's chewing it. Puts the pearl up to your forehead, and as he closes his eyes, you watch as the white pearl goes dark, and then kind of apparates or disapparates into a black smoke-like material that then is drawn into Caduceus's forehead and vanishes. Just for free as well. Oh, sure, if you're offering. Mm. Goes ahead and does the same, and you now have a moat of possibility. Thank you, Essek. I, do you, you have an extra? I do. If, if... Well, I have a ring of protection, which is a plus one bonus to AC. That's great. Yeah. Are you not using that? I'm not, because um, I have my coat of the crest on. What? Uh, I might take that if you're not doing anything yeah. with it. <clears throat> Floyd also has an open attunement slot. I have an open attunement slot as well. I'm not, I'm not unattuning from my Nicholas. <laughs> Nicholas. I have the wand of fear, but he's immune to fear, so... That's pretty useless. Pretty useless. While we're having this feast, <laughs> this, is, are the hallways or room changing? Are there sounds? Is the color shifting Make a perception check. You still have that wind fan. Yeah? Pop it in, looking in the equipment. Dirty 20. Hmm? Nice. Just make sure. Yeah. As the meal goes on, it takes an hour to finish this meal. In the latter remaining 15 or so minutes, you begin to pick up like faint pulses throughout the hallway. The hallway? Very faint color pulses, like like a very, that subdermal light, that faint red, you see it kind of traveling down the tunnel. Down, down the direction we came to get to this room? Like? Down towards that central chamber where you where you last saw Lucian. What is that? Well, remember, there are other tunnels, I pointed out, um, and there are other tunnels that lead from the, the room that we're in uh, out the other way, the way Luc Lucian came in. Should we go check it out when we're done? If there's another one of those, I think there were a few tunnels, and one of them has that light traveling through it. Oh. It's an invitation at the very least. I want Artagen Art mm -hmm. to eat some of the feast as well. Sprinkle will be eating. <laughs> okay, so, so Sprinkle currently kind of comes out. Sprinkle eats a bit, finishes, and then, well, I'm not going to leave you to do this by yourself. We'll both be here for you, won't we, boy? You see, like a momentary frustrated face on this that weasel. <laughs> Where do I go when he controls me? That's <laughs> <laughs> <Friend is> weird. <laughs> Sprinkle's like, you hypocrite! Yeah. Save me! <laughs> um, question about the Heroes' Feast. Do you roll the I additional roll. <laughs> I roll the D. Now, before that spell finishes, Makes it that much more tragic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, <laughs> I have no control. <laughs> Before that finishes, you see Essek <clears throat> stand up and putting his hands out in front of him, he begins to draw with the same trace of dunamantic energy that clock like face. And you watch as he grabs it to spin it up. And right at the moment, you've seen the spell cast before, at the moment where it clicks, he. <laughs> closes it into a singular small bead of like rapidly gyrating energy, similar to the one that he handed you before, and goes, when the viewer is able to uh, initiate this within the next hour, who would make most use of it? What does it do again? I forget. It allows you to use the haste spell. <gasps> Prepped in advance. Oh shit. Barbarians are dope when they're hasted. Barbarians or monks, either one, but yeah. I don't want to say go barbarian because yeah. I already got a decent amount of attacks, but you would get another one. Yeah. Oh my god. And you're not you stunning anybody. Serious in this fucking fight, damage. So. Wait, in an 100%. hour though? Okay. Huh? Don't we have to eat for an hour? We've already been eating We've for an hour. He's waited till the very like end. Towards the end of that hour. It's a food it's montage, like... Sam. Oh. Yeah. I love those. Step up. <laughs> I know. Yeah. For you, Yasha. Okay. 
<laughs> Unleash the beast. Be careful, it can be destroyed. So, keep it safe. It's like a... I'll keep it secret as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do I just... Hey! I rolled an eight and a nine! You eat it like a jawbreaker. That's For good. your hit points? Yeah! <laughs> Don't do that! Uh, <laughs> it looks like, no! So that's eight. Essek finishes his final bit of the meal and kind of looks around and... It has certainly been a very curious way that our paths have intertwined this past year or so. I'm not going to focus on the burden of shame that I carry for the things I've done in the past. But I'm very thankful for the things I've done since our paths have come together. And if today is to be my final attempt at making good the things I've done, I'd be all right with that. I thank you for your trust. Good music. To crime. Crime. Let's crime it up. Crime. To war crime. <laughs> Let's bury a city. Essex, go. Um. Essex. Frustrated is going to go ahead and gonna cast the spell magic on you, actually. Ooh. Oh. He's gonna go ahead and, seeing this happen as you're attacking, Ooh. the prince gonna go ahead and reach up. Yasha, be free of this influence! And scattering his hand, you see these like shards of black energy, almost like magic missiles arc off, and looking like they're about to strike you like weapon, instead crackle across the surface of you, and... Come on, Hell yeah, now that works! Oh, it's an 18. Yes. You're fine. You're the okay. charm is removed from Yay. you. You're still oh, wow. hasted, but the charm is now dispelled off of you. I give a quick kiss to Bold. Okay. I mean, oh. I know that's probably an action. Oh. I love oh. you. Oh. As, as it goes, oh. oh. As we know. <laughs> and then darts behind the tower. I'm so confused. It's worth your it's, spell slot. To be to be fair, it's keeping him irritated. It really is. Um, <laughs> he's going to go ahead and. Goddess is going to swish over towards. Essek. Oh! Essek gets advantage on the saving throws, which is good because that was not enough. 17. 15. Essek fails. Oh no! Oh no! Essek! As. Oh no! Yeah, as no. Essek is over there in the air, He's fine. floating, all of a sudden He's looks oh, up. Drowned. The eyes kind of widen with this, this faint kind of reddish orange energy. Oh no. And then looks aggressively towards the rest of you. Oh no. Shit. Oh no. Getting a peek into the alternate timeline that we could have had. Uh huh. Uh -huh oh god. Uh -huh. And I will then uh, gets, wave my hand toward Essek and shout, Wake up! and cast a spell at fifth. Okay, casting where? The spell at Essek. The spell at Essek? Yes. Okay, fifth? Yeah, that'll do it. <sighs> <Shit>. Thank goodness. <sighs> It's <laughs> good to not deal with his shit. Man, yeah, that was yeah. going to be fun, too. Essek, no, 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 no. yeah, <laughs> you can see, was already gathering this, this dark well of, of kind of gravitational magic while staring forward suddenly and lets it kind of <laughs> just dissipate. No, you can keep it, just put it over. Mm -mm. Thank you. <laughs> uh, finishing that, it is Essek's turn. Essek, who is now currently like, huh. I, I, I cannot focus on my deeds. <sighs> And looking, hmm. actually, yeah. Let's see if that works. Looking around in the environment is going to slowly drift this direction at half speed. Let me get about there, and look down at the two exposed eyes to summon off of, and be like, "Let's see if we can bind your vitality together." As he puts his hands together, he creates this tiny, sparkling orb of black, gray energy. He splits it in two, and then and, and his actions are slow and sluggish, but he still uh, gives a heave, and you watch as they both float off towards the two different eyes over there, Tamora and Luctus. With that, 
Natural one on Tamore. Uh, oh, oh good. good. And yeah, that's a 15. They both fail. And you watch as both these motes hit the two eyes. A little tether of grayish energy connects the two. <gasps> and they are both in some way bound. And Essek. <sighs> heard one, heard both! And he just kind of stays there, clutching himself. Oh, cool. As he cool, casts cool. Tether Dope. Essence. Tight, tight, tether tight. Essence. Okay. Modern. Modern. Finishing your turn, uh, Essex go. Essex is going to go ahead and. Kind of hearing that, though, doesn't have much in the way of psychic damage at the moment. It's going to go ahead and move up. Eight inches. Slowed, so we can't move that far. Is, uh, uh, is going to go ahead and cast resistant a... Resistant to fire or no? Yeah. Mm-hmm. A third level Tiefling. magic missile, honestly. It's probably the best bet to the already damaged Vigilant Eye that you did. Kill it. So as you say this, Jody, can it like slow and coming forward on his feet? <clears throat> the ground, it seems to almost like seep beneath his steps as he like... <clears throat> Ooh, he's having to walk. Yeah. Yeah, with him, which is really rough. Oh, bad day for us. Um, <laughs> He's got kinda, soft little feet. Little cow. Yeah. 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 Little cow. <laughs> like Sam. Yeah. Clutching his side <laughs> as he steps towards you, Bo, and seeing you damaging this thing, just kind of, let's see if we can finish this together. Yeah. And Whoa. releases a, a third level magic missile like towards it. Yeah. Yeah. Never skip like that. He's going to be so sore. His calves are going to be so sore. <laughs> It's like running in barefoot shoes. Yeah. Oh. He's never done one squat. Oh! <laughs> Not one. That does it. Why would you choose? Yeah! The... Yeah? I don't know why I did the shake wave. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Just grabbing eye stocks. <laughs> Wait, which one did he kill? Vigilant. The anti magic cone, I uh, Vigilant, has been destroyed. And with it, Lucian. Ah! <laughs> and yells physically, but gives a shout and a scream through all of your minds of multiple voices that causes all of you to wince in pain. It doesn't do psychic damage, but there is fury mounting in Lucian. Okay. All right, so that finished turn. Oh no, that was that was Essex's turn. That finishes Essex's yeah. turn. He's going to make a save to see if he can shake off the slow. Come on. He's rolled two natural ones in a row. I'm not even joking, both both turns, so he's still slowed. Um, it is Essek's turn. Essek steps forward while still slowed, just goes, Caleb, they need you, and takes your arm and is going to try and pull you out. Oh, buddy. Uh, that is, he doesn't have a high strength. That's a failure. He's going to go ahead and use his Rocket fortune's boost. favor. That's right, he gave us a fortune favor too. <gasps> To try and, yeah, don't forget that. To try and reroll. 17. He pulls you free. Oh, uh, shit! From underneath the building. It hurts your legs, but he drags you back to your feet and goes, Let's finish this. Press my forehead to his forehead and then turn back towards all the shit that's happening around us. All right. And you are no longer restrained. You're still on the ground for the most part. You uh-huh. still have to use your movement to get up, but you're no longer restrained. Uh, he's going to go ahead and save to see if he's still, still slowed. He succeeds. He's no longer slowed. But that's where he is. All right. Essa gets up in a huff. Walks about 20 feet away. There's, there's, there's nothing else to do. Caleb. Uh, yeah, I tried. Well, we can't leave him here. No. No, no. I mean, there's a, a hill next to a road that he should be buried at. Or... Something even better. I think I, I can do something better. If that's all right. Here or later? No, you can come home with me. Yeah. I start to place pieces of amber around his body. 
His Mystic. name was Molly Mock Tea Leaf. I mean, he's asking to be turned into <laughs> dead people tea. Would probably be very strong stuff. I'm glad he's not trapped in Lucian anymore. No. And he had a second fight. He helped us along the way. He did. We might fine. not have been able to do it without him. Let's find the prettiest place in the Blooming Grove. Everywhere is the prettiest place in the Blooming Grove. It'll be. I begin the slow process of casting the Vault of Ember to bring him with us. As Caleb's doing that, I'll walk over to Essek mm. and just quietly ask him, are you all right? It's not fair. It's not fair. No. We've all come so far. You did more for us, and for him, than most anyone we know. I spent my entire life studying the intent to not let things like this happen to chance. Can't be it, can it? I don't know. But if you were to ask my wise friend Caduceus, I'm sure he would tell you that life continues on. It changes, it evolves, and it grows. I don't think there's an end. You just might not be able to see the next trip. But you have more time. You have more time to study. You have a talent that I don't understand. Use that anger, that frustration. Let it fuel you. If you have any regret or grief over what you've done in your life, I see nothing but good and nothing but an opportunity for you to turn it around. You've shown me all I need to see. Caleb simultaneously pulls Veth into sort of a shoulder hug low on the left and rings an arm around Essex's neck to the right and pulls them both in close and just watches the group descend on Molly Mock. <laughs> Thank you, Jester. For what? Oh, the last couple of years. Thank you for being such a good friend. Of course, Caleb. You're a good person. I could be. You are. There's just a little more to do. She's not wrong. Trust me. I know a few bad people. You're not one of them. Do you say the same for yourself? I do not think it is a luxury anyone has to call themselves good or bad. I think that is a label for others to present. I like that. I think you're a good person. Yeah. And that's 
a lot coming no, from me because you're a I, fucking war criminal. I understand entirely. Trust me. I, I yeah. Am. There's a lot to say. But, um, I could. I think y'all could use some rest. You know how we feel is one thing. What we do. That's what counts. Indeed. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Essek, who's currently stepping in and nervously looking at Trent in the face with a look of recognition. It has been some time. Seems our dealings and allegiances have shifted. Looks over to you nervously. And it's going to go ahead and cast full on uh, gravity sinkhole at a high level at him. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Let's kick it off. Let's go. Trent saves. As the this sphere of black energy opens around and seems to be wanting to pull, it slowly dissipates. Trent is unharmed. No physical representation of any damage taken. Oh, he cast that at a high level and it did nada? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yay! Because is of, he here? Because of what? Because of what? Well, it like? said that he was surrounded by some sort of shimmering, fiery. Like an anti magic. Well, there's a. There's a. Uh, some sort of shimmer to him and there is a, a fire, like, field around him. And Essa kind of just. <sighs> I'm just going to go ahead and glide over this way and try and get behind this tree. Cool, 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 nice. cool. Finishes your go. Essex up. Essex is going to go ahead and kind of staring down at your confrontation, seeing <laughs> you probably have Aidwolf in his mindset. Uh, is going to glance over to to him, the biggest threat, which is Trent, and he's going to go ahead and he's going to cast Tether Essence on him and. I loved their album, but him and hmm? Wake me up, Idwolf. Ooh, that's smart. Right. And Idwolf, is that what you said? Yep. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Idwolf does. So in theory, if he's really here. Idwolf fails. Probably Eddie does. <clears throat> Surprisingly, even with advantage in the save, Trent fails. <clears throat> and now Trent and Idwolf are both tethered. Oh, he, oh. Nice. Remember that? We're gonna. No, no, I, th- I thought Essek was tethering himself <laughs> oh, to Ed, but We're that makes gonna, sense. Gonna, okay. The eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so damage to okay. Edwolf does damage to Trent now. And, and he's gonna glide off this way. Super Actually, he's gonna go ahead and move half speed and drag Caleb back 15 feet. Ooh. Damn. Uh, to try and pull him uh, out of melee. Use magic for that, except in during uh, ceremonial purposes. I can only help with the roof and the burning. Roof and the, the building will be fine. If anyone wants to garden, that'd be, uh, you know, that's extracurricular. Do you, you have extra um, gardening hats for all of us if we want? Like, oddly raises his hand as well. <laughs> Why not? Welcome in. Essek Bo just looks at, at all time. Essek, we'll like, yeah. I've never tried gardening. You should wear those, like, little rose-printed gloves. Do you have a pair? Little visor. Um, maybe the Clay family has some. I, I am painting him a little pair of rose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And he kind of mage hands them over. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jester. You're welcome. And uh, for your curiosity, almost every plant that grows within this uh, place is unique and only grows here. So if there's anything you feel the urge to poke or prod at, just ask. It's probably a little bit of it is more than happy to stay in your possession. I know you like to tinker. Thank you. I appreciate that. In the quiet, shaded corner of the room, you see a pensive Essek, arms crossed, just kind of listening. Thank you. You coming, hot boy? 
Where? To the Empire? Yeah, I see your point. Is it any more dangerous than home? It's not any less, probably. We're heading to Rex and Trauma. Maybe it's time I just found my way. Really begun my penance. I've procrastinated long enough in dealing with my sins. Well, maybe we can speak for you. We all know what you've done and sacrificed. If you're on your own, then it's just your word, but we are friends to the dynasty. You are welcome to speak on my behalf, but I do not feel comfortable returning to Rosona. At least not in. Not the way things are. Maybe I should return to Isocross again. Just keep to my station up there. There are people that rely on me. And if they do eventually come for me, who would I be to deny them? I have... I am so, so greatly thankful that you've all shown compassion for me, for what I've done, and for all the things you don't know I've done. I'm scared to think of what more I could have wrought had we not crossed paths. I convinced myself I'd be alone for so much of my life. It's hard to say goodbye when I don't feel alone anymore, but... I understand. I understand and accept. Accept what... what I've done. Maybe I just need some time to think. And I do hope we cross paths again. Sincerely, it would be hard for me to keep you far from my mind. Oh, you won't be able to. I'm going to send you a message every day. I would... Don't no. worry, Essek. No. <clears throat> I would honestly probably welcome it. Even when I'm pooping. <laughs> <laughs> we might be busy for a while, but... We don't end up dead. You'll hear from us again soon. I've literally seen you survive worse. <sighs> what have you done? This world was so much easier when it was black and white. But it's so much more beautiful in all the shades of colors. Thank you, Mighty Nun. I could never return the favor. what you've done for me. Well, good luck. Hugs. <sighs> yep. 
Oh, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, big yeah, yeah. The old cinnamon uh, roll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Clay family joins in, and he's like, oh, gosh. It's weird, though, because he's kind of hovering in the middle of the... <laughs> of the cinnamon roll? We're yeah. just kind of hu- hugging his thighs. Yeah. <laughs> How are you traveling? Probably the same way that I've traveled with you before. Mm. Maybe not to Isocross immediately, but... Probably by ship. It's safer. Maybe spend some time in Uthodurn. I hear the cupcakes are quite good there. Mm. Good black moss cupcakes. You had a friend there, right? Mm. Rini. Rini. She's a handful, but I think she'd do you good. <laughs> I think I learned how to handle handfuls. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're going to look so good with a flower crown. <clears throat> what? She makes great flower crowns. Just wait. Yeah. Maybe I there are no, places. Don't question it, just go. <sighs> Shh. Shh. Well, hey, as um, someone who's been on a penance journey, um, don't take too long. Because, um,. Connection is what saves us. Too long for what? Beating yourself up over your sins. I have a long life ahead of me if I'm clever enough. I hope a time comes. Me too. Before I can go, I catch him by the arm Mm -hmm. and draw him in and give him a kiss on the cheek and then pull him into the most empathetic hug I can make him feel. Don't be a stranger. Somewhat hypocritical coming from me, but try to be kind to yourself. You more than anyone show me that trauma doesn't define you. Stay safe. You too, Caleb Widogast. And he lets go and drifts out to the front of the grove. And is gone. Caleb, is there anything else you would like to add? Well, first thing, um, dealing with the assembly and working with Beauregard, um, I see as a lifelong pursuit. Uh, I'm not really content to leave it at uh, Ikathon. We'll see where that goes. Uh, Probably in the first six months to a year, I would uh, stay in touch with Essek to see how his path is shaking out. That would be first. He eventually began to feel the the possible prying eyes of dynasty discomfort and absconded from the Aeoran trade post. So he went there? He went there to continue his business for the time being, at least it was far away, and there were people there that relied on him. But even that, he eventually left. Well, hopefully I could meet him there. Okay. And, uh, invite him with me to return to Eor and spend time 
Learning as much as we can. Retracing many of our steps. It's knowledge that is thousands of years old and has been hidden from history, and I would want to learn about it and share it with the Cobalt Soul. Um, and I think if he would deign to go with me and do that, uh, eventually I would also wind our way back to that chamber, the uh, tea dock chamber. Upon the invitation, he just goes, I could think of nothing else I would rather do. Hmm. And the journey is in itself fraught with interesting encounters. There are still many dangers in there. Other hunters and <clears throat> tomb robbers and all manner of strange traps, and it is its own series of smaller adventures of just you and Essek trying to survive the trials of retracing your steps through the ruins of Aeon. Mm -hmm. A bonding experience, a trying experience, but that friendship and connection is forged even stronger through that process until eventually you both return to the Genesis Ward and eventually the t -Doc Experimentation Chamber. Um. Is this still something that you consider? He studies it after you ask this question, wordlessly, for five, six minutes. Not in a way that he's ignored the question, but he's still pondering as he traces the various dunamentic glyphs, admiring questioning, curiously taking in, now that there is time to do so. He looks at it. I have spent my life in the pursuit of the ability to control one's future. And that path has led me to making many mistakes. And then my shift began to wander to the possibility of fixing one's past. And since we found this I thought of it often. <laughs> he runs his finger along the side of the race platform. A possibility of retracing one's lifeline. Adjusting things. such pursuits are selfish. For the more you understand time, you understand you cannot see the ramifications of changing such things. Where I found this before I found you, perhaps I may have done some incredible, terrible things with it. But I accept my regrets, my faults now. And I'm here today with this knowledge, in this moment with you, because of those mistakes. And as much as they hurt me, I don't want to change a thing. I take the whole place in. It is a lot. How about you, Caleb with Augusta? Well, my life.
lifespan is a little shorter than yours, but for many years, I have thought of this very thing. And he just uh, stops talking for a few moments, just looking at the room while Essek listens to the quiet. And I think about the plan I have gone over in my mind every night for years, knowing it would work. Of course it will work. I will go back. I will walk up in the guise of a young Bren Aldrich Amundrude. Not long after I left them, I will re-enter my home and explain it to them. I will dump two bodies out of the amber on my neck and leave them on the floor. I will set illusion behind us as we leave and wait from afar and watch invisibly as three children walk up to the house and set it ablaze. And hear the screams of my parents who are no longer in that building. And everything will stay as it was. And I will take them to tell Dore. And I will tell them, take these gems and start a life here. Wait for me. And in a little less than two decades, start coming to this square once a week. Every week. And eventually, you will find me there. Of course it would work. Will you do it? Will you do it? I will help you. I drag some dust up my arm and disintegrate everything in the room and burn what's left. Essek just nods. Good. Good. I think that Caleb and Essek, if Essek were of a mood too, would be together for a while. But knowing that eventually, not too far off, Caleb will be an old man and Essek will be Essek. And I need to go home. I need to fix my home, and that is still my priority. So if he's open to it, I would stay lifelong, my life long, friends with him, and be grateful for that time. Yes, he's very open to it. It's not. It's not long after this Aorian experience that 
Essek finds a way to build a new life away from the dynasty. Using illusion, numerous personas. But he remains in close contact with all of you, and vanishing at other times to whatever his business may be. But he appreciates the time he has with you, and the friendship beyond that. 